acted in Africa. First, he signed contract with Putin to provide support and to allocate uh, troops to hit Ukraine. Then he realized that Putin is weak, and now he is making the same coup as he did in many countries of Africa to capture their resources and to control them. Uh, from the first side, it looks very unlikely that he will he is successful, but... Uh, so, can someone mind, confirm... Hold on, sorry. Just Is, is someone confirm... Uh, okay, that's been debunked. Sorry, I might jump in sometimes. So, so there's been okay, some reports no of uh, uh, TV channels in Russia that have been hacked and are now broadcasting Prigozhin statements. But I think, Ian, you said this, yes, is, did, this yes. is... Is that accurate or is it yeah, inaccurate? Has anyone uh, checked it? Yes, it's, 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 it's accurate. It, uh, they were hacked. Uh, we should always remind, uh, remember that Prigozhin controls not only a big uh, part of the army, at least 25,000 armed people, he declared, but he also a king of trolls uh, in Facebook and all other social media, and he has a quite a big uh, part of uh, media market in. in and Russia. just uh, just so, for also another thing is that uh, Rostov is just for the audience where the headquarters of uh, who, which headquarters were in Rostov again also so Ian. Of, of, the, of the southern part of the Russian army, which is attacking a Ukraine. Where, where Prigozhin uh, could be ending, that's, to, that's 1,200 kilometers away from Moscow, just uh, for the record. And, and Russia is obviously a massive country. Go ahead, Vladimir. Yeah, but I, just to end my thoughts, I, I believe that Prigozhin feeling that uh, Putin is really weak and situation is Russia is out of control and they are about to lose the war. He decided that he has enough capacity to uh, make a coup and to capture power, or at least to survive. Because two weeks ago, he was under huge risk that his campaign is over, not only in Russia and in Ukraine, but also in Africa. Right now, he is like a last man standing, trying to say that I can beat Kremlin. And it's not a trick. Uh, looks like that he's uh, do it in, in real in real so we world. have we have someone mario, have... mario just need i need to get, i need to share this sorry sorry um so the, the russian first tv channels uh so like their main one of their main channels in russian tv announces an emergency news release soon and there's kind of speculations that will putin make an address for what's going on but russian tv is going to make an emergency broadcast session soon so uh, we've, we've, we've got we've got a message here from someone who's Look, I, I wouldn't say credible on, on uh, credible on the Twitter scene, so not. Um, but I'm not going to release their identity. So they sent this message, which I, I, I find hard to believe. But I'm gonna read it out. I wish I could. I wish I could give it give it a lot of info on the current situation, but it's not safe for me. I, I like many others, remain anonymous because of what we do online is dangerous. But know that this is a Kremlin game. Take it from a Russian. I know when the Kremlin is up. And when, it's to, uh, when the Kremlin is up with its own stories to divert the Western attention from somewhere else, something bigger will occur in Ukraine in the next few days, probably. Progozhev, Progozhin did the same back in May, but it was a lie. The West is literally falling for the same trick. I find it hard to believe, and David, you seem to be giving thumbs up, but I find it hard to believe this is a Russian trick because it's gone beyond that. Um, it, it's it's like we usually doubt things as a what they call call it false flag attack or just some um, political maneuvering, but to have military equipment on the streets, to have messages of a rebellion, and I've read out some of those messages earlier, um, and to have um, TVs hacked with messages of Prigozhin, uh, I think we're past. And, and obviously the FSB putting out a a, a statement against Prigozhin. A general putting out a video speaking to Prigozhin, tell him to please stop. It just It's hard to make that argument now. But David, I know you will be making that argument. Um, but before that, um, all sorts of there's any breaking news, just jump in. And if anyone wants to speak, uh, feel free to put your hand up. Uh, Tira and then David. Tira? Yeah, um, back in May, as we just discussed, when Prigozhin was in Bakhmut and he said, I'm leaving if I don't get X, Y, and Z, I'm going. And then it turned out that it didn't happen. I think he was feeling some pressure then. I think Russia, if my understanding is that Russia had asked or actually said that they would be signing contracts with Wagner, either with Wagner as a whole or with Wagner individual recruits. And I believe that has threatened Prigozhin and his um, his control of the group. And I think that might have been something that has led to this. I can't answer whether this is all a 
false flag. I don't think it is, but I do agree that basically Russia's trying to push Prigozhin into a corner and maybe he's taken the bait. Um, John, go ahead, then David. Sorry, David, I'm just going to get John to jump I, in. I have, a, li- I have a little news yeah. quickly that just yeah, came Yeah, please go up. ahead. Please, yes. All, so all of Ros- uh, Ros- Guardia officer officers in the central military districts have been summoned to the Unite units on high alert in the middle of the night. The, and we got to remember that the Ros- Guardia reports directly to Putin, not the Ministry of Defense. And what, so this is a military group within the Russian army? What, what's yes. their, what is their, what is their responsibility? It's the National Guard. The it's, the, it's the National Guard. Oh, it's the yeah. National Guard. I was on high alert. Um, before going to, to John and David, uh, Dr. Gorka, good to have you, sir. Mr. Gorka, can you hear me? Yes, I've uh, got you. Thank, thank you for having uh, me. Uh, uh, Sebastian, have you, have you seen the latest developments in Russia? Yeah, I have. I just landed in the UK not long ago, so I've been catching up and uh, listening to uh, to your reports. And I have to say, whoever that anonymous source was that you quoted about two minutes ago, uh, I am fully on board with that. So this is, uh, you know, not not only is the general rule for any kind of situation of this ilk that all reports, all initial reports are false or cannot be taken on face value, but this is, you know, the the idea that this is a classic you know, a deflection, maskirovka or desinformatia to prepare for something happening somewhere else is incredibly likely. I cannot, you know, I don't have secondary sources in addition to the one you quoted, but this 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 kind of trade craft is absolutely typical. So But we've that, seen that, but that, so, so, but but we've so seen reports yeah, but but Wagner has said we're starting. Uh, we had a general, so neither the FSB nor Sukovin will be able to stop what has begun. That's by Wagner as well, uh, by Prigozhin himself. He did also say to the National Guard, like, if you guys stand in our way, uh, do not stand in our way. I can't remember exactly what he said. To the National Guard. Uh, we know that the National Guard is on high alert. Um, we, do have, we do know that security measures have been stepped up within Moscow. We have a general, Sir, a general Sergei Sur, uh, Surovikin, who put out a video asking Wagner, urging Wagner to stop. The FSB asked Wagner personnel to not obey Sh- Prigozhin um, and instead apprehend Prigozhin. So uh, uh, while your argument, may, now that I've told you everything that I've just said, do you still think that this is a possibility? Because there's too many, too many no, things totally. happening. No, not at all. You know, look, look. You just have to look at basic numbers. The the idea that that the that, you know the guys that do the wet jobs do the dirty work. Uh, you know, a, a, a small PM. So we have so, so 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 we have a Ukrainian media says a Russian military base is on fire right now in Moscow in a Moscow suburb in Fryazino. Um, that just came out. Now I'm gonna put the video into the into the the, the thread. And Mario, both could be true. I mean, uh, as far as this could be a coup attempt, and there also could be a massive attack on Ukraine coming up. I mean, one has nothing to do with the other. The numbers game doesn't doesn't add up. The the idea that they're going to take on uh, the Russian military, whether it's reserve units, regular units, or the militia, doesn't make any sense. They would be utterly crushed. So uh, I'm going, if I had to put else behind this i'm gonna i'm gonna listen i'm gonna keep listening now and and, and mario just to highlight it was Sorokin, Sorokin was not the only general who released a statement there was two russian There's generals the other one was the deputy head of russian intelligence so th- there was two generals same background who released a statement i can under like th- this is if, if you're telling me that this is a false flag then this has been carried way too far and i don't understand the reasoning for it like what's what for what like there, it just doesn't make any logical sense tats wouldn't release those statements like nothing would have gone through like this, this is carrying way more and, and and the issue about wagner is is that wagner has a lot a lot of influence within the, a lot of russian military units because of what they achieved and this didn't come out of the blue i mean Prigozhin and the russian ministry of defense specifically uh, a progression against Shoigu and Gerasimov have been battling each other heavily on the propaganda side in the information space. This is not th- this measure is kind of surprising, but the tensions have been building and building and building to the point that Prigozhin just yesterday or today released a video basically annihilating any claims. The Russian talking points for invading Ukraine, he basically said is bullshit. Right. Prigozhin has I think he is just done with Shoigu 
and Jiraz him off, and he's taking these extreme measures as a response. Absolutely, all sorts. And he's also not planning on taking over Russia with 25,000 troops. His uh, game plan is to recruit and have overturn other U.S. military, I mean, your Russian military to come, come on board. That's what a, how a coup happens. I think also, just to, to, I like the idea of skepticism here, and but it is a trend, right? We're seeing ramping up tension between uh, Sh- Shoigu and Prigozhin. I think no one would suggest that that beef isn't real. It's real. And I think what we can say for sure is the impact um, isn't good for the Russian military. If you're like a 19-year-old Russian conscript kid and you're in a trench and you have a rifle that is twice your age, you're looking around, there's strung out you know, conscripts from the military. There's also Russian spetsnaz. And you're starting to see, you know, uh, the only, the most decorated and successful Russian military commander come out and say that your commander in chief is a crook, that the story about Nazism isn't real, that the goal of the invasion of Ukraine is actually to carve up Ukrainian territory for the benefit of these oligarchs. What are you going to start thinking? You're going to start looking around like what's the impact and how many people does it take to panic for panic to set in? I don't think this is good for Russian soldiers um, on the front. I think this is something that would make them feel less than secure. And, um, you know, Prigozhin is 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 well liked because he pays better and the, and Wagner is better equipped and better armed. I agree. They're Mickey, Mickey, smaller. Can, Mickey, just, let me, sorry, I just got to break in for some more news. OK, this is just initial. This is an initial report. It's not confirmed, but this initial report. Not only are we seeing roadblocks on major highways between Rostov and Moscow, but we're getting the first reports of possible clashes between the Wagner and, and National Guard units. And so I'm just going to read it straight and Mario, I'll share it later on the group chat. Um, uh, the first clashes between advanced groups of the Wagner PMC moving towards Russia, to, towards Moscow, and units of the Russian National Guard just occurred on the Rostov Moscow Highway near Koshaki Lahiri. I'll share it in the group chat. Sorry, go ahead, Mickey. Mickey? I would just make one quick point, which is it's true that uh, Wagner's. Can I hear? Can you not hear Mickey, guys? I can't hear oh, him. Perfect. No. He's oh, can I jump yeah. in he's coming back? Yeah, I can't hear him. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, yeah, shut, go ahead, and then we'll go, David, this bed has been waiting, so I want to go to David right after, please. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I just popped in. I mean, I wouldn't look at this also just purely in Russia's context. I would look at this on the front of the war in Ukraine, right? If you really do have an attempted coup underway, which I remain highly sceptical it will be, Um, this is going to have huge implications for the ability for the Russians to focus on the front lines, right? Uh, The Wagner group may be smaller, but they are more capable and they're much more hardened in terms of the forces that they make up, where they fought in terms of Africa, Libya, uh, the Middle East. Um, So, you know, I I wouldn't draw too much from roadblocks necessarily. That might be a preemptive measure. Rostov is also one of the wealthier parts of Russia. It's where Sochi is and and where a lot of uh, Russian investment has been in the past few years with um, the Olympics and and so on. So um, I think this is going to be really interesting to see what happens with um, the next couple of days with, you know, because Ukrainians might benefit from it. And equally, just keep in mind that the Russian media may be, um, you know, heightening this uh, to, 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 to garner some kind of, you know, role in information war. They've still got a major conflict going on. It's all about perception. It's all about psychological warfare. So that I'd also keep in mind. And then the very last point is that, you know, Progrosian and Shoigu, um, Shoigu's always been a bit of a, he's not the most competent defensive minister, if I'm honest. And Putin's had a pretty poor relationship with him in recent months. But Progrosian has, you know, really positioned himself as someone who, I, I would never expect Progression to have the capacity to uh, be a, a state leader. He's He doesn't, for me, like I think about him and I just wonder how would he engage with President Xi, how would he would engage there's with There's a West source, the there's government. a source here, Russian media but, report that internet access is being limited in Russia. Only 25% of Russians now have access to Google. Many are experiencing issues with accessing the website. Um, so we also have an... Who's, a, a, who's this from? That's from, uh, that was... A Tweet by Garash uh, Anton Garashkano, Garashenko. So this is a is obviously he's, he's pro he's on a uh, Ukrainian patriot advisor to the Minister of Internal yeah, Affairs of Ukraine. Yeah, founder of the Institute of the Future. He, he did. He the, also did post hold on uh, one more thing. He posted the same gentleman. Um, uh, uh, Anton posted the following. The first clash between advanced groups of the Wagner Group moving towards Moscow and units of the Rosgvardia has just occurred on the Rostov Moscow Highway. Ni do, we have, uh, do we have any footage of this? Because, you know, it's easy to just write stuff. 
No, it just it just came up in this in in this sorry it just came up two minutes ago so nothing nothing uh, uh nothing yet. Uh, go ahead, Piotr. No, just thirty seconds. I just want to point out that in the first you know uh, few days of the war, a couple of weeks, you know there was a lot of internal uh, craziness with uh, the shutting down of apps and uh, and you know we clubhouse was one of the only few ways Russians could actually communicate. So this may again be just a statewide preemptive measure. I don't know how much that might translate. So there's combat. Direct- there's combat aviation in the sky above Rostov that was just mentioned again, reported by the same uh, by Anton as well. And this one does include a video. We'll add it to the thread. Uh, the thread is pinned above. Everything's there. Um, and, and the video is going to be there of Russian aviation in the sky above Rostov. Rostov is in the south where the, the Russian military of defense uh, put out this statement. We're taking advantage of Prigozhin's provocation. No, taking advantage of Prigozhin, Prigozhin's provocation to disorganize the situation. The Kiev regime in the Bakhmut tactical direction focuses on the starting line for off- starting lines for offensive operations of the unit of the 35, 35th Marine Brigade and the 36th Mechanized Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. Servicemen of the Southern Group of Forces defeat the enemy with air and artillery strikes. So that was by the Russian Federation Ministry of Defense. Um, so we have, we also have a new speaker, Igor, uh, Igor Shushko. Um, Igor, good to have you. I will go to David and I'll go to you next, Igor, because I know you did a whole thread on uh, Prigozhin. He'll be covering this uh, story pretty closely. Um, I'll get David to quickly comment because he's been waiting for a while. Then I'll go to you right after, Igor. Go ahead, David. Sounds good. Thank you, Mario. Um, I've just been in a space where we've, we have had various Russian-based uh, speakers come in, and we're also looking at the news as it is. You have to look at this in the context of where we are at the so, moment. So, so David, I, I will be interrupting a lot just because there's constant news. So please, everyone, I'll do this a lot more than usual, and I'll look at you, David. But a government official has told the Moscow Times that dozens of aircrafts uh, with special forces flew towards Rostov a few hours ago. Again, dozens of aircraft flew towards Rostov, where the base for the southern um, southern Russian military. I'm not sure what the what the, the, the what it's called exactly, uh, but a, an important military base is there, and and, um, and uh, they expect uh, Prigozhin's forces to be moving towards Rostov. Uh, go ahead, uh, uh, David. Yeah, yeah, Mary, you have to look at this in the context of the time frame of where we are at the moment. We've seen a failed counter-offensive happening for the last four, sorry, the last three weeks since the fourth of this month. The figures are quite astounding. There's the worst rate of attrition since this war began. Um, at this point in time, it's the belief that everyone is standing too close to their nose to one tree and you cannot see the forest. Um, Perugosian before, as, as uh, Sebastian rightly said, has gone down this road of theatrics. Um, you're also looking at the completion of Air Defender 23 in Europe, where a large quantity of munitions and planes and uh, say training exercises have, have happened over the last couple of weeks. Um, so now you have the fall, uh, the obviously fall of the Ukrainian army up against the defensive measures, and you're seeing a three prong attack having occurred out of Lugansk. This is an uh, this is an opportune time to look weak and act strong. This is an opportune time to move major military f- uh, uh, armor men up to the front line in the in the in the disguise that there is a coup happening. And, and fundamentally, I would like to I'd, I'd like to say here, question anyone's sense of reality. Twenty five thousand men are taking on the Russian army. Uh, you know, it, it, Sebastian was right in what he said. It, you know, but then what would the, it, but David, what would the special why failure. would the special for, special forces be moving towards uh, uh, towards the city? Why would oh, the, the uh, theater, military equipment Mario. be on the streets? Mario, it's theater. <laughs> It's all theatre, correct. It's all complete theatre. So the general putting, hold on. So the general putting out the, the military base. That we have we, we have a video, but we we have we waiting for war sources. The military base that is burning in in the suburbs of Moscow. So what do you need to see to say, okay, this is no longer theatre? Do you need to see actual fighting between both forces? Yes. Okay. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You would need to see that. Look, think about D Day, nineteen forty four. What was it all about? It was all about deflection for weeks before the main army attack. This is exactly the same protocol. This is a deflection to show that there's an internal dispute within the Russian forces, where at the same time, they are moving up their troops to the border. You will know, we will be able to answer all these questions in the next, by the time Dawn comes in Russia. But I've just seen, I've just seen videos in Rostov, uh, which is a seaside resort in the middle of summer. Everyone is walking around. There's a couple of armored trucks and everyone has their cameras out looking at them. So what? Russia's in the middle of a war. Rostov is up against the border of Donbass. You know, we've seen the HIMARS and, and whatever hitting Crimea 
and also that the region they're always there any day of the week you can go to Rabat well, well, Sen Sen Defender Sen Defender did confirm that there is no military base in Ukraine that is in, in Russia um, in the in the Moscow region that is on fire so there is no the yeah, reports that's of a military base in Ukraine I mean it's it's pure defection. It's like you, it you know, pure defection. you have two things happening here, right? I mean, like assuming it's theater and the Russians are good at it, the Ukrainians are playing into it by, you know, putting out false reports of, you know, this 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 topple in Moscow, this big coup is happening, Putin's out, you know. I mean, I, I've seen reports claiming falsely that uh, the Russian media is censoring all the reports on on all of this happening. And it's like, wait a second, I just got my report from TASS and and, and RT. And, and, and all these other Russian sources that are talking about this, blowing it up, and you're telling me that Russian media is censoring this news that I'm getting out of Russia? I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense. You know? and, and, and even, yeah. even if a military base are on fire, right? We, and we need to have that comfort. I don't care if there are five military bases on fire. And this is, you know, this is what was so despicable with that, you know, episode five of Tucker Carlson saying, what do you mean Russians would attack themselves? You know, they, they blew up their own apartment buildings in 99, okay? The FSB killed Russians by the bushel in Moscow. They also planted bombs in other apartment blocks and got caught. So the idea that Russians wouldn't kill Russians for some kind of propaganda advantage. It, they, they have form. Let's just say they have form. But, uh, the guys, like, this is coming from Russian media. Like, this, for what? To deploy so, more so, force? They've uh, invaded also, Ukraine. Also, like, let I, me ask Seb, I mean, I get your point. I mean, again, that, that wouldn't disprove uh, Seb's point. But a question to you, Seb, is... Like and then go to be... Igor, and then go to Igor after this. You don't mind, Tilly? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So the question to you, Seb, is what would be the tangible benefit? Because obviously, we know, like, even do a false flag initially will cause confusion. It will make people lose trust in Putin. There'll be a number of negatives that are going to occur. So, what is the overall benefit in, and what will be the bigger benefit to doing this? I mean, that that's tangible. what we'll know. In the, that's what we'll know in the next few days. So it, it could be, you know, the the PMC. It could be. Uh, that Wagner has become far too much of a liability. It, it could be that they want to deploy, they want an excuse to start the mass mobilization again. Remember the mobilization nine months ago was a temporary mobilization. Maybe he needs to mobilize the youth again into the regular army units. M maybe it's, you know, phase two of the war. And no, who knows? But but I guarantee you within within, you know, five, six days, you will see something else occur. And, you know, a lot of us are going to go, ah, yes, that's why. Let me go to Igor. Igor, go ahead. It's Igor, 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 go ahead. Igor, Igor, Mario, Mario said you wrote a thread on this. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. So, um, to lay the background a little bit, um, Prigozhin has been planning this option clearly for quite some time since last year. Uh, the shell starvation, the shell hunger that was, uh, discussed for an extended period of time. According to multiple Wag Wagner mercenaries, that was artificial to a certain extent because Prigozhin had them bury the shells even. So they had them stockpile the shells and not use them against uh, Ukrainians in the war to have for their own future use. Prigozhin has a lot of allies very high up in the military and the Russian security services, uh, especially the FSB and the GRU. What, ha what started the catalyst for tonight, right, was Prigozhin's uh, announcement that uh, his positions around Bakhmut were shelled in the rear by the Russian army. That is probably his false flag they said they orchestrated that and published that video that doesn't look very impressive. That was his um, chosen timing to start this attempt of a uh, coup. This isn't something that he's been planning. If the reports that his column that is kilometers long has entered the Rostov region from Ukraine is true, 
it's going to be very difficult for the Russian military to stop him. There were also earlier this evening reports that Russian soldiers around Bakhmut were shooting at other Russian soldiers and deserting to Wagner. He has been building up his public profile for months. His target audience in Russia are the ultranationalists, the core support for Putin. And he's been able to eat away quite a bit of that due to Russia's incompetent execution of this war. I would not be surprised if he has a lot of mercenary groups and cells throughout Russia that he's going to be able to activate. And they've already probably been activated. It's not just the, uh, the Wagner mercenaries that are sort of visible on the ground in Ukraine. Clearly, somebody inside Putin's regime is backing him, and it's no longer Putin. We can only guess as to who that might be. Um, but this attempt of a coup is very real and to you know to try to claim the ministry, otherwise the, based on everything the, that's the ministry of defense the min ministry uh, of defense uh, did put out a statement um it was on the main russian tv channel uh the ministry of defense confirmed the situation they told wagner to stand down and they also said the video of the strike on a wagner camp um is they called it a production so you yeah for sure i think it was fabricated right by prigozhin because he needed that um that initial ignition to be able to claim that he's justifiably starting this insurrection but he chose that and the us and of us official he, they said they're closely watching the situation one of the officials said this is real those reports right. on CNN. So, also, um, the main training base that belongs to Wagner, it was earlier this evening surrounded by uh, the m Russian riot police, Omon. And there's probably some kind of a showdown, showdown happening there. The thing is, Wagner shares that military base with a special operations unit under MOD, which has been continuously through the previous months accused of laundering military equipment to Wagner. So that wa that's a GRU unit, Russian military Igor, intelligence. Igor, what about the argument? And that's a very valid argument. How the hell mm -hmm. could Wagner, which is it's a, it's a big mercenary group, but it's still a mercenary group. How could they right. stand up to the Russian, the might of the Russian military, despite being yeah. weakened in Ukraine? We're still talking about one of the biggest militaries in the world. Sure. So, this is the plausible way. He has certain key people, including very high up at the MOD, that are on his side. There are also people that are probably in the wait and see mode to see who... Uh, begins to gain an upper hand in this conflict and they might switch sides you know that exertion of power the display of power is is what's going to further attract allies within the system so whatever mercenaries he has right now and whatever equipment they have right now they cannot go and storm the kremlin obviously but if they have allies who are able to switch entire companies, battalions, regiments of Russian soldiers to his side, then it becomes quite possible. Igor, so so, what would that look like? Because I can't believe we're even having this discussion. I'm genuinely pretty yeah. shocked that we're having this discussion. Before Actually, before asking what it would look like, can you tell us a bit more about Prigozhin? He see, for, for, from the outside, for people that don't know his background, he just seems like a crazy guy that says some crazy shit that leads a mercenary group. But how... 
how intelligent is he? How tactical is he as a person? Because I know you've covered him. You've done a whole thread on him as a person as well. Igor, Igor, before, yeah, Igor I, I, if I may just jump in, sorry, just before you kind of provide your opinion, I, I, I do want to repeat that the, the, the so the Russian uh, broadcast that I mentioned earlier, that it just finished, the Russian media, th- this was a nothing new, but it's a full-blown attack on Prigozhin. I mean, the Russian media is 100% attacking Prigozhin. This is a widespread condemnation by Russian state media. That's all it was attack against Prigozhin. Like, I think Prigozhin went rogue based on everything we're seeing from Russian media. They went rogue. Sorry, Igor, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, quickly, one, one point that's uh, important to make. Uh, this evening, Russia, Russia's uh, prosecutor general announced charges of insurrection against Prigozhin personally. Um, my- oh, sorry, you broke up. Sorry, continue, Igor. And so, uh, important thing, uh, uh, another important data point is that there are reports that Russia's Ministry of Defense has been taken over by the Special Operations Forces in Moscow, the headquarters for... So the 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 Ministry of Defense headquarters were taken taken over by the Special Operations Group. Who who is that group and who, who leads that group? How loyal are they to put in their leader... Yeah, so that group is under the command of Major General Valery Flustikov. What's interesting is you go on Wikipedia, he doesn't even have a Wikipedia page in English. But he's a major general, so he's under the MOD. But that development in itself is quite bizarre, right? The entire MOD headquarters are now under the control of these special operations forces under Major General Valery Flustikov. Right now, we don't know what he's thinking. And why is it that he took over control of the headquarters? There are mil- There's military equipment rolling in and being stationed all over Moscow as we speak. The operation... That is called Operation Fortress. Russian media says the source says there's panic in the Kremlin. That's according to, to, to Russian media. So Anton Gerashenko, the source says the source mm-hmm. from the Russian media says there's panic in the Kremlin. No one can reach Putin right now. The Kremlin is negotiating about something with regional gen, uh, General Governor Duman. Some people in the Kremlin mm-hmm. from the presidential administration are finding out about a possible Mario, emer- Mario, emergency this, regulation. This this is all pro-Ukrainian um, uh, propaganda you're talking about. This has nothing got to do with, with what's going so, on. Can you, can you say, I'll let you, you hold on, David. I'm going to get you to speak. Can you say, if there's breaking news, just jump in if, if it's yeah, breaking news. Mario, I don't yeah, know where I you're getting your say... sources, but I'm not seeing this anywhere outside so this of is, Ukrainian midi- media. Yeah, so I, I'm mentioning the sources. So everyone, taking from a grain of salt, uh, as I've mentioned, Anton Gerashenko. We have limited information. So the source is Anton Gerashenko who sent this information. He is very pro-Ukraine. He did send screenshots of the well, messages, but we don't know who so, are. I mean, how reliable is he? Is he in Russia? But there's, <laughs> there's, there's, there's bias. Russia so every, every, right source, every source every is going to have bias, just to be clear. So this is coming from Russian Telegram, guys. Like this is what we're trying to say. I understand that Russian, of course, Ukrainian media is going to amplify this. But like, if you look at the Telegram channels that are posting this, with the vast majority, this is coming from Russian Telegram. Yeah, but which ones? This which is ones do you have? Like hundreds of them. So, so Channel exactly. One in uh, Russia has just commented that the video about the consequences of the alleged strike on the Wagner PMC camp was fake. However. About an hour ago, a statement was made by General Surovakin as an appeal to Wagner, where he said, we are of the same blood, we are warriors, the enemy is waiting for the internal political situation in the country to worsen. You can't play into the hands of the enemy. It's necessary to lay down arms and return to the places of deployment to solve all problems only peacefully under the leadership of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief. So there's a bit of a conflictive statement there because on the one hand, they are appealing yeah, to Wagner. Take a look at that. I'm sorry to budge in. You take a look at that video and how he's saying it and just his body language, that's a hostage video. So General Surovakin is a big ally for Prigozhin. He's the one that got demoted for um, sending a ton of, uh, basically embezzling a ton of Russian military equipment to Wagner. He got demoted some months ago. 
Sorovkin is on Prigozhin's side. He's one of those generals that is allied with Prigozhin inside the MOD. They recalled him, apparently, from Ukraine, and that is a blatant hostage video. So MOD took him in and forced him to record that video to try to get Wagner mercenaries to stand down because they think they might listen to Throvigan. You can see in the video, he holds some kind of uh, rifle on his right side that's unloaded to try to make it more presentable that he's actually free. Also, I've got a question for you. Um, Some people in the... I mean, you're convinced that this is a coup. You've got other people on the panel who are arguing that this is a false flag. All are in agreement that when we will know for sure is it when the both sides basically engage in battle. How, in terms of like, how far are these armies away from each other? How far is Wagner group away from the Russian army where we would? But see but but I, you're, you're simply on the the problem no. with that question. No no, but like if you answer gonna, that and then you can give your yeah. Own. The the problem with that question you're assuming. This is what people need to understand. Prigozhin has a lot of loyalty within the Russian military. Like you, ever, like this is what blows my mind. Like everybody here for months is saying Wagner, the Bakhmut, 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 Wagner just repeatedly of the military power. Wagner earned their reputation within the Russian military because of their of their dedication to the, the, the Battle of Bakhmut. Nobody can deny Wagner fought hard in Bakhmut. They have loyalty within the Russian military. Like, and, and so what we're seeing from Russian media this is Russian media is blasting Prigozhin as a traitor. So if you're a Russian soldier, right, and you compare yourself to a Russian general or officer who probably, you know, the corruption that we all know that exists, the problems that they run into, and then you look at Wagner, that the absolute dedication they did to seize Bakhmut, you don't think there's a lot of Russian soldiers who may be like, you know what? Wagner earned my respect. I'm going to switch their sides. This is the now, Russian. The, the, the Russian ruble just hit the same level it was when the war started. Um, and now it's been dropping for a while, but, but just thought I'd hit now. It's the same level it hit the, when the war started. There's also air raid alert is audible in the southeast regions of Ukraine. Uh, something to have I'm mentioned. There's a that report a... here that the armed forces of Ukraine are reportedly preparing for an offensive operation in the direction of Bakhmut. Correct. So, yes, we we've mentioned those reports as well. This is true. That is fascinating. No. So I mean, if I mean, like this could be a feint, right? You know what a feint is, right? So by pretending that they're weak, by pretending that this thing is happening, that this there's this coup, they leer the. Uh, yeah, I, this is into, a, uh, Ian, this, is know, a fair, ar- this is a this is a this is a fair argument. This is a fair argument, but not not when we got into this stage. Like if we made a video and that's it, okay. But to go to the extreme of where we're at now. I think we're a few stages above this being theater. I think the argument now should be, in my opinion, should be, will this succeed or not? Um, I, Again, m- my thought before this happens, there's no way it's going to be a coup. Now, my thought now, there's no way Wag- uh, uh, Progosian is going to be successful. But then again, if he has alliances, we saw that the um, r- rapid response forces, I think you mentioned, Igor, um, there are rapid response uh, rapid, what is it? What do you call them? Rapid security forces. They took over the Ministry of Defense's headquarters, um, which is those are also special operations forces of special, Russia. Yeah, yeah. So which, those are special operators. Okay, so what did you call them? The special operations forces. Yeah, SSO. SSO. All right. So the SSO took over the the MOD offices, uh, the Ministry of Defense's offices. Uh, which is bizarre. Um, and then that's why I asked you a question before, and I'll ask you again. I want to know more about Prigozhin himself. How intelligent, sure. how tactical of a guy is he? I want to know the brains behind all this. Is it just some crazy mm-hmm. nut going extreme out of emotions? Or, as you mm-hmm. said, this was tactically prepared, and I think you and other panelists said it's been prepared for a while, and we've seen um, weaponry smuggled to to Wagner. Um, because if you say he's very technical, tactical, that means there's, I'm sure there's alliances in different... And, and with different people within the Kremlin. Yeah, so I strongly recommend you watch, it's an hour-long interview that Prigozhin published on June 5th that that presents huge insights. Um, he's extremely eloquent. I, uh, in translating and transcribing that entire interview, uh, it took me about a week 
um, a lot of dozens of hours of analyzing essentially every word to try to make sure I'm, I get it right. He's highly, highly intelligent. He's way smarter than Putin, without question. His origins are insane. So he was some kind of um, street thug when he was younger. He served time in prison. Um, then somehow, somewhere, he crossed paths with Putin and got into the inner circle, right? There are photos of him serving food when I think like President Bush was, came to Moscow. That was Prigozhin serving Putin and, and a U.S. president. So he was completely in the inner circle, having come from prison for, in his youth, um, which is, you know, it's, it's an astronomic success, right, as a person to be able to even do that. Um, and he has been in charge of this mercenary group, Wagner, for a long time, I think uh, around 10 years now. And he has become a very wealthy person. He's a billionaire. They've taken over cities and rare mineral mines in Africa. They've been sent in to conflict zones, essentially as special operators by the Russian MOD with Putin's blessing. This was the shadow mercenary group that Russia would use globally to avoid its own fingerprints. And there's been a lot of talk about these pr convicts, the inmates that Prigozhin has been recruiting out of Russian prisons that he'd sent into uh, cities like uh, Solidar and Bakhmut. Man, mo many of them have, of course, died. That is not the core of the Wagner group. The core of the Wagner group are professional mercenaries that were hired either after retirement or but what time? right out of okay, so the Russian military. So we have a video and there's local media reports that a convoy of military trucks drove along the embankment to the center of Moscow. There's a convoy of military trucks that is driving towards the center of Moscow and there's a video of that as well. Uh, yeah, I'll no, pin it above. Smart, right? there's, there's, a, there's, there's dozens of videos now of Moscow with military vehicles in Moscow. Like, like, like it's the, the the Russian National Guard has deployed in Moscow. That that's a fact. We had the videos. The Russian National Guard has deployed across Moscow. Significant armor personnel carriers, military personnel are prevalent in Moscow. Th like, there's no question about that anymore. Also, can I ask you a question? Just a question for all source quickly. Is that if that's okay? Yeah, man, just just ask it, bro. Uh, but before that, the Russian National yeah, Guard. Yeah. Uh, just one question before that. Um, um, also, who controls the Russian National Guard? So the Russian National Guard is unique. It was established by Putin probably also about 10 years ago. They are subordinate directly to Putin and Putin only. No, but not Putin, the Ministry but, of but, sir, but Igor, Putin talks to someone that carries his orders. Who is that someone? Do we right. know? The commander of the National Guard. Uh, I don't have any so because because I don't know how the the the, the different uh, previous I don't know if anyone's researched previous coups, but from my limited experience, mm -hmm. the National Guard turning on their leader because they defend their leader, they usually are the last level of defense. Um, mm -hmm. If the National Guard turns on a turn leader, on uh, I have a breaking piece of news here. The uh, Russian security services are urging the fighters of PMC Wagner to avoid criminal actions ordered by Chief Prigozhin. And uh, they are now taking measures to detain Prigozhin. Yeah, wow, so I, don't think, I don't think that's going to work, right? So, um, Prigozhin I, actually, about an hour ago, made a public call for to address dr addressing directly Rosguardia, that's the National Guard, to switch sides to him or suffer his wrath. 
So all sorts, I have a question for you. Like we do know that uh, Wagner Group is smaller than the Russian military, but the Russian military is also deployed along the front line. And didn't Wagner Group put its forces within Russia to take them off the line? Aren't they mostly in Russia? So couldn't they concentrate their forces in Russia faster and more powerfully than the Russian military? Because the Russian military would need to pull away from the from the front, which would allow Ukraine to counterattack. So, so uh, uh, wasn't really letting allowing uh, Wagner to come back on Russian soil. That's why Prigozhin set up uh, a bunch of camps in the rear in Donetsk region, in Ukraine. But today, it's now a different story because there are reports that Wagner did enter back into Russia, which is what Shoigu was afraid of. And the K, it, we should take a moment to imagine the kind of chaos that's probably happening right now at the general staff, at the MOD in Russia. They don't know which high level commanders in the Russian MOD ha- have their loyalty to Prigozhin. I think that's the biggest fact what Igor just said. I mean, right now, what's happening inside the MOD is who's, where the loyalty lies is what's going to be important to see in the next uh, hours or days to I come. I've got a breaking piece of I've breaking news. Hold on, hold on. Who's got yeah, a breaking, breaking news? Breaking news here in Ukraine. Uh, drones have been reported over the Sumy region. Uh, there's still no confirmation of cruise missiles, but uh, it's understood that some cruise missiles are flying over uh, or headed to Ukraine right now. So it looks like the uh, you know the SMO is continuing regardless of what's happening in Russia itself. Yeah, the, the, when did those cruise missiles? Are they different? Because I read about them an hour ago. Are they different cruise missiles that just came out now again? Uh, this is uh, this is drone reports. Uh, this is uh, oh, this okay. came out uh, ten minutes ago. Ten minutes ago. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, uh, Kelsey, did you have? Did you, did you yeah, have I did. You can, um Unverified reports that Ukrainian military are saying that they are in Bakhmut and have recaptured several streets there. Um, in the center of Moscow, access to the presidential administration is blocked. Uh, AVCHK OGPU source says that the issue of blocking the entrance to Moscow with Kamaz, K A M A Z, M A Z, Kamaz's, is being considered. It is not worthy that, according to the source, the vehicles were driven to all entrances as early as yesterday. And there's a video as well there. So that's by Jeroshenko. Uh, the handle's there. If you want to check out the tweet. Uh, is Suli or... Kamaz is just their four-ton truck. That's just a big lorry. Say that again, sorry, Sebastian. The, the Kamaz is just their version of the four-ton lorry. It's oh, just their troop carrier. That, that's all it is. Oh, okay, so... So, yeah. so, so the... that was also... Yes. Mm-hmm. There was also quite a bit of chatter uh, about three weeks ago within Wagner that uh, Shoigu was planning uh, an assassination operation against uh, Prigozhin. Uh, And there were then reports just today that two days ago such an operation had failed. Uh, So the, the timing of all this is pretty interesting. Um, because apparently around a day and a half ago, so 36 hours ago, um, all the military units and uh, uh, security services were activated on high alert in Moscow, right? So there was something already, they knew something was going to be happening. Um, When possibly, right, if these reports are true, if they were to fail to assassinate Prigozhin, which reportedly they failed. And so right now, Prigozhin is clearly, he's, he's quite untouchable because of all the alliances he has that are within the regime itself. So he would have leaks of such operations that might be against him. He would have his own people that would know. He has his own intelligence service. He even in that interview claimed he has access to satellites. So it's a very extensive reconnaissance network and spy network that he has within Russia. And he's quite militarily capable. Okay. David? I had no idea that he's had that much uh, that much power, that much influence. Yeah, David, go ahead. Because like, I'd never looked at the Wagner in, in such a way. I didn't understand how hmm. much. And, and the team is sending me so old photos influence. with him and Putin. And Right. I mean, assuming this is a, a an attempt at a coup, 
I think this is his last stand. I think he knows that, you know, his his days are numbered, assuming this is not, you know, fake, right? Assuming it's not fake. I think that, you know, he, he knows his days are numbered and that he has to do something. Otherwise, you know, he's gone, right? He's going to go to jail or something. So. It, I, from now until morning time in Russia is probably the most critical period. So even in the central military district, which is far away from you know, any border with Ukraine is like in the middle of Russia. Um, there was all the Rosguardia officers were raised on alert to come to come back and report to their units in the middle of the night. Um, there are big things happening, and it, it will be interesting to see where the chips fall in the morning time. What's, what's Prigozhin's position on the war in Ukraine and on the West? I'm curious. Uh, so his position, from what I could gather, uh, it's pretty aligned with uh, Putin's imp imperialistic ambitions. Is it more extreme? Uh, or no? but, I've seen it as more, my, my impression is that he is more nationalistic and more extreme in, in Russia being more aggressive in taking over territory. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong in assuming that? that it's definitely been his his uh, uh, overwhelming populist message, right? Uh, what he truly believes himself, I don't know, right? It's hard to know because, again, he's very intelligent and uh, he's a mercenary. He's making money doing this until today, <laughs> right? So um, he's clearly going to be fighting for his survival because if he doesn't succeed in the coup he will be dead what was there were also reports about him there was an arrest warrant against him before he took this action apparently because he failed uh, there was some contract between wagner and the russian military and there was an investigation yeah there was an investigation so like these investigations uh, got started maybe like a month or two ago uh by the investigative committee by the fsb um and uh, about all this embezzlement and corruption of stealing Russian, Russian military supplies uh, through Russian military special so, operations. So in the, in one thing you're saying is that this could have been planned for a long time. Now Russian military might have started finding out about it and they launched an investigation and then he knew his time is running out and then he took action. Is that a, a fair uh, obviously, we're just assuming here, but no, is that no. a fair assumption based on... Well, so there, they, they also need scapegoats, right? So this was happening under Sorovikin, primarily. Sorovikin is that general with that uh, MOD released the hostage video of trying to get Wagner to st stand down. Um, There's so a, a, that was... According to so the general war, staff, warm, everybody is corrupted. War Monitor put out, so War Monitor generally verifies things pretty well. War Monitor put out the following tweet a minute ago. Explosions in Kursk, which is a Russian city according to Ukraine sources. Also, Mary, there's some breaking news. Uh, I don't know if it's true, but I got to verify that the Belarusian dictator Lukashenko's family just took off from Minsk and have left Minsk on the, their business yet. So there's a, there's, a, there's a plane that has left Minsk and, and there's, a, there's specula I left because that is correct. It's not confirmed. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to confirm it right now. Yeah, because that plane has been generally identified, but it's not confirmed. You know, I swear, also, so you literally know everything. Even when people mention breaking news, somehow you know it already, even though it's just fucking breaking. Um, David, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm talking over with uh, our group that are mostly, there's about a dozen Russians there, and they're actively involved in some of the main Russian um, Telegram channels. And again, they're just coming out that this is all a narrative that's being played out. All this false anonymous uh, tips you're getting are all from the Ukrainian side, and they're all rise, rising this up, and that this is a sign up. Okay. It, that's what they're all, that's what all, the Ministry yeah. of Defense is playing this down. If you go to the TASS uh, Telegram channel, if you go to the Ministry of Defense. So you're saying the Ministry of Defense uh, is making uh, all this up to, 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 to trick Ukraine? There, look, the position here, look at the context of where But David, we when we had, Just, hold on, when there, was a, when there was a drone over the Kremlin, and we talked about it being a PSYOP. You're like, no, 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 it's not a PSYOP. But then when now we have something that's significant... Yeah, that wasn't a PSYOP. That was later confirmed yeah, by American... Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, I know. Well, uh, okay, well, if this, if, if there was refusal to believe this is PSYOP, this has gone way further from that. Like, I would have agreed with this I mean, discussion, but David, what, look at how you're seeing reports by the Department... Mario, Ministry Mario, of Defense, Mario, you're seeing military Mario. vehicles in, in the Kremlin. I know, it doesn't Mario, matter, though. This, this, this is how Russia plays the game. This is how... 
this is how the, the Americans did it before D Day. Um, this, this is not true. true. This, this is, is not how Russia before before Normandy. No, no, I, I, I'm after sitting here and waiting to speak, and everyone seems to be speaking over. The, the, the position here at the moment is that you have to look at the context where it is. The counteroffensive has failed. Uh, the the air defense of 2023 20, is just over. So, so it's, Russia, David, if it's a, if it's a, a, a question, question, if it's a, it's a psyop for what? What are they sending us up up? Uh, sub, uh, well, sending us up for? Vast, into. Vast, Look at how Ukraine is responding. Because there's two the, there's two options. So, so if this is a psyop to that level. Which I, I find it very hard to believe it is. To but Bakhmut right now. But I mean, if they if, if it's the right? but guys guys if there's Ian if in, and David if there if this is a psyop there's so many different psyops they could do okay and they're significant as escal escalatory as this if this is a psyop that if it is that must be setting us up for a major escalation because yes. the psyop itself is major. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a counter Correct. counter attack. But, right? Yeah, but what does it make sense? I mean, the, if this is a setup, I mean, they're make, causing chaos. Why wouldn't they? But why wouldn't army. they? Yeah, but why wouldn't they? Yeah. Exactly. Why wouldn't they cause? Well, the why wouldn't they, they cause? Guys, chaos. guys, guys. Why wouldn't the psyop be something along the lines like Ukraine used this this the, the, this missile, or Ukraine did this, or Ukraine that. tried to assassinate the, 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 the assassinate that, that, that Putin? Would, that Instead, Putin's 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 fought. Mario, 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 Mario. Let me let me let me go for a sec. The, the idea here is to lure the Ukrainians into a sense of, you know, to lull them into a sense of uh, uh, confidence, right? To, to, to pull them into Bakhmut, to pull them out of their current positions, which they're dug into, right? They're dug into their positions. They're going to move it, uh, forward. They're going to try to advance on the Russian positions, thinking that it doesn't have Wagner forces uh, supporting the, uh, the, Russian, uh, the main Russian army. And they're going to get obliterated. I mean, that's probably what's going to happen. And then we're going to see, you know, there's, I'm, I'm just speculating here, right? So I might be. Yeah, but aren't they, but they're also wrong. confusing their whole army. I mean, they're, they're, their they're entire army's army yeah, weakening. Can I provide some context to this, Mark? Also... Here's the problem with that argument. This is the problem with that argument. Prigozhin has announced multiple times since the early late May to early June that he was pulling out of Bakhmut. We know Wagner is not a main fighter right now in the current situation in the war of Ukraine at this present time. They have pulled back and they are established mostly in Luhansk to the point when the, the Russian volunteer corps, that Rush, the Ukrainian-backed Russian group, attacked Belgorod, right? Wagner was saying, we're going to go to Belgorod to protect Russian territory. But, and again, you're completely... Like, the, the problem with all this is that you're, if this is, as Mario is perfectly laying out, the issue then becomes that if this is a false flag, it is taking off way out, way out of proportion because Bakhmut is not the priority right now in the counteroffensive. We all agree it's Aporizia. That's I, I, cannot, I cannot imagine. I've seen many. There's been many false flags. And Nathan, I'll go to you next. But there's been many false flags in history. I cannot think of one that went to that extent. Nathan? World War II. D-Day. Yeah, so, like, my big question here is, you know, what is Prigozhin's end goal? Like, what is he trying to accomplish? Because is he trying to challenge Putin directly, or is he trying to challenge his rivals in the Ministry of Defense? Is he trying to take his position as Putin's right-hand man? Because he's been putting out all of these videos, basically making the case that, man, this war is all screwed up. The Russians were not doing as well as, they, you know, the propagandist believes we are. And that's been a big thing. And, like, is this real? What is, you know, what is he trying to accomplish and that really makes me think that there's some intra-elite competition that's going on here within Russia. And I don't think that Prigozhin and Wagner are really trying to topple Putin because that's a, that's I don't see that as a win pass situation. Nathan, that was my initial you know, thought. That, like, could this be? Could this be? Let's say this is not a false flag attack. Could it be some sort of some sort of coup, but not against Putin himself? Because Prigozhin didn't mention Putin at all. Maybe indirectly, some would say. Um, could it be an internal coup? But then I can't imagine a coup happening when there's a leader. When there's a when there's a leader, everyone just goes to the leader. There's a lot of tit, -tit, -tit for tat here and there. But there there can't be a coup if the the main leader is not, not being a targeted. Not coup, Mario. Like if I, anything, it, if it is a coup, it's not against uh, me, It's against the MOD. That's what. It's but against. if it is the MOD, you don't just go against against them militarily. You talk to Putin. Putin will no, not accept no, anyone. Yeah. Why can't you? This coup is definitely against Putin himself. Uh, that's be beyond any question because Shoigu and Gerasimov report to Putin. They're his soldiers. Who are, so who, which soldiers are you referring to, Igor? Shoigu and Gerasimov. And it's, it's Putin's military. It's not anybody else's military that, uh, that Prigozhin is now going against. 
Prigozhin is just trying to save his ass right now. Yeah, Prigozhin is, is urging uh, Red Guardia soldiers, National Guard, to switch sides to him. Those soldiers don't even report to the MOD. They report to Putin directly. And what is their position? The National Guard. I, <laughs> we kind of yeah, explained this I, like five times. I think, I think the National Guard is probably less likely of all the structures to defect to Prigozhin in large but Prigozhin, masses. But Prigozhin did target, and likely. just again, in the narrative, a while ago now, Prigozhin did target the National Guard, and he, and he requested the National Guard to... to well, he I'm, wants I, them I, to stand down so that he can stage a coup at the MOD, right? That's what he said. And he wants them to stand aside, right? Stand back and stand. No, by, no, no. So he wants them to join them. He wants he wants them to oh, join. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. But side. I don't really see that happening. Mm -hmm. because, hey, I got some breaking. Yeah. I got some breaking. I got some breaking. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, so Prigozhin just announced that they that their fighters have crossed the Russian state border in Rostov, and they have faced no resistance. Again, Prigozhin. Yep. Let me let me say this again. Prigozhin is saying that his forces on his Telegram channel has entered Rostov, and they have not encountered resistance. I don't know if that's true or not. He's, he's saying... Who said that? I, I, who I said that? Hold on, before, Jackson, that. before you go, hold on, no, all sorts before you go. Um, so I'll go all sorts. Who said that? And then Lev, out for more clarity, and then we'll go to Jackson. That. Okay, Lev. It is true. Uh, it is true what all sorts is saying. What he said is that they have um, moving into Rostov after a strike happened on their position. Um, he said Wagner is not killing children. Um, while Shogu is um, by sending them en masse to the front to die, front line to die. I'm, I'm still trying to make sense of it, but there is a recording that's come yeah. out, so that is breaking. And then, yeah, I, I so also he said <laughs> Prigozhin like, came out. Wow, wow. Prigozhin came out and said that this is happening, but I mean, we we got to wait for the visual evidence. He said that he wanted to do a march, not a coup, whatever that means. But the questions I have, and I don't know if they've been addressed, but they seem like pretty big questions to me are what what is Prigozhin, what does Wagner think that they're going to be doing marching towards Moscow without any air support or air defense coverage? And then the other big questions that I think everyone should ask about regarding whether or not this is an op or it's real is, I mean, Russia is creating defensive operations around Moscow, but Rostov is 13 hours away. Generals are putting out videos for Wagner columns to stop despite the fact we haven't even seen video of this. And the Kremlin hasn't even called for the direct arrest of Prigozhin yet. So, like, the, it all seems very odd. They did. They, 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 they did. did. They, they did, did Jackson. Absolutely. They called, they called for his arrest the or they launched the an anti-terrorist investigation. They've called for his, they've called for his men also to turn the Ministry of Defense to, uh, asked, and, and the general that put out a video, um, the Ministry of Defense asked for Wagner uh, personnel to apprehend, and uh, not only not to 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 uh, to go forward with Prigozhin's request, but to also apprehend Prigozhin's. That was about. Sir, um, Sir Vikan said that, or or who said that? Does anyone remember who exactly said that from the MOD? So let's keep in mind, Prigozhin chose this timing for this um, war with Shoigu tonight. It it was his choosing of the so timing. So Prigozhin just said and that he says, and his men. Will... What if he does have? Go ahead, sir. Air support. What if he does have air support and air defense? What if, what if he prepared those things as part of this planned coup, which clearly he has been keeping open as an option and planning for for months? And Igor, what if he has some air force and, on his side Igor, in the Russian? And army? I just uh, so through some of my sources confirmation also that uh, this was a failed uh, attempt on at assassination, and that's what caused it to go uh, this quickly. He wasn't planning to do it now, mm -hmm. but because of a failed assassination, he chose now to start this. Well, no, he was planning it for a long time, and that's why they tried to assassinate him. But they... yeah, I think this is what Lev is saying that he's right, been correct, planning this yeah. for a while. Yeah, yeah, he's been planning Just it for. Just breaking news: God. we are now entering Rostov. The conscripts who are guarding should leave, and that's from Prigozhin. And he also said that um, when we crossed the borders, the border guards hugged our soldiers. So I have a question, uh, and that that wouldn't. I mean, we'll we'll see if there's video evidence of that, but that wouldn't be surprising. A lot of the Russians are sympathetic, more sympathetic to Prigozhin than Putin and you know Shoigu, especially. But who 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 was the one that said arrest uh, Prigozhin? Was it Surovikin or, or was it Putin's spokesperson? Because that it was uh, the general prosecutor of Russia who issued the, the statement. General prosecutor of Russia. 
Mm -hmm. It was the investigative department of the FSB that brought the charges. Sorry, just one more statement. I'm so sorry to interrupt. No, the White please. House National Security Council um, have said regarding Russian developments, we are monitoring the situation and will be consulting allies and partners on these developments. Prigozhin says he and his men will destroy anyone who stands in their way. I think we can expect a lot of Russian soldiers to get absorbed into Prigozhin, into Prigozhin's mercenary group as he goes through Russia. And obviously the, the core of the Russian army is occupied with the war in Ukraine. And the I, somebody mentioned the, his march so he's calling it the march for justice and basically he's gonna march to moscow the the stronghold of the kremlin power because he wants shoigu and gerasimov executed with the firing squad so okay igor he shoigu can you that. hold on shoigu can you remind us who shoigu is i'm trying to keep up with all the names Shoigu's the yeah, defense so, minister. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he has called for that in the past. He, he, he's yep. made statements basically saying, like, you know, in other times these people would have been executed already. Uh, yeah. So this, this is nothing new. But the one thing I will say, the one thing I will say is, from what I understand, uh, well, I mean, first of all, Prigozhin and Putin had a meeting, like, four days ago or something. So this seems very odd that it would be a legitimate coup. But he actually did say this is a march, not a coup. It seems like this might be, if this is legitimate and it isn't some sort of an op, it seems like this might be over the contracts. And I'm sure you guys have talked about that, that Wagner refused to sign, but the Chechens already did a few days ago. I don't see this being an actual coup. So, yeah, June 5th, his hour-long interview, he mentions and he talks extensively about how Shoigu and Gerasimov have committed treason and they should be executed by firing squad. That was June 5th. Um, six days later, maybe, is when, five days later, when Shoigu announced the order that uh, Minister of Defense is going to absorb all mercenary groups in Russia under the MOD, and they all have to sign contracts. That was in response to uh, Prigozhin's public statements to, to kill Shoigu. And so... I mean, the, Sh Prigozhin is really sticking to what he's been saying. He's, he, he discussed at length what he's going to do if the leadership at the MOD doesn't change, and now he's actually executing on it. One possible trump card he might be thinking of pulling is when he demonstrates to Putin, who reportedly has ordered... Uh, Prigozhin to be killed or taken, but neutralized. Um, what what he might try to do is once he shows that he's superior to the MOD and to the Russian army on Russian soil, he might be thinking that Putin will then give Prigozhin the defense minister position. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to absorb everything that's happening, um, and it's it's just I did not expect to it's be dealing lot. with this now. So it's it's it's, it's insane and how fast moving. In the Krasnodar, Krasnodar territory, which is south, I thought you were about to say Krasnodar. So I was like, what do uh, they have to do? Security with that? security measures are not being strengthened, um, which I'm not sure what that means. If you guys can give a bit more context. Um, There's a, video it's, it's, it's of, there's a video being released of air defense engaging drones over Kursk a short while ago. Over where? Um, over, sorry, can you see over where? Over Kursk, K-U-R-S-K, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, and that was after reports of explosions in Kursk, according to Ukrainian sources. So um, air defense are engaging drones. Is that a Ukrainian attack on Kursk? Because that seems likely. We don't know. I would I would assume so, but we, we just got to wait and see. But I would assume it's a Ukrainian attack in response to the cruise missiles and drone strikes against Ukraine that's currently happening. So 
I've, I've got a question. Regard, so I said that Putin didn't call for the arrest of Prigozhin yet, which I think would be a big deal if he did. And you guys said that he did. I looked it up. The prosecutor general's office has not called for the arrest. They said that they are launching a fair legal assessment of the action. When, when was Prigozhin. that? When was that, Jackson? This was, let me go back to the article. So this article was posted two hours ago. And then I saw a Reuters report also from two hours ago suggesting that FB, FSB, uh, sorry, FSB was calling for the urging Wagner soldiers to arrest Prigozhin. But I saw no quote and no verifiable posts uh, linking that to the FSB. It was just they that the FSB urged Wagner to uh, arrest Prigozhin. So I think that's a really, really big part of this story, whether or not that has legitimately been called for yet. So if there is, if it was legitimately so, called for, what, yeah, what would... Yeah, to, to confirm these things, because there's a lot of mixed So reports. Russian media has initiated, has, has stated on multiple occasions... That they've initiated an investigation against them, and then the, the National uh, Counterterrorism Department or Center, I can't remember right now, it's in my mind of the Russian government has also called for that, you know, an investigation, and in, and they're portraying Prigozhin as an insurrectionist, basically. I mean, that that's what they're going. They're going to state for an investigation, and then they're demanding Wagner's back forces not to support him, and then the Russian MOD released two videos of Sergozhin uh, uh, and and uh, I mean Sorokin. And uh, another Russian mini- uh, uh, military general, the, de- the department, the, the deputy head of the Russian Mil- Ministry of Intelligence, begging Prigozhin and Wagner to stop. Like, th- I've, this I've is seen happening. all of it. I've, I've yeah. seen all of it. I'm just saying that you could have all of that and it be an op. Uh, but, but well, hold on, Jackson, 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 I'm just confused. Why is the arrest of Prigozhin important? By the way, there's reports in various groups of Prigozhin, uh, people are saying that Prigozhin, not people, sources are saying Prigozhin's going to die tonight, but I, that was five minutes ago. I don't think it's worth mentioning. What but, sources? But why? Yeah, exactly. I don't think it's worth mentioning. Look, in this case, there's going to be a lot of sources that we can question, and this is all breaking and evolving as we speak. We should come back to this speak. But let me, Jackson, just let me... Battle. Yeah, okay, man. You can come back 24 hours from now. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be booking my flight to some African city potentially in 24. I'm joking. But Jackson, my question is, why, why is is the arrest of Prigozhin so important at this stage? Not before. Before I'd understand, but at this stage, where Prigozhin's entering the, the 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 city in the south and saying he has faced no resistance, and he's telling what did he say? He asked. Let me read out exactly what he said. Um, uh, let me see. But border guards were coming out to meet us and hugging our fighters. We will just we will destroy anything that gets in our way. Uh, that's after he entered the city of. Because um, someone mentioned uh, Rostov. Uh, I don't know if it's the city. I think it's the state. The state. Okay. Okay. I think the state. there's a yeah, bunch of the, the, the border. Yeah, the Rostov state, and, and so you have Rostov Don, which is the city, and then the Rostov state, and then it makes sense from his comments that because both most of his base of operations in Luhansk. Which is Russian occupied territory. So, a minute, Ukraine, a minute again, was, so also, so a minute ago came out. Prosecutor General Krasnov reported to Putin about the criminal case initiated in connection with an attempt to organize an armed rebellion. Peskov said, according to him, the Prosecutor General informed the president about the legality of these legal actions. So, I, I don't know what the, if the question is why is it important that they arrest him? Because if he's legitimately as they are saying, but we still don't have a video of yet, actually crossing the border and threatening to take on anyone that might try to stop them. I mean, that's treason. So they, I mean, if, if this is not real, then they are not going to call for his arrest, I guess. I mean, I think that's the that's the ultimate deciding factor. Also, so why do we know that it's been called oh. against Prigozhin so far? And Igor and also, if you guys get so, to give so us... So I think people need to highlight that, at least in the Russian point of view, there is this veneer... Of, of like they try to represent that they have a legal system and that there's a case of this. So this all happened right now. So, of course, the first initial response, and as you said, Mario, perfectly, is we have initiated criminal investigations, right? So, but that's the first step, right? And this is continuing, continuing. Then obviously in the next day, they will announce probably down the road measures to arrest unless there's some sort of back heel deal, but I don't know. But so this is natural for how the Russians operate of initiating an investigation, a criminal investigation. But, but like, can, can we just stop for a second like, and just just see the absurdity of the situation where it's Prigozhin and Wagner was key of seizing Bakhmut. Nobody is denying that. Couple, like, literally 
just over a month ago, on May 20th, he went on TV and announced that he completely seized Bakhmut, which was supposed to be the end of the Ukrainian military. Just a month later, this supposed hero of the Russian military and of the Russian people of seizing Bakhmut, we have the spokesperson for President Putin announcing we have initiated criminal investigations against him in a month time frame. I mean, yeah, but I, I, but also before they seize Bakhmut, I mean, everyone remembers what happened. I mean, the, Prigozhin was coming out with the infamous video saying Gerasimov, Shoigu, he was not directly calling for their execution then, but I mean, he was getting close to it and saying he had ammo shortages, even though they had no ammo shortages and they actually had just seized a huge Ukrainian stockpile of ammunition. And then he came out a few days later and he then after, you know, the a ammunition lie, he came out and said, OK, we're leaving Bakhmut. We're not going to take Bakhmut. It's OK. I don't want to be remembered in history as the guy who necessarily took Bakhmut, but as the guy who served his country. And then a few days later, they he Wagner, they actually captured Bakhmut. So they had the lie about the ammo, the lie about Bakhmut not being captured by Wagner. This guy, he says the exact opposite of what he's going to do every time at the major precipices of this war. So it's like, should we take this all at face value? No, I think we should ask questions and actually look at what's happening. No, I can tell you the Russian state media and the Russian and, 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 and official channels have no doubt right now of Prigozhin's intentions. That there's no, I, there, there's I, I no really, doubt. The, the Russian state, I don't really care what Russian state media does because that's controlled by, you know, Putin. Whatever they want Russian state media to do, they're going to do. Right. But then they're also deploying military personnel. Yes, we have 13, out, 13 hours away from Rostov. Apparently, Wagner. Rostov also it. has military vehicles. To, Rostov Don, <laughs> there's military vehicles in Rostov Don. Wa right? Wagner's going to come marching in with no air defense from 13 hours away, apparently. And this, this is why Moscow is creating defensive preparations this very minute. I'm, I'm so now, again, sorry Rostov guys, don't interrupt. We've got cruise missiles, cru cruise missiles are flying towards. Krivyri, and I think that's a, a region in Ukraine. It's a city in Ukraine. Krivyri, also translated as Krivoy Rog. Yes, um, it's a Rog. city in central Ukraine. Yeah, there's uh, cruise missiles now flying towards that. Yep, the SMO still on, guys. Like, it, <laughs> this is like a, a distraction, right? I mean, if, if this coup were really happening, do you think that they'd still be firing missiles and launching drones at Ukraine? Probably not. Why not? I mean, they're still in a war. What does one thing have to do with the other? I don't know. I mean, like, it seems weird to, you know, like, be in the middle of this massive military coup and you're still launching, like, ballistic missiles like and, and artillery. I mean, they, they did just uh, uh, bombard uh, part of, uh, what, uh, Donbass. Uh, not Donbass, sorry. What the hell am I talking about? Bakhmut. Uh, when, uh, when the Ukrainians tried to, to make their way in. I mean, they're currently quite engaged there. I think we can all agree now just what a complete shit show uh, the Russian military is and what a complete shit show it is and embarrassment it is to have your only really successful leading military officer to for six months be basically threatening the life of your uh, commander in chief, now calling him a corrupt person, debunking the, the comments about R Ukrainian Nazism and Ukrainian aggression in eastern Ukraine, and now... Uh, purportedly are like uh, trying to have a coup against your commanding chief commander chief it is a fucking bad look and if you're an infantry soldier in russia right now you're probably shaking your head like what the fuck is going on i have to fight these ukrainians right now and now that my two my, you know my two parents are basically fighting am i going to get my supplies next week what's going to happen am i going to get encircled should i leave what you know who can i trust who should i listen to it is an absolute shit show and it is, it is, in my mind, another yeah. testament to Russia. Sorry, sorry. Just, 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 just another news. Just another news. Extremely on, uninformed on. take there from Mickey. Jackson, you owe me one. Hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. Sorry. I'm just, I'm sorry. I just got to mute. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just, just from news again. And then you guys can go back and forth. So I did one from Caitlin Collins is saying President Biden has been brief on what's happening on the, in Russia per the National Security Council. So at least you can say the U.S. are taking this very seriously. Did he asked for one or two so, 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 who, I mean, What is, like, guys, guys, in Rostov, guys, in Rostov, to suggest, suggest it, quick, quick question, uh, Rostov, uh, also, what is, the, uh, what is the building or the headquarters that are in Rostov that are very important? So Rostov Don, Rostov Don, the city, so there's the Rostov state, which is what Prigozhin is saying he's entered through Luhansk into Ukraine. 
So there's Luhansk, right? That's that's Rostov State. The Rostov Don, the headquarters there is the historically has always been the headquarters of the Russian Southern Military District, right? And then, but also that is where the headquarters of Russia's overall military operations in Ukraine, right? The the general headquarters is located there. It has kind of like dual purposes: the Southern Military District and the overall command responsible for Russia's military operations in Ukraine. Okay, and, and okay. So the one thing go ahead, I'll say is. Uh, we still so someone a few minutes ago put forward the Prigozhin state. The Prigozhin statement is real. He said he crossed into Russian territory and they were greeted, but we still haven't seen any photos or videos of this allegedly fifty-kilometer-long, you know, Wagner assault uh, column that's headed towards uh, Rostov. So it's like the, we first need to see the video. Second of all, whatever Mickey just said there was crazy. I mean, like uh, first of all, you know. Prigozhin hasn't come out and directly talked about Putin, from what I understand, in a negative light ever. In fact, three days ago, he was just having a meeting with Putin. He talks poorly against uh, Gerasimov and Shoigu. And also, you said that Prigozhin is a, a military, a commanding military officer. Prigozhin is not an officer. He's not a general. He's not a commander. He's not a captain. He's never had any military position, and he doesn't even within Wagner today. So I... I have no idea what you're talking about. Frankly, I don't know how you even are, you know, an authority in this space talking about today's very critical events. It's it's just propaganda. My man, Jackson, first of all, you only won Bitcoin because you made a bet. You're just trying to hide and deflect from that. Everybody knows it. And, uh, you know, Prigozhin is, is is respected by the Russian military. He earned his stripes in Bakhmut, number one. But number two, he's, he pays more than everybody else. There is a lot the Russian special forces, people who lead the Russian military all want to work for Prigozhin because he pays better and, and his military is much better equipped. He is very popular and well respected as, as, a, as a fighting uh, commander. And um, I think that that's that is not uh, controversial. Well, he's a cool guy. I, I'm aware of all of that, officer. but he, you said, I'm aware of all of that. But it was just I found it interesting that you said he was a commanding officer when he he holds no formal military position. And that's basically where he's coming at with all this stuff, you know, I, I, whether it's real or not, I guess we'll see. But the argument from those who believe it's real is that, you know, he's not in the military. He, he's not chained to this military hierarchy and therefore he wants to change it and he wants to disrupt the system. But I've leaned more of the belief that I don't know if this stuff is as real as they're trying to make it out to be. So, guys, we now have cruise missiles going over the third region of Ukraine, which is Kurovrad region. I believe I'm pronouncing it right. But as Jackson says, it could just be as part of ongoing the ongoing conflict and not related to this. But uh, just letting you know. And um, just a question to Igor. Uh, is Igor here? Or I need Igor back. There's a few things he mentioned I need to know. Um, I will be jumping on a quick call also since Suleiman just to get some more updates on the situation, just to verify a few things. So just give me a few minutes, guys. I'll be back with uh, more updates. Yeah, can, can I just answer what yeah, uh, I just said? Uh, Prigozhin does not pay his troops. Uh, the, the Wagner is paid by the Ministry of Defense. This is not like a slush fund that Prigozhin is dipping into. That's a, they're all paid by the MOD. So that's an, another false um, another false light that uh, Mickey has just thrown out. My, but my boy David, you know, um, we were just talking in the space. It is true that Wagner soldiers make more money than uh, than Russian troops. Uh, that's not true, actually. That's just more fakery that you're just throwing out. That is true, David. Don't be silly. No, the, the men that go to fight for Wagner go fight for Russia. Um, if you watch any of the interviews that have been... Uh, Jackson that have been agree with you. Sorry, I didn't... I did not overspeak you. Mickey. You're right. Dave, you're right. Look, any of the interviews that were given by the members of Wagner, um, the, the, what they fight for is Russia. And they are not paid more than any other member in any of the other forces, including the Chechens or the LPR, DPR in Russia. That is just another false lie put out by, by your type of propaganda. I'm sorry to tell you. Depending, to you depending, on, depending on how you qualify payment, uh, I guess you could make the argument, though, that some Wagner soldiers are paid more in the sense that they're given the ultimate gift of freedom for serving their country. A lot of these men that fought in Bakhmut were um, serving or they were to be serving lengthy prison sentences, as we all know. And they were said, if you know, if you go and fight for six months in Bakhmut or wherever we need you, you will get the gift of freedom. So I think that. For those men, yeah, they are receiving more than the other soldiers, but that's a that's a unique circumstance. 
just so, so it, 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 keeping it, in mind that no, yeah. just some, sorry just some breaking news just from the breaking news group it says the SF, FSB say they allowed Wagner to cross the border Astro sources the outlet also claims that the order not to oppose the movement of Wagner PMCs across the border came from the FSB there was no resistance to the penetration of Wagner fighters they were quietly let through so that is uh, from Astra sources so fascinating any video, any video so, or photos so, Again, so I, I, Jackson, day. Jackson, the, I think the issue you're going to run into, though, we have to. So two things. One, it's two thirty right now in the morning in Moscow. Right. But what the funny thing is, is that we're in the early hour, like it's two thirty in the morning in, in, in Moscow. And if you look at along a lot of these routes and these highways, we're already getting reports on Google Maps of traffic jams and highways being closed because of roadblocks on Google Maps. Like it's showing there right now. And so I think we're going to have to wait. I think there is a I think Ian brings up a good point. The situation has to clear up in the next 24 hours. And obviously right now there's a lot of statements like Suman said of the FSB. I think they're trying to save face, which I don't know why. I think they're just trying to say, hey, we let them through. Because what Prigozhin is saying, let's not forget that the border guard allowed them to go also, through. Also, like a genuine question. Like, I, I, why, why haven't we got any images or videos? Because it's true. It, it is happening no, live. No, no, it's happening. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to respond to this. I'll respond to this. I don't this get it. Because you can't it, take too, a camera's band at that time. It's 2.30 in the morning, but let me just say, we're getting tons of videos from all these cities across Russia where there's military preparation going on 13 hours away from Rostov. And then in addition to that, all these soldiers, we've seen it throughout the entirety of the war, anytime they're in some sort of a, you know large-scale military column and it's all beautiful looking and stuff, either side, Ukraine or Russia— They've all got their phones. They're all videotaping. They're all, you know, sending it to their sources, to various Telegram channels. So why? I mean, there, it's very possible this is all happening. I'm just simply saying, and I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm an American. But I'm just saying, you know, we should be asking these questions. Why are there no video? Why is so, there no So videos? actually, Jackson, sorry. I just got just, again, Wagner, another statement from Prigozhin. Uh, I'm just going to read it verbatim, basically. So this is coming from the Wagner head. Prigozhin claims in a post that Chief of the General Staff, Gerasimov, gave the command to open fire from aircrafts on Wagner columns mixed with civilian uh, vehicles. The pilots refused to follow the orders. That just came from Prigozhin right now on his Telegram channel. So just um, just very quickly, Dmitry Peskov, who is the um, press secretary for uh, for Putin, has released a statement saying the Ministry of Defense, the FSB, the Ministry of Internal Affairs, the Russian Guard all report around the clock to Putin on the measures taken on his behalf in connection with the attempted rebellion. So I guess that's in response to the statement that Putin can't be found. Sorry, sorry, so just two, two guys, just too many updates. This, I'm, I'm not I'm keeping up, uh, and 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 I'm, I've just hung up on the call when I heard the news. Also, what was that latest update from you before with Khaleesi's? Uh, Prigozhin saying there's been an attack on his column, on his on his. No, that, that Gerasimov, the, the the Russian general, you know, general of the, the their Russian chief of staff, basically ordered the Russian air force to attack uh, uh, the Wagner column. And that those pilots refuse those orders. Again, this is coming straight from Prigozhin's telegram. I have no, we have no way of confirming, but Prigozhin is claiming that pilots were ordered to attack his so column, the, and that those pilots. Okay, so Prigozhin is saying that the Russian chief of staff has ordered his pilots to attack Wagner forces, and the pilots yes. refused. And refused. To, and, to, and that, I'll that's just Wagner's play, claim. I'll play devil's advocate here yet again. Uh, so you mean to tell me that Prigozhin, who's had a months long feud with Gerasimov and has called for his execution, is somehow now receiving the internal minute by minute uh, communications of Gerasimov to Russian pilots about how they're going to target the ongoing column of Russian or of, of Wagner fighters crossing crossing the border? Like that makes no sense whatsoever to me. Because Gerasimov and is hated. That, I, I but but, but you, how how are you going to tell me that Prigozhin is getting these minute by minute? Uh, yeah, Prigozhin could be making stuff. this up to show that that the military yeah, is turning. Also it it up, is yeah. just to show that the military, in my opinion, to show that the military is maybe it's true. If it's true, that's concerning. It's, if it's true, so it just shows that, that the true. Air Force. That the FSB, FSB but Prigozhin might have people down. on the inside. Exactly, also. we don't know what relationship that's, we have. We, we all know don't know exactly what Prigozhin has planned over the last few months. And I love this. We're all like Hitler's chickens, just you know, speculating here. It's yeah. Like, okay. Well, if you don't want to, and, and I'll also say, I'll also say that uh, if if so, 
it it wouldn't be Gerasimov that would be demanding. For, first of all, it wouldn't be Gerasimov that would be demanding this. It would be Putin calling for this, and they don't have to use fighter Kelisi. jets. They could use. So, Kelisi, just quickly. Uh, last, last, sorry, go, Jackson. Just you go last, uh, they they'd be if they if they fighter jets weren't available or they were refusing to fight. I mean, that's treason in it of itself, and those pilots would be ordered to be killed or put in prison for a life sentence. They could use missiles. So it's just, that 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 statement doesn't seem accurate. Um, uh, so, uh, um, yeah, Kalisa, what was your um, update right after All Source? My update was that the Ministry of Defense, the FSB, the Ministry of Internal Affairs, the Russian Guard are all reporting round the clock to Putin on the measures taken on his behalf in connection with the attempted rebellion. And that's released by the press secretary to Putin, Peskov. Um, the other thing, what All Source's update was, um, Al Jazeera is reporting the same, apart from the last part. So Al Jazeera is reporting that the chief of general staff of Russian Federation gave the command to raise the helicopters and open fire on the Wagner columns. And that's by, by Prigozhin. But that doesn't say that the order was refused. Do we Can I just jump in here quickly? Um, so, I mean, you know, I, I think there's a couple of points here that I want to keep in mind for everybody, which is one... Um, Russia can get its shit together when it really wants to. Um, this is a centralized state that has been under the power of one singular man for the past 20 years in which most Russians identify as being the modern day Russia, right? We don't think of Russia as anything other than Putin's Russia. And for the time that it has taken for Putin to consolidate power, um, purge, you know, um, so many potential political oppositions. You know, we've seen what he does with people like Navalny as soon as they enter the uh, the country. We've seen what he does in the scourge of poisonings of 2018 in, in the UK. Um, what's happening with Wagner Group now is the biggest probably internal security threat that the country's seen in many years. But I, I'm just not overly thinking regardless of what's happening on the ground it's i just don't think that putin is not someone who has for all the paranoia you know expected this and perversion has probably been the man who's been on his radar for a long time even if he's not been in the biggest internal circles like say uh, members of the fsb so i think what we'll see here is is a true testament of whether putin is actually supported by his political establishment or it really is the beginning of the end. And people may be pissed off with Putin, but it always comes back to that thing of he's done such a good job of not allowing there to be any alternatives within the country, right? I cannot for a life of me think who would replace Putin. And as I say, oligarchs, minigarchs, the political establishment may not like him, they may not like the way he's conducting Ukraine, but at the end of the day, a, a nation state's stability internally is first and foremost, it's a survivalist thing. Um, so I'm very interested to just see what role this has on the... Um, uh, on the war on the front and how many potential resources, attention and so on have to be diverted um, from a Western point of view, from a staunch Ukrainian point of view, right? This is something that we've seen commentated the potential dissolution of the Soviet of Russia, which I don't think will happen. But, you know, this will, this will play into the support of Russia. Union. So Peskov did say, as we said, Peskov did say that Putin is getting briefed 24-7 about the uh, uh, the, the 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 what do they call it attempt of an armed rebellion um that was ca come out of uh, peskov's um uh, uh, uh office um and this kind of uh, answers the question again we don't know what to believe or not to believe um if, if we're in the middle of a coup so we don't know what to believe or what to believe um but this does answer the question of what we said earlier that no one could reach putin so um and it obviously says that putin is is well and alive um so, he's going to go underground. He's not going to. He's not going to appear for a while. Fine. Yeah, he'll go underground for a while. Um, yeah, he was driving around a few hours ago. A few hours ago. Yeah, there was no, there was really no, there was no coup now. If, uh, in, in an hour ago. Yeah, um, I think what he's doing. No, no, no. I mean, like while this thing was breaking out, his motorcade was in Moscow, headed to the Kremlin. So he's there. Um, okay. So, so I'm just going to read out just a, a general update, just for the audience. Um, the team just put out now a tweet summarizing everything so far. 
Um, okay, just came out now. So let me pin it in the in the space above. I'll pin it on my profile as well because the old one's a bit outdated. And that has all the latest updates, everything we know so far. Um, so I'm just going to open it up and read it out for everyone. And you want to say there's a video included there, a few um, clips that the team put all to, put it all together. So let me um, mute everyone to avoid any background noise and let me just give an update for the audience. Um, everything started when Prigozhin, who's the head of the uh, mercenary group Wagner, accused Russia of bombing his military sites in Ukraine. We heard later that this is an attempted uh, assassination attempt. Despite the Russian defense ministry's claim that there is no truth to his allegation, Prigozhin stated that 25,000 mercenaries would participate in a military coup organized by him. Igor Gurkin, a former, former member of the Russian Federal Security Service, confirmed that the military coup attempt, quote, had begun. And now we know he wasn't lying. Wagner has confirmed that they have indeed initiated their coup. Here's everything we know so far. Reports that the FSB has allowed Wagner, says the Federal Security Service has allowed Wagner to enter Russian city of Rostov without any resistance. That's what the FSB has said. So this just came in. It came in a couple of minutes ago, but as, as I was updating the tweet. And could mean that the FSB is either part of the coup or they are trying to save face after Wagner was able, able to enter without resistance. Now, obviously, for anyone that believes this is all um, being fabricated uh, to draw attention away, um, from Ukraine and, and to trick Ukraine or to escalate the war in Ukraine, obviously, that then you have a different explanation. Prigozhin just claimed, and again, this happened a couple of minutes ago, um, that the Russian chief of, just chief of the general staff, Gerazimov, Gerazimov, gave the command to open fire from aircraft on Wagner columns mixed with civilian vehicles. The pilots refused to follow the order. Roadblocks have been established by the FSB and SOBR on the Moscow uh, and Rostov highway. Wagner has accused any, and Rostov, uh, we'll talk about later, um, Prigozhin is heading to the city, the main city there, where there's important headquarters to the southern Russian military and the, the headquarters for the Russian offensive in Ukraine. Wagner has accused any Russian military personnel who don't assist them in their, quote, cleansing campaign of collaborating with the Ukrainians and stated they will be dealt with accordingly. Multiple Russian military generals have made videos urging Wagner not to proceed with this attack. The OMON and SOBR units of the Russian Guard are on high alert and security in Moscow has been significantly intensified. Allegedly, a clash has occurred between Wagner and units of the Roskovardia on the Rostov-Moscow highway, Ni Kozachi Laheri. So this is alleged, this is, we have not been able to confirm this. It is estimated that only 25% of Russians currently have access to the internet. Armed vehicles have filled the streets of Rostov, and maybe that answers the question of why we're not seeing any footage. Armed vehicles have filled the streets of Rostov, and dozens of aircraft filled with Russian special forces are flying to the region. According to Russia's defense ministry, Ukraine has, quote, taken advantage of Prigozhin's provocation to destabilize the situation and is attacking Russia's forces along the flanks. And we already saw that there's been progress in Bakhmut. They've entered Bakhmut. I think, Kalisa, you read that update. Russia's Ministry of Defense has repeatedly asked Wagner to stand down. Russian media has reported that, quote, there is panic in the Kremlin, no one can reach Putin, and that the current mood among St. Petersburg elites is, quote, when choosing between Putin and Prigozhin, Prigozhin is now the preferred choice, they support him. I don't know what the source of this, this is a pretty big statement, so anyone from the team can tell me the source of exactly what Russian media said this or who on Russian media said this, because for Russian media to say that Prigozhin is the, is the preferred choice, um, that would be very surprising, something I find it hard to believe. So I'd want to please verify that. Prigozhin said that he and his men are ready to go, quote, all the way, and that, quote, he and his men will destroy anyone who stands in their way. Press Secretary Dmitry Peskov, Putin receives reports 24-7 about the measures taken related to the attempt of an armed rebellion, which kind of goes against the statement, not against, but explains the statement on, on why he cannot be reached. Um, and I, I wrote just a little, a, a couple of sentences here. I think without the support from within the Kremlin, this will not succeed. But we've received reports that there is people within the Russian military, um, including higher ups, that are either turning against the Kremlin or standing by and watching the developments. We've also heard that Wagner was able to enter the Russian city of Rostov with no resistance. Rostov's main city is home to the headquarters of the Russian Southern Military District and the general headquarters for the Russian military operations in Ukraine. Now, personally, I don't think this will succeed. Um, obviously, it's way too early to tell. We just don't have enough information. Um, even if we have all the updates, we just don't know what's happening behind the scenes and what Prigozhin has been preparing all this time. Um, and, Pro and this could be just Prigozhin's desperate response after learning of his potential arrest, because we know there's an investigation into potential um, um, uh, weapons being smuggled to uh, Wagner's forces from Russian forces. 
There's an ongoing investigation by the ESO. Yes, I've talked about that. Um, and there's been reports that an assassination attempt against Prigozhin took place. Um, and this could have led to his response now. So um, all sorts. Is there anything I've missed uh, with the updates I've just given before opening up, uh, opening it up back to the discussion? Uh, yeah, just, just no, nothing, nothing breaking. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Uh, but basically, the the governor, I believe it was the governor Crimea, uh, basically released a statement on Telegram. I'm trying to look at it, but, but basically he's saying that he doesn't have a concrete plan or inf that he doesn't have any concrete information what's going on, and just to have faith basically in the Russian military and, and President Putin. That just highlights, there's, I think there's just a general mass confusion. And for, for anyone that is requesting yeah. to speak, just give you the rules again. For the audience, questions can be put into the bottom right corner, um, and we'll be going through the questions or any information you have. Please always add the source. If you're someone requesting to speak, obviously don't request if you have no um, credential, any information that we can verify. Um, but if you are requesting, please do DM me why you're requesting or what information you'd like to share. My team is checking all our DMs 24-7 and our team is checking all news. Anyone that shares news in the comments, please do include, tag me and include um, a, a reference if you don't mind, please. Oh, Mario, can, here, sorry, sorry. I just, wanna, I just wanted to give the, the specific quote. So, so, uh, so the governor of Sevastopol from Crimea says, and this is the quote, quote, like many of you now, I am not sleeping. Updating the news feed. Any conflict is bad. A conflict of this level is extremely bad. And there's uh, explosions heard in Dnipro in, in Ukraine as well. It seems that the attacks in Ukraine are surprisingly ongoing. That is correct, yes. And I have an update. Uh, so uh, I think we talked about this a while ago where there were rumors that, you know, the TV1, which is their main television channel in Russia, uh, would be putting out an emergency uh, announcement. Well, they haven't. Yet, instead, they're showing a, a talk show where a woman is explaining uh, fashion to men. So, um, what is? On. Can someone give me some clarity? And by the way, the, the tweet that's pinned above—that's um, the new one now. We've changed the thread to that tweet. So, if you check the tweet pinned above, we're going to be adding all the updates that we'll be sharing here in that tweet, and we'll be mentioning. What is spe speculation? Obviously, not random speculation, but some sort of verification in the background, um, and uh, and what. Um, so progression is. Um, so progression is. You know, you know he. He only in November, October announced his actual leadership of Wagner. For many years, it was suggested that he was the leader, but he never. I mean, the guy's a chef, right? He 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 basically moonlighted as a chef whilst running and founding one of the most uh, bloody uh, PMCs or private mercenary corporations in the world. Um, in 2015, Libya was finally found with documents uh, in the Tripoli, the capital, you know, m suggesting that uh, the Wagner Group was operating there. And since then, Wagner Group has become... And, and in terms of his... And, Piotr, but back to, and what support does yeah. he have, please? Uh, what, in terms of the political? Uh, well, nothing on the relations of, of Putin. I mean, the guy is seen as a very competent, perhaps, military leader. Uh, from my perspective, a lot of people are quite surprised that he went straight into the front lines in back. the will of the people, then it's not going to carry you very far, right? Does he have, uh, does so he have the will of the people, Piotr? No, I don't think so. Um, and that's, that goes back to what I said a minute ago, which is that modern Zoom is state media. So um, uh, tacit news, uh, Interfax, these are the main media organizations. And Progrosian is not going to have been able to manipulate the minds of Russians or influence the minds of Russians, if you want to be less negative, uh, to support him. So I cannot see how Progrosian uh, has that ability to win round the people. Um, power transitions, particularly in a country that is more autocratic, are never easy. It's not a transition of power in a democracy. It's a transition of power from, I mean, look at what, you know, look at Sudan, right? The, the attempted coup in Sudan. Look at uh, any coup. Myanmar. The military in Russia is powerful, but it's not a country that's been run by the military historically, whilst Sudan and Myanmar are. 
So I don't personally think that even if Prigozhin was able to... A coup cannot succeed without the military, though. It can't. But what I'm saying is you've got to look at the historical context of the country. Has the country been run under a coup for a longer period of time? Russia's never been a militarizedly run state. It's still had a king. It's had an elected individual or, a, you know, someone like Lenin. It's, he's not a general, though. So I cannot suddenly see how a coup in Russia led by Prigozhin would result in Prigozhin becoming the president of the Russian Federation, personally. Maybe he has more than that, but again, a lot of this. The, is someone there, from my so team did back. say. Someone from my team did say. Where is it now? Where do you put it? Uh, that Prigozhin has has a lot of backing. He has the same number of social media followers. He only started on social media recently. He has a, a, a similar, if not the same, number of social media followers or engagement as. I'm just trying to find the message that he sent me. Um, as Putin himself, so he does have the support of the people. Um, so I'll read out the message here. Prigozhin started. Started social on social media 14 months ago, and he has nearly as many followers and engagement as Putin. He has the backing of many people. I'll just say that uh, I don't know if I believe those social media stat numbers, but I mean, Putin's like one of the most famous men in the entire world. He's probably up there, top three, top four. So I don't know if I believe those numbers, but I will say a lot of the Russian uh, soldiers and reservists that I've uh, talked to. They they love Prigozhin. They think he's a bit of a loose cannon. But someone asked the question, what does the military and political leadership think about Prigozhin? Because that's a different question. And from what I understand on that front, most believe that he is not befitting of kind of being in that club, if you will, because he rejects and outright refuses to uh, follow the just classic military doctrine that every you don't even need to be in the military to understand that hierarchy in a military must be that that doctrine and um you know nothing really came of that so that's a question if that was an op or that was real what went on there but uh just one last thing piotr said that uh, he's a general uh no uh, Prigozhin is not a general. Again, he's not an officer, commander, captain, anything. He holds no official military ranking and never has. Um, so I've just got... And he uh, certainly just got, wasn't a cooker. Uh, I do have, a, I do have a, an update from one of our regular panelists. He said, um, and, and maybe he'll come up later, I'll tell you exactly why it's not a Kremlin false flag. Imagine being an, uh, a Russian Air Force soldier on the front line in Ukraine. This instilled disarray and confusion across the entire army. This is the last thing you would want to do as a false flag. And another message, they, another comment they sent through. Rostov on Don is the hub for the entire Russian military operation in Ukraine. That's why Wagner being in that city is important. They're not in that city again. They're in Rostov, the state, and not Rostov on Don, which is the city. Important to note this on the space. So that was just mentioned right now by one of our regular panelists. Many of you would know. Uh, also, um, another thing by Olsen Defender. There is, there still has been no visual evidence that Wagner forces or columns are on the move tonight in the Donetsk and Luhansk region of eastern Ukraine or in the Rostov region like Progozhin is claiming. We are still in a wait and see phase. So this is very important. We do not have any visual evidence of all these claims, which is something that I think Ian or someone else mentioned earlier. And it's important to note that. I, I mentioned that. And I'll, and I'll Thanks, also sir. say, Although it was afternoon when this took place, and right now it is it's it's uh, 3 a.m. there, uh, when Belgrade was invaded, uh, some people, you know, with with this story today, they're saying, well, you know, it's it's 2:30 a.m., it's 3 a.m., and these are like border towns. Well, the very hour that we saw the Ukrainian uh, Russian defect opposition go into Belgrade about you know three weeks ago. Uh, we got video updates from like, uh, just uh, Jackson. But just remember, remember, we did have reports that um, only 25% of of Russia has access to the internet. That was about an hour ago. We don't know if that's still the case, but just thought I'd update that. Okay. Well, I mean, it's so so that I mean, I I I haven't I've seen that, but I mean, how do you even prove that? We like, can't. So again, that's why I said reports. It's, it's very hard to prove a lot of things being well, mentioned. Net, right now. Netblocker Netblocker tracks. So NetBlocker is able to track live data on internet restrictions. They, they are extremely reliable and they have reported uh, at least a lot of websites are no longer accessible on Russian internet and have been blocked by Russian authorities. So that, that is true. 
So they're saying a lot of websites aren't accessible on Russian internet. That that's the claim that we're using to suffice that twenty five per, only twenty five percent of Russians can access the internet right now. So I'm going to read exactly what the issue is confirmed by Netblocks. This is, and I'm only going to say confirmed. And Netblock says it's confirmed. It's confirmed. Confirmed. Met- metrics show that the Google News aggregator platform has become unavailable for many users in Russia. The incident comes amid high, amid high tensions between the Wagner paramilitary group and Moscow. That is the only thing that they've been able to confirm, which indicates that at least from 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 the internet access, it is being restriction restricted by the Russian government. Uh, to its citizen now, does that translate to twenty five percent of Russians cannot access internet until Ned Blocks confirms that? I will not make that confirmation at all. On this, could there just be an outage in Russia to Google News? Because I'm not hearing any reports of any other websites being inaccessible. Just Google News. I, I just shared it on the Nest. All right. Uh, Julia, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to address the uh, question about the um, Prigozhin, uh, how, how Russians generally favor him. Actually, he enjoyed quite, uh, you know, um, great response from a lot of Russian citizens. I've seen it in comments, I've seen it in streams that I watch, um, in a lot of Telegram channels. But actually, I can see right now it's changing in real time. So uh, the, I follow, a, you know, a bunch of... Uh, um, uh, war correspondence, and I see the comments. A lot of people actually turning on him. Some of them still uh, support him, people, but sorry, a, lot a lot of them people, are like, a lot of people are turning on who? Sorry, on Prigozhin because they don't want that in fighting. They don't want this civil war in. And a lot of them actually cite 2014 coup uh, as an example, and they say, "Well, we don't want something like that. If Prigozhin wants to play this game, we don't want that." At the same time, Prigozhin was right for, you know, with a lot of things, especially talking about Shoigu. Uh, Shoigu is very corrupt. His family is very corrupt, too. That's undeniable fact. But if we take words of Prigozhin at face value, what he said in the past about Shoigu, he was right. He was right about a lot of things. But what he said before, he has no intention to run for president. He has no intention to Who doesn't? Prigozhin? Um, actually harm Russia. Prigozhin, Prigozhin yes. Yes, he said it in the past. I follow him uh, like pretty much consistently. So if we take at face value what he said, and he said a lot of truthful things, actually, something that I've been reporting on like for maybe a month, right? And a lot of people were disregarding that because they say, well, it's just a show, it's just a trolling on his side. But actually, it's it's correct because some other people, some those who were actually fighting on the front lines, they were saying what Prigozhin has been saying for months at this end. So that's when I heard from Prigozhin, I said, okay, well, this is true, because I already heard that before. So we don't know what's going to happen. So, so, so uh, you, I don't it, think that he has intention. Yeah. yeah, I've got a question for you, and that, like you, you were just answering it, but I'll, I'll, did, I will mention a question just for everyone that just joined um, and asking you know questions we've already have, uh, covered before. Everything we've discussed so uh, far is... Can I just share some news yeah, before you ask Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, right. please. So I just want to read... Uh, there's a long Telegram post. I'm just going to read the quote. This is from a Telegram channel based on Rossoff. They're saying several MI-8 helicopters have been raised into the skies. All our air defense points have been ordered to be ready. In addition, it is necessary to strengthen foot control of the police patrol in the city. I mean, this is just the Telegram tr- translation. But the, what the gist of it is, is basically in Rossoff, we are seeing from the local Telegram channels there are indicating increased uh, uh, military activity, the utilization of Russian helicopters. And we do have video footage of already published prior a couple hours ago and, and still current of uh, Russian military units active in the capital city of Rostov-on-Don. That, that, so this just adds to that. Sorry, go ahead, Mario. So one I second, got I got an update Mario. which says... Go ahead, Khaleesi. I also cruise, missiles, okay. cruise missiles are flying towards Kiev. Okay. This is... So I got a breaking news here. Uh, Sho- uh, Prigozhin came out and said, Shoig- now, so now not just Gradasimov, but also Shoigu ordered to attack the columns on the civil highway. So that's Prigozhin pretending that there's some sort of a war happening in Rostov at the moment. Again, with still, I mean, like we're, we're what, 30 minutes, an hour after the claim that they entered and we still have no photos or video. True. And I, I do want to mention, Lev, what's your news before I, I just mentioned some thoughts uh. here? I have a very close source uh, in uh, Moscow right now that's telling me that uh, they have confirmation. I'm going to try to get... He doesn't want to relay his name because he's scared for his life, but basically that there are portions of the FSB that are showing loyalty to 
uh, 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 what's his name? Shagoshin. Okay, okay, so that- that's like that's like claiming that Jackie Kennedy killed or was involved in the killing of John F. Kennedy. That is the most ludicrous claim I've ever heard. The FSB is the most loyal group of people probably on this earth to one man. And, and how do you know that, Jackson? How do you know that? Like, uh, you, or, how does your history. fact? Years of Russia. Year, year, I think I have a lot you're more not, years of Russia and a lot more contacts in Russia so than you You're coming here and you're than, citing an anonymous source claiming that quote so far, unquote, all my, faction... So far, wait, 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 wait. wait. Quote, unquote, Jackson. Let me just finish. You're claiming that quote unquote factions of the FSB, the sole body in Russia that is entirely in whole completely loyal to Putin without citing what these factions are, how these factions uh, rose up, how they have contact with Prigozhin or Wagner, you know, a group that they don't really have any contact with. You're claiming that they are somehow loyal to Prigozhin over Putin? Absolutely. And you'll see that come out in the next couple of hours or maybe even a day or so, but you will see. Okay. Good stuff. All right. So I've just got... um... Yeah, does anyone have more updates, any any breaking news before I share some information? No, I just wanted to address that uh, quickly regarding the question about if FSB actually is loyal to Prigozhin. Um, Wagner Group is actually full of uh, ex-military, ex-officers ex- from various police, FSB, military, whoever. Uh, so, I mean, that very might be the case, but I'm going to disregard that because it's, it's just an anonymous source. So we, we don't know that right. the story so, can be just so, uh, so I've, I've got a question for you, Julia. And before that, um, again, just a reminder for the audience. First, the pin tweet above has a summary of everything. So if you go above where I, I think the team pinned it on my profile, you can see everything we've discussed so far. Um, we're getting a lot of p- reports of people want to come up on stage. Make sure you include why you want to come up on stage. If you have any information that is worth sharing in the discussion, make sure you include the source. Um, I do want to add, for example, someone did say that Google News has been down in Russia for quite a while, but there is no internet outage in Russia. But obviously, that could be uh, a- a- an individual case, but just something to mention. And as also mentioned, there is no uh, reports on the source that you trust also of outage in Russia, so that's an, of internet outage. Which kind of goes back to the point that there is, um, there's powerful explosions on Kharkov, just came out now. Um, and, but just to come back to the, to the point, um, we don't have any visual evidence of Prigozhin entering um, uh, the, the city, Rostad. Um, and that's important to mention because we don't know in Rostov, we don't know if, if they're actually in there and all the claims he's making. And that goes to my question um, for you, Julia, and anyone can take that question afterwards. And Khaleesi, if it is breaking news, just jump in. If not, I'll give you the mic in a bit. Julia, uh, the question to you is, Prigozhin, uh, Prigozhin, is he acting out of emotions or is this all been prepared for a while, as Igor mentioned, and he's a very tactical man? Because it, it, it could just be desperation, assuming that there was an assassination attempt on his life or assuming that there is um, potentially a warrant for his arrest. Um, or of the claims that an attack on his military base took place, part of the assassination attempt. That could be an emotional response. If it is, it obviously reduces the likelihood of this being a success, which, again, I still stand uh, with my position that this is very unlikely to work. Um, but, again, I have no clue now. Um, I just want to remind no, you I don't, I'll, I'll, zero footage. Ian, uh, yeah, I'll, I, think I mentioned there's zero footage, yep. Yeah. Uh, Julia, I'll, I'll let you respond. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's not just emotional response. I think that Prigozhin came to that decision um, a while back. Um, I- I'll tell you why. Because think about this this way. Prigozhin is a businessman. He's not a cook, as a daughter said. He was not someone that was just milling about. He was a businessman. Sort of like Trump. When, he, when Trump came to power, he was outsider, right? So he tried to fix things that practically unfixable because of corruption, because of bureaucracy and everything else. Same in terms of this operation. So when Prigozhin came, he came because he wanted to help Russia, because he understood the situation, how desperate it was. And then he probably tried to fire on his channel. So he obviously he had some connection to Putin, to other powerful men in Russia. He tried to fix it behind the scenes because it's, it's actually damaging Russia, right? If you try to fight it just, uh, you know, as, as he's doing right now, it, it damages uh, reputation of Russia. It, it uh, plays into the hands of Ukrainians. So he wouldn't have done that if there were no other reason. So he tried and tried and tried and nothing worked. And now since the back is taken, um, what, what, like why Shoigu needs someone like Prigozhin? It's a powerful army. 
like 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 Wagner Group right now is is they they can serve as independent army. They have everything. They have intelligence. They they have absolutely whatever the army needs. So why would someone like Shoigu, whose position is very very threatened right now and has been threatened for a while, why would he need someone like Prigozhin? And this was just the last thing that just you know that just lit the entire thing. And no. I don't believe that that Prigozhin wanted to harm Russia. I don't think that he wanted to actually um, make coup or or just uh, kill anybody. I, I mean, like in terms of like Russia. So he understands perfectly well that it can lead to a civil war because some people will back Prigozhin, but some some of them will not. So in uh, this case, what, what else can he do uh, okay. if Shoigu is unrelentless? I'll just say that. Uh... So the claim that Wagner could operate as a, as its own independent army is, I mean, if you take if you take Prigozhin's words, that's ludicrous on its face. Because just go back, you know, a, a month or two ago when Prigozhin was trying to take five square kilometers of the last region of Ukrainian holdouts in Bakhmut, and he was having a conniption fit over the fact that he couldn't take it because they didn't have enough ammo. Uh, from supplied from the Russians, so that they're not an independent army per se. That's ludicrous. But also, but Jackson, they, it's not this. the army. I mean, Jackson, but it's not about whether what we all know, and I think we all agree, Wagner itself cannot fight the Russian army, the Russian military. The only way this coup could succeed, assuming it is a coup, etc., which everything indicates that it is, the only way this coup could succeed is if Prigozhin has friends had has allies on the inside he's just sort of the face of it but there's a lot of a lot of players in the background we've there's been rumors about a coup and mm. the risks of a coup for months and years now and we've generally learned to okay. ignore them but Mario, i got some okay, breaking but news th there's there's just i'll just say one thing to that i mean this quote Mario. unquote coup i don't i don't want to call it i don't uh, no, no, just, sorry sorry sorry, sorry okay, jackson. go ahead Ian. yeah you just a breaking news breaking jackson sorry jackson ahead. yeah just a breaking news i'll give you the mic right after sorry jackson go Ian, quickly with the breaking so news Khaleesi and ian go ahead and yeah, there's jackson. explosions over kiev um and um there's been two three sorry three tu-22 bombers airborne um and there's powerful explosions over kharkiv in ukraine and i believe the bombers have been airborne from elena air base Thank you. Okay. Can you see Ian? So was there good. more? Ian, was uh, there more? But yeah, my piece of news is not related to Russia, but it's uh, worthy of a space perhaps afterwards. Uh, the DNI, that's the, uh, uh, you know, the... You're talking uh, about the report about the Wuhan uh, lab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll the be potential covering. links between the Wuhan Director and the virology and we'll origin be covering of the COVID-19 pandemic, they've released a full report. Yeah, we're going through it now and we'll be covering that. Uh, obviously, we'll, we'll be covering this for now, but we'll be covering hey, that. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, Michael, right after Jackson. Yeah, Michael, right after Jackson. Jackson, go ahead, sir. So all I was going to say was that we're calling this a coup, I guess, but it's a, it's the first coup I've ever seen that's completely digital and paperwork in nature. I mean, so far we've been told that there's been the calls for arrest against Prigozhin. That turned out to be bogus. No one's called to arrest Prigozhin except for Reuters. We've seen that uh, there's been claims that Wagner has entered uh, Russian territory, except there's no video, no physical evidence of this. And then we're also... Uh, you know, we're, we're just being told all these lies. It's like uh, there was another lie as well that we, we countered in this space as well about this all. So it's like... Which other lie? When are we going to... We don't know. So Jackson, we don't know. Jackson, irrationality I, well, I don't know if it's irrationality. No one said that Putin's in New York right now talking to, Putin, to, to Biden. Um, what we're saying is that there's different reports. Some of them will end up being true, some of them not, and it's very difficult to verify them. That's why it is important to take everything with a grain of salt. Like I just got a it's video. Digital, right? I just got a video now of, of of I don't know if it's Wagner trucks, military trucks, but a whole we convoy. Don't know. It's so, so the, the, Mario, we don't know. A whole Mario, convoy of a trucks. A lot of the videos are coming out. Hold on, guys. The, a lot of the videos that are coming out right now in Rostov are Russian military units. There are significant columns in Russian military. A lot of it's breaking right now. And they're all Rostov Don. If right now everything we're seeing is Russian military, or more likely National Guard units mobilizing along the highway in anticipation for Wagner going. So I understand this idea. Well, we don't have videos of Wagner, you know, convoys coming through, but we have a shitload of videos of Russian National Guard mobilizing along the highways and waiting for something. So I think the Russians are taking this very seriously. Also, it was, I've seen it reported, and I posted a screenshot a few hours ago in RIA Novosti, which is a Russian state media newswire essentially reporting on a criminal case being opened by the fsb against Prigozhin. so it's not just a 
creation of Reuters or other American that, that, media, as far as I can see. Um, and But just a quick point contextually on Pergoz, I don't know if this has been raised, but it's interesting to me personally, uh, which is that, I don't know if people recall, but throughout the initial portion of the Russiagate saga, meaning the Trump-Russian collusion theories, um, one of the key locuses of that whole theory was this company in St. Petersburg called the Internet Research Agency, which basically could be traced to have been partially responsible for some of the spam or memes or whatever that flowed in to social media during the 2016 presidential election and was blown up and disproportionately exaggerated as this major threat. Um, nonetheless, they did put out some ridiculous pro-Trump memes and whatever, Bernie Sanders with a ripped chest and as a cartoon, like LGBT icon or something. Um, and this was, at the time, cast as evidence of Russian interference or Putin intervening in the election in particular because Prigozhin was the founder of the Internet Research Agency. And he was being uh, cast as an uh, oligarch with especially intimate connections to Putin. And I, I, mean, I admit at the time, I somewhat rolled my eyes at this allegation of kind of Putin's personal involvement because anybody that could be even asserted to have the most tangential quote ties to Putin was being hyped dramatically within the U.S. media as part of this larger Russiagate narrative. So I didn't put that much stock in this association that was claimed to Purgosian. But clearly, in the years since, he's emerged as an extremely crucial uh, figure. So it wouldn't just be that he's the, this complete outsider or he's even an outsider really in any respect. I don't know the exact nuances of this kind of quasi-state relationship that he has. But um, I, I do admit that the, the centrality of his role now whatever the deeper underlying motivation does make me sort of think back into the somewhat recent past and revise some assumptions I had made when his name was used in other contexts. Michael, I'll just say that uh, the claim made was that there had been calls from Putin to arrest Prigozhin. And while the general prosecutor has opened up an investigation and said there will be a fair legal assessment, uh, there have been no direct claims that I've seen verified, even from the FSB to uh, call for the arrest of Prigozhin. So well, you that, think the, you think important. so? You think the FSB opened a criminal case against Prigozhin against the wishes of Putin? No, no. But I think there's a difference between open in terms of the practical legal sense of opening up a case versus saying, "Okay, Prigozhin has entered our territory. They are trying to take over cities, and we need to arrest them." Immediately. I, yeah, well, I mean, sure. I mean, it could just be that. It's like when people say the Biden administration is prosecuting Trump. I have Trump. Brief, so might really not literally made the referral. Sorry, still the, refer to the, I have an object from Rostov. Just really quickly, the strikes on Kharkov and the region were confirmed by the head of Kharkov governor, Oleg Sinagubov. So he's confirmed it. There's major strikes on Kharkov and, uh, and, and some of them Kiev were resulted well. in fires. Yeah, in Kiev as well. Uh, I have an update from Rostov, which is the Russian region uh, where the headquarters of the southern military is located and where Wagner is supposedly headed or, you know, they claim to have entered. Well, this is from local Rostov news. It's uh, been posted on Telegram. Uh, briefly, for non-residents, uh, here's what's happening in Rostov in the region. So, uh, one, in Rostov itself, everything is quiet and calm. Only 50 meters of the road were blocked at the he uh, headquarters of the Southern Military District. Uh, number two, on the outskirts of Rostov, everything is quiet and calm. Number three, nothing is in ha nothing, nothing, nothing's happening at Rostov Region 4. Uh, the only inconvenience is that the police have blocked the main roads in the region and are inspecting cars, and they say it's an exercise. Right. Number five, there are also no suspicious movements on the border with DPR and LPR, which is where they claimed uh, Wagner would be, you know, were. Right. Uh, number six, uh, there are no soldiers and equipment of PMC Wagner anywhere. And number seven, you can go to sleep now, officially. So that, uh, who, who, the, said, uh, who said that? Sorry, uh, Ian? That is a, a Rostov channel, a Rostov Glavny, uh, news of Rostov on Don. This is the official local uh, media channel at, uh, well, it's not really official, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's run by people who live in Rostov. Don't you guys think it's a little bit sus that, like, I think it was three or four days ago, Putin and Prigozhin had this meeting and everyone was talking about it, and then no one actually heard what they talked about. It was not in the press after it took place. And then now this is all happening and there's all these weird discrepancies about where these troops actually are, if they exist, so on and so forth. Yeah, look, I don't know. The, uh, Ian's statement is important. Um, I think, Jackson, what your question asked, it, of course, there's going to be a lot of lack of clarity. Uh, I, I, I don't expect the coup to be very clean. We know all the facts. Of course, there's going to be false information. 
is my only question though is Prigozhin the things he's saying like entering Rostov and and uh, have, facing no resistance and then the the pilots um, being uh, not not firing at his um, at his uh, convoy. Yeah, these are BS, yes, you know? these are the things no that evidence. these are the things. So Jack, Jackson, my question would be like, is he making this shit up to show that the military is supporting him, or there's people defecting? Is he making these up to show that he's having a lot of progress to gain some support? And it kind of links back to my question: Is this an act of desperation? Um, so, like, if you remember, for example, in in um, one of the coups against Hitler, they would exaggerate the support they're getting um, just in order to get more support. Mario, I think I got a video of Wagner. I'm going to send it to you, to the team. Okay, what's in the video? Of Wagner going in, in, in Russia. I'm trying to... Just give me a second, but it looks like I... I, uh, I, just, got, I, just, got, I just got it also, Source. Yeah, I think... Yeah, in Rostov, yes? Yeah, yes, of uh, Wagner entering Rostov. And to answer... I'm Jackson, getting, I'm Jackson, getting videos. Uh, I'm getting you, videos of trucks blocking the road in Rostov. I've had two people send it so far. Same video, same road being blocked and being turned around. So roads are being blocked Those are Rostov. Russian military more than... That, that's yeah. National Guard. This is yes, yes. This is completely yeah, this different. is... This is yeah. Guard, yeah. Yeah, I, I never said this is the Wagner. This is roads being blocked. Uh, nothing to do with Wagner entering the city. This yeah, they're not being blocked by Wagner. So no, no, not, no not nothing to do with that. Wagner. No, no. Well, I, I don't think it is. Can I just ask, is it, is it de de demonstrated with, like, facts that this is established to have been a coup attempt? Like, I have seen him, I, I listened to his whole statement for Goshen's earlier today, and he made a point not to directly implicate Putin. Um, the ire is being directed more at the defense ministry, Shoigu, et cetera. So if there's some kind of move yes. being made against that element of the Russian government, can it be said to be a coup? Or is he, like, threatening to topple the governance structure of the Russian Federation or is it some other objective? That is he literally thing. said it's not a coup. This is a march for justice, whatever that means, but we've seen no march yet. And we've just have, we, we've, got, we've got videos now of the quote-unquote march into the city of Rostov by Wagner's group. So they're in the city of Rostov, which is the headquarters to the southern uh, to the military no, campaign. I don't know if it's the city, it's Mario. It could be not the, the city. Sorry, I keep saying city. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It is that. the state. We don't even know if it's. Uh, uh, Progosian didn't say he's in the city either. It's so the state. Confirmed to be Wagner, or could just this, this be uh, you know Russian military, like regular military? It's being. Uh, that's a good point, Ian. It is being claimed as Wagner, but again, Ian. This, this who's claiming? Who's claim? Who's claiming also? Who's who's the source also? Uh, let me see if I can get the actual source who 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 the the where it was posted. Give me a second. It, it just, just seems um, like this whole thing is a lot of claims, very, very outlandish claims where we think, oh my goodness, this is the end. And then like 10 minutes later, it's like, oh, there's actually no evidence. Oh, Jackson, you got to stop doing it. Jackson, 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 hold on, hold on. Jackson, Jackson, Jackson. Jackson what, it, like, I don't understand. When this is happening live, we say if we know what's confirmed, what's not confirmed. But if this is an ongoing coup or a military campaign we just cannot know exactly what has happened we cannot have full clarity right now if i had a call a phone call to the ministry of defense and to Prigozhin and to putin i'd definitely get you confirmations so we're trying our best i like that you're mentioning that this is not confirmed this no, is no, important no, yes, no, no, you're right as well but also on top of that as well there's certain incidences where you, you, there's valid questions to ask so like for example we have been getting reports now for hours and there was previously a valid question to ask that why we're not getting videos now also also saying that we're getting videos so now that's going to add more substance to it as We're going to add confirmation. As opposed, yeah, as opposed to the argument that is three. Yeah, but I want to give. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, and I want to give. True, true. Argument, but I, I, I want to give. Let me give credit. Let me, let me, but give credit to the point that Jackson's is making is that all these are claims. This could have could end any minute. Um, now the claim of this not being a coup is obviously getting more difficult to make. But the question earlier was like, hey, this must be not a coup or Prigozhin's over exaggerating. Um, and then a few hours later, we're talking about Prigozhin um, uh, entering. Um, uh, the the state of Rostov. So this is escalating pretty quickly, and and um, yes, we don't have. We'll tell you what is verified, what is not verified. Definitely good to question everything. So so I mean this with all respect, uh, Jason. Mario, Mario, Mario. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, quick, oh, sorry, one second. Just a quick update. Sure. Um, th thank you, Julia. So the three two twenty two bombers have launched X twenty two missiles from over the Black Sea, and as we speak at the moment, the X twenty two s are flying towards Dnipro. Which is really odd that they're still firing at Ukraine oh, yeah. at, at, at such I, a time. I'm getting uh, more updates on that regard as well. A repeated 
uh, explosions in Kharkov and Dnipro, uh, Petrovsk uh, regions, as well as uh, Kurovograd and Cherkasy. So, like, this is a massive air campaign. I've not seen this in weeks. This is very odd. Air this air is air very no, odd. I, mean, I wouldn't say it's massive. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go. But that. The, the fact, yeah. yeah but also, well. yeah, yeah. But but the, even but also, what would you make? And, and Kim, I see your hand up. But also, just quick question: What would you make of um, missiles heading towards Ukraine at a time where there's seemingly there's a coup in Russia? So again, I, so let, let's let's just let's just step back over. Like the idea is okay. I mean, this the coup came from some of the the, the comments, right? The, the the right now, what it looks like is Wagner's priority and its focus, and what they're saying is Rostov, Rostov Adon, which is the headquarters of Russia's military for operations in Ukraine. Prigozhin has been very adamant of his hatred of the Russian Minister of Defense Shoigu and the Russian, the chairman of their basically general staff. Gerasimov, which their headquarters for in Ukraine is in Rostov on Don. This could be basically as to kind of like a, a tit for a fight between elements of the Russian, like what Prigozhin is trying to frame this is I'm fighting the Russian Ministry of Defense as such. My priority is Rostov on Don. This could be a coup. This could be an internal conflict between segments of the Russian state. Wagner and the Russian military. I get, but this all broke. And I think, though, just because it's happening, yeah, r- missiles are flying. There's still, a com- there's still a war going on, of course. But that just because there's a war, to then to say, well, because there's a war and there's explosions in Kharkiv and, 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 and Kiev, et cetera, et cetera, means all this is kind of BS. I think that's, that's a stretch when we have all this evidence and all these videos coming out from the region saying something is definitely happening there and, it's, and, and we just can't ignore it. But if it is we, this we internal think- factional dispute among elements of the Russian state, then it would be a misnomer to reflexively characterize it as a coup, right? I mean, yes. Well, we really don't know, but it could lead to We don't that know that coup is the correct it, descriptor. Well, it, again, this, uh, but people, I think we're trying to find a definitive answer to frame this when this, what, how, how long have we been, like three hours? This literally started happening. So, and, I, and by the way, for three hours we've been here, we've been getting a lot of information, a lot more than what we generally get. So also, just quick question, quick question. Days. I'm going to read something uh, out before going. Uh, um, uh, explosions have been reported in the Solomansky district of Kiev. So Kiev itself is being hit right now uh, by missiles. Okay, so also, can you just check the latest uh, message in the breaking news group and mention the source? I'll read out what it says, and you read the source so you, could, uh, you probably know it. Uh, The situation in the center of Moscow is calm. There is no military or other armored vehicles on the squares and streets. RIA Novosti correspondent reports. Okay, so that's from the RIA uh, news outlet. Who walked through the streets of the night capital. On the route from the Russian State Library on Okotny, Riyadh, near the building of the State Duma, on Boloshaya Dmitrovka, near the building of the Federation Council, on Lubyanska Square, on Ilyinska Street, and finally near Red Square, people are walking calmly. There are not many of them, as usually happens at night on weekends and day, uh, weekend days. There are no armored vehicles at the Federation Council and the State Duma either, as well as any, as well as on other central streets and squares. There are no additional police squads to be seen. There are no signs of tightening security measures in Moscow, as some media outlets have previously claimed. Night cafes, cafes and restaurants are open. There are no restrictions for cars. Ground public transport operates as usual. So I just want to mention that update, and I wouldn't expect anything more in, in Moscow this early on. And this is not another military entering Russia. This is an internal coup, potentially. I do want to just mention one thing. Um, look, from what I've seen, or everything I've seen right now, I, I do think this is a coup. I highly doubt this will be successful. I think there's a lot of emotions behind it, or desperation rather than emotions. A lot of desperations from Prigozhin uh, behind this coup. Um, now, what we don't know is who else is helping him from the inside, if anyone. Um, and if there, he's the more support he's getting internally, um, the more likely he is to succeed. Um, and our thoughts are with obviously everyone in Russia, and hopefully this doesn't lead to to any so, any escalations so... in the war or any deaths. But Jackson, go ahead, and then we'll go to Kim. Mario, I've got a question for you. Why, and there may be a good reason for this, why do you keep referring to it as a coup when Wag, when Prigozhin himself literally came out after his initial remarks and said, this is not a coup. Putin, this is a, fair point, fair point, but Putin... No, no, wait, let me finish. Let me finish. He said, he said this is a, a march for justice directed at the evil leadership in the MOD. So why do you call it a coup? A special military campaign by Putin uh, was called a war from the beginning. You could have said, why are you calling this a war 
when Putin himself, the president, says this is a special military campaign? So my answer would be if Prigozhin, Prigozhin, is, is, um, uh, Prigozhin is actually conducting a coup, I don't think he will go out and call it a coup. That's my thoughts. Now, we can say attempted coup would probably be better wording. Um, but I, I think this is, is more semantics. I was very hesitant at the beginning to call it a coup, and we were all debating it a few hours ago. But I think at this stage, um, calling it a coup, in my opinion, is is valid. Mario, <laughs> just wanted to quickly... Uh, I'll go, Julia, Michael, let me, let me go. So, Julia, Michael, let me go to Kim, who's been waiting patient, and then we'll, we'll go back to you, Julia, and then Michael. Uh, Kim, sure. how are you? Very good. Thank you, Mario. Um, I'll just share my view about the situation here. So give me a minute and uh, let me uh, explain my views. I think this is a power struggle between Prigozhin and Shoigu. Uh, in the beginning of the special military operation, you will all remember that, uh, you know, Shoigu and his uh, generals made a lot of mistakes. And Prigozhin tried to capitalize on that by criticizing him and basically gunning for his job. Uh, when Prigozhin then had a, a success in Bakhmut with his Wagner group, uh, he was able to present himself as a you know better military leader compared to Shoigu. And in my view, what Shoigu then did, he provoked Prigozhin by limiting the ammunition supplies to Bakhmut, which resulted in the big Wagner losses and the strong reaction from Prigozhin. Many of you will remember the famous video where Prigozhin attacked Shoigu and the Russian military leadership. Then ammunition deliveries were restored. The victory in Bakhmut was achieved. Uh, but the video outburst uh, by Prigozhin was counterproductive for him, in my view, because the Kremlin and the senior political leadership in Moscow saw him as a loose cannon who cannot be trusted. Then Prigozhin made the biggest mistake. He doubled down, predicting a massive loss for the Russian military because it is not ready for the Ukrainian counteroffensive. He claimed that the Russian troops are not well equipped and poorly managed by Shoigu and his team. But with the Russian military successfully repelling the Ukrainian counteroffensive, Prigozhin has played himself into a corner, and he knew that his time was running out because Shoigu and his generals delivered a major victory to the Kremlin. In my view, the actions by Prigozhin are an act of desperation because he has lost the power struggle against Shoigu and may face some serious consequences. So that's my five cents. Thank you, Kim. And, and Julia and Michael, um, we will love to get your thoughts. Yeah, just don't forget that uh, earlier Prigozhin said that he um, just wants to uh, basically clean up what um, MOD does. But he didn't say ministry, anything about ministry, it. Ministry, That's what's interesting. Ministry of Defense, yeah. 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 yeah, but yeah this is, and this is a good point, Julia. Sorry, I'll let you finish. But this is a good point. He did not mention Putin. Like, put, linking Putin to all this will be more implying, because he does um, indirectly mention that the, the people responsible, people in charge, etc., without mentioning Putin's name. Um, not sure if he's doing this tactically, because Putin still has a lot of support, and he's, he's do, going step by step, first focusing on the Ministry of Defense, not about Putin, not about Putin, and then and then obviously targeting Putin. Um, or it could be, as many mentioned, internal, but I just don't understand why... Like I, I, Again, there's a president there. If there is battles between internal forces... The, 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 no one would do something that would go against the president's orders. Uh, and we know Putin's pretty ruthless on anyone that doesn't uh, follow his orders. Mario, no, he actually, he actually said. And, and the no, Minister of Defense. Sorry, sorry I just want to Putin. read the latest from Prigozhin. Sorry, sorry. Just quickly. Um, this was posted eight minutes ago. I'm just going to read the entire thing. Um, so uh, eight minutes ago. So the head of the general staff, this is straight Prigozhin's audio message. The head of the general staff is not coming down. The head of general staff, is, uh, by the way, is Gerasimov. So the head of the general staff is not coming down. Quote, a mistake of any Af African dictator is to, deal air is to do air strikes at civilian areas. Right now in the air are two planes, number 523 and 546, that are trying now to deal these strikes. Remember, lads, the motherland will not forgive you for strikes at your own territory. You should have the courage to strike the enemy territory when our infantry is moving. Thus, the speculations saying that we are interfering with someone's fighting on the front are speculations. We do not interfere with anybody. We interfere with criminals saving their asses who destroyed around 100,000 soldiers, Jerozimov and Shoigu. 
So I think this kind of goes to the point, the, the, the fight between Wagner and, and, and the MOD, Drazimov, and Shoigu. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, I think I interrupted and, you. But, but this, yeah, this that's is, okay. I, I mean, the, the, this is uh, and to... he said, um, uh, the, the, yeah, just, I just, let, let you just finish quickly. Um, so he actually said earlier that um, the president's administration in every other aspect, they're going to proceed as usual. So he has no intention to actually remove Putin from power and just install himself. He said that's his beef is specifically with Shoigu and Gerasimov. And I but think that's for a good, good reason. Yeah, but let's understand. So we're saying that uh, he, he was, Putin is going to allow uh, him to go in there and the, take away his MO Ministry of Defense without uh, Putin saying okay. Yeah, so you don't you like, don't do that. If, a, exactly. You don't you don't if, if this is crazy. Yeah, you don't go to a department and a company and start trying to take out the executive from that company. You go to the CEO. There's there's a way of doing things. So it just doesn't make sense. While I understand, I just feel it is more likely to be tactical in not mentioning Putin because it just does not make sense to go towards pe people that listen to Putin. They follow Putin's orders to go against them militarily. It, it also wouldn't make sense based on what Prigozhin said in his statement today. He wasn't, make, he wasn't making a limited tactical critique of the workings of the defense ministry. He was saying that the entire pretext for the war itself was fraudulent and that the war was orchestrated by mentally ill scumbags i'm not trying to be histrionic this is what but he then said. but then you convince um, putin no, but then you, you that convince that was, that was but michael story, michael michael you convince putin to remove them from the office that's that's how you fight in, an internal battle against someone else in power mario the reason the, the reason why he's not mentioning putin by name is because putin's very popular in russia because that's, that's what i've mentioned the people this is what i mentioned he's trying to confuse the people by saying that there's people he's trying to say that there's people inside putin's regime that are scumbags and so I then he gets so he gets but, support so he gets support uh, unless putin comes correct. out publicly and 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 calls for the support of gerasimov gerasimov and, and sergey shoigu if putin goes out there publicly and mentions support for them but then but then you have um, uh, uh, Pr 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 Prigozhin, um openly saying no one should support those two, and I will go against anyone that supports those two people. The defense Correct. minister and the Putin chief, and, and we're not talking about him. random people. We're talking about the defense minister and the chief of the ge of the general staff of the of the Russian armed forces. So th these are people that report directly to Putin. Piotr. Um, Mario, sorry, just one quick update. Channel One in Russia reported um, the um, criminal case was opened um, and the Russian uh, Federal Security Services have opened a criminal case calling um, uh, for armed insurrection um, against Prigozhin because of that. And um, they have initiated criminal proceedings against him legally and under Article 279, um, for the organization of an armed insurrection and it carries imprisonment of between 12 and 20 years and they've reported that is a criminal case now and they are asking for his arrest. And uh, where is, uh, also, where is Krasnodar in Russia? Uh, it's, it's near the, I'm almost, it's, it's near the border with, with Ukraine. Let me, let me get you the exact. Okay, we're right. seeing, I we're seeing, I think it's in the south. I think, doesn't it, it's, I don't know if it shares a border with, with Georgia from memory, but I could be wrong. And we're just seeing uh, armed military vehicles, a, a convoy of, of military uh, trucks carrying soldiers. Um, yeah, the, the, it's, the, it's not there. just Moscow and Rostov, there's, 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 it's generally, I think the furthest east we've seen is Moscow. I know you shared that RAI. I mean, we, we have all the videos of the, again, <laughs> people need to understand Moscow's a, fairly large city and the concentration of russian military forces and the national guard is basically the center of the kind of the political power and these might be roving so they might not be there permanently but we do have video of that rostov krasnodar and, and and again um uh th those are the three main areas we're seeing russian military activity and it looks like from wagner's point of view what they're trying to focus on again is rostov Aldan. That looks like is the priority, and that's what Prigozhin has been saying. And we know that that, that, that that Prigozhin's military cannot do much. The only way that this could logically end up succeeding is if we see other other factions well, of the well, of the Russian military well, um, support true. these. Well, the only the only way it succeeds is if he's got the, somehow he's got the air force on his side. Because if it's not, he'll but, get an but, can I, I can I, I jump not, in? The here? National yeah. Guard doesn't have to be the Air Force. Could be the National Guard. Could be. But, could but be. The, go ahead, Mario. The problem is the, the the vast majority of the Russian military is in Ukraine. They're fighting a war. Can I um? Can I go? Uh, if possible. Yeah, go ahead, um, Piotr, and then Patrick. You go. Thanks. So so uh, to keep in mind uh, what's happening in Russia, you have to think about Russia's geography. It's 
demography and, and a lot of other sciencey stuff. So I won't go into that. But basically, 70 percent of Russia's population is west of the Ural Mountains. Um, this area of Russia that you're talking about, Rostov and this broader areas, you know, it's, it's very resource rich. It's been, you know, fought over in the Nazis in Operation Barbarossa. It's where Hitler likely got his you know, campaign wrong. So the Russians have always considered this bit to be highly important to their defense. Um, any potential invasion that would have come from, say, the Ottomans or the Crimean War is in this area as well. So uh, it's going to be heavily fortified. Uh, Moscow is a city, a super mega city of about 15 million people. Um, you know, the fact that the drones got and struck the Kremlin in May was, you know, massively shocking, but also an embarrassment for the Kremlin. So um, the, 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 the Wagner forces may be better trained, um, although a lot of them, I think we should keep in mind, are convicts. Um, they are, you know, going up a highly, highly likely some of the best trained forces that Russia has. You know, we've seen a lot of conscripts going into Ukraine, but I find it highly unlikely that Russia is going to be not, you know, keeping some of its best forces in case there was a cross-border uh, conflict. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I would just say uh, keep that in mind when you're talking about it. Uh, and also, uh, I had a couple of people asking me about the situation with Progozhin and Putin. So I just want to answer that very quick. And Prigozhin, just uh, that... Prigozhin, the, the the chief of Wagner, the head of Wagner. Go ahead. Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, head of Wagner. So basically, just um, you know, in in longer term game theory, right? So I, I know I'm going to get some shtick for saying this, but out of the two people, um, I think we can all agree, largely speaking, that we're more in favour of Putin retaining power than Prigozhin, in, because if we get the context where Progrozhin is in power, he's not going to be in full power. So what you're going to have is a bunch of internal factions in Russia fighting over power. And then what does that lead? That leads to 1990s, you know, US uh, Hollywood blockbuster films where you've got loads of random rebels fighting over potential nuclear arms. Um, and, and then that's and that's not even considering the international security front. I'm terrified about what this means for potential uh, you know, basically what I'm saying is the U.S. has been briefed on this. Right. Uh, and the U.S. at the end of the day, Biden may hate Putin as much as I do. But you still want. A no one. No so. one wants. Uh, no one wants instability, whether you love Putin, you hate Putin. I said this to, to, to my partner. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No one wants instability in Russia is, is yeah, never, exactly. never a good thing uh, for the rest of the world and likely for Russia. Go ahead. Also. Khaleesi, Khaleesi, just to confirm, did, did you mentioned already that the prosecutor general of Russia issued an arrest warrant for Prigozhin, right? You already stated yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Channel One in Russia reported it all sorts, and um, somebody uh, transcribed the channel. So I was yeah, yeah. So you. that to Jackson's point, there has been an, a, 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 an arrest warrant officially for Prigozhin from the Russian government. So what does? Uh... Can we get a link from that? Can we get a link for that? Because I saw their uh, the prosecutor general's initial report, and it did not include street an street webcam. So Sorry, if you can send him the link, Khaleesi, that would be. Great. Great. Um, so there's footage of the one of the roads blocked in Rostov. We're also, see street webcams in Rostov are disabled. Um, that just came in as well from War Monitor. So I'm just getting more updates. Patrick, go ahead. Hey, thank you, Mario. I appreciate. Hey, let me the, uh, sorry, just Patrick. <laughs> worst time, but I, what I will do, Patrick, and then I want you to do the same thing afterwards. Is I'm just getting some people asking like, what what is going on? They just came in. They, just, they haven't been following the news. So what we're seeing, and I'll I'll actually read it out from uh, the team did a good tweet summarizing everything. So I'll read it out from there, but I'll be quick. So we are seeing um, uh, what looks like an attempted coup in Russia uh, by Yevgeny. Prigozhin, who's the head of the mercenary group Wagner. I think a lot of you would know him. Uh, we saw that um, he made the claim that there was a, an attack in, on his base by the Russian military um, in Bakhmut. Uh, and then we saw the uh, first person to call this a coup was Igor Gherkin, who's a former member of the Russian Federal Security Service. Um, and then um, Wagner in, in their narrative confirmed that this is a, an attempted coup. Now, some people are saying it's against Putin. Others are saying it's against the Ministry of Defense. Uh, for me, I'd just put it all into one. Um, so I'll read out the updates we know so far. Um, so there's reports that the FS, FSB has allowed Wagner to enter Rostov. We do have videos of Wagner in Rostov, but we could not 100% verify this is Wagner. Um, so it's just coming in. Prigozhin claimed that the chief of staff, chief of the general staff, uh, Gerasim, Gerasimov, gave the command to open fire from an aircraft on Wagner columns mixed with civilians and they refused to do so. He recently just said again that there's um, a, a, 
um, we've got um, aircraft that could be striking and he's, he's, uh, he's asking them not to not to attack the motherland. Roadblocks have been established uh, around Moscow, around the Moscow Moscow Rostov Highway. We're seeing military movements in various cities across Russia, and we've had footage about all this. Wagner did accuse uh, the Russian military personnel who don't assist them in their cleansing. He accused them of collaborating with the Ukrainians and stated they will be dealt with accordingly. We have Russian um, uh, multiple Russian military generals that have made videos urging Wagner not to proceed with this attack. And uh, we, we do have the OMON and the SOBR units of the Russian Guard. They are both on high alert. And security in Moscow has been significantly intensified. Life in Moscow remains normal, just less people on the streets. Allegedly, there's a clash that's occurred between Wagner and units of the Rosgvardia on the Rostov Moscow Highway. We could not confirm that. It's estimated that a lot of people in Russia, up to 75%, uh, currently do not have access to the internet. That's, uh, that was in, um, intentionally blocked, apparently, according to Russian media. Others are saying that's not the case. We do have a lot of armed vehicles on the streets in Rostov, in the state, not in the city. And as we know, Rostov is home to the um, uh, to the headquarters of the Russian military, the the southern Russian military, and the Russian um, uh, campaign in the Ukrainian war. The headquarters are all there. The Ministry of Defense has repeatedly asked Wagner to stand down. I think there's an arrest warrant, Khaleesi mentioned, against uh, Prigozhinov. Um, we do have as well, sorry, uh, um, uh, Prigozhin. Um, we do also have uh, clashes occurred between, I've mentioned this, uh, and lastly we have, according to Russia's defense ministry, Ukraine has taken advantage of the situation, but we are also seeing a lot of missiles being launched against Ukraine during this attempted coup. Um, and what else do we have? I think this is a fair update. Um, we did say, uh, earliest people were saying that Putin were no, was nowhere to be found. We had reports saying that. And then we, we this got updated that Putin, uh, the press secretary did say that Putin's receiving reports 24-7 about the measures being taken related to the attempt of an armed rebellion. So Jackson, you told me why am I calling this a coup? Well, the press secretary called this an attempt of an armed rebellion. Um, so this is the update for everyone that just joined. Patrick, the mic is uh, back to you. I appreciate yeah, it. Patrick, yeah, go ahead. Go, also, just quick, another problem. Go ahead, go ahead. Quick, quick information is the Mark Warner and Senator, so Senator Mark Warner and Marco Rubio from the Senate Intelligence Committee and the part of the Gang of Eight. This is the statement they just released. We are closely monitoring what appears to be a significant internal conflict among Russian forces. We are in touch with the intelligence community and administration as the situation follows. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Patrick. please send that in, the, in the news group. I have, I have, a, I have, Mario, I have a brief update regarding the uh, planes that he referred to. He claimed that, what, three uh, TU-22M3s were uh, going to attack Russian forces on Russian soil. That Russian forces? I think, he means, I think he means a Wagner forces, not Russian forces, no? Yeah, Wagner forces, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's completely false because they were, uh, and this is something you can track on a satellite. Uh, they were flying over the Black Sea and they launched X. 22 missiles towards Nikolaev, and that's where they hit. They hit Nikolaev. So they and I've hit got Ukraine. some breaking news too. Break more breaking news to debunk the uh, the coup claims. So the footage claiming that there were Wagner vehicles uh, moving south on the M4 towards Rostov, uh, and they said that you know there's Google traffic data to confirm this. OSINT Defender, who's a pro-Ukraine account, really good source on everything Ukraine related. They said that the footage from the Rostov region appears. Uh, to show the almost exact same National Guard trucks from the Russian Federation. So uh, they say they're skeptical that they are Wagner forces in those videos. Uh, so this doesn't mean, yeah, so this no, might... This, update, um, yeah, hmm, just quickly, um, just the access... Yeah, they are called, the, the press secretary did call this a military rebellion. But I think your statement is whether Wagner did enter, enter Rostov and uh, Austin awesome Defenders' uh, claim is that that video, I'm going to check which video... Uh, is not in Rostov, so I appreciate Mario, Mario, Yeah, go ahead. I, I, also, go ahead. I, I need to confirm this. I, 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 I need to confirm something, but I, I think we might have also footage of firefights. But hold on, let me look into it. <laughs> there is footage that uh, the access to Red Square has been blocked, and uh, they basically barred it. Um, and uh, there's more more phase B around it, but uh, it's completely empty. So I, I just seen the video. Okay, uh, Patrick, we've all jumped in just with various updates and me giving a general update. So I appreciate you being patient, Patrick. Um, also, so when you verify this, please do share. Patrick, go ahead. Hey, Mario. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, look, um, I hope everyone's having a good evening. Um, I, I would be personally very cautious about jumping to any uh, conclusions early about what it is, especially considering consider the source of all the claims and, and all the sources of those claims, especially, especially anything coming from the United States uh, side. 
uh, my personal experiences with all of these things, uh, unite any U.S. media or any U.S. politicians have zero credibility uh, in any hyperbolic or uh, hyperventilating uh, claims or insinuations that they're having in a situation like this. Now, I don't know how many people, you can show a show of hands, how many of you have been to Russia, uh, have visited Russia, understand it as a country. My, my impressions, uh, my brief uh, visits to the country is you can't just march in and do a coup in a country like Russia. Aside from the fact it's a UN Security Council, it's a serious country, you can't do that without widespread, wide, widespread sorry, support within Russia of the entire, I'll go down the list, you need the civil service, you need the military, you need the Duma, uh, you need the media, uh, you need the National Security Council, all, you, know, you need thousands of people withstanding. OK, and high ranking people. And even then, even then, you would still need the people, the population behind such an effort. And you're talking about a president right now with 75 uh, percent uh, roughly approval rating or some somewhere in that sort of you know vicinity. So I think it would be. Uh, it, it would it's a, I think it's a silly thing to jump to a conclusion to and I realize that there are things circulating there are serious statements certainly by the Kremlin spokesperson but they would they would treat it seriously because it is serious but not in the sense that you, this isn't a banana republic when you can just topple the government and I think this is a projection that a lot of people in the West like to make on Russia that it's a bumbling state with a bumbling military this is basically the the, the shape of the propaganda that's been plied uh, over the last 18 months. Prigozhin probably will be brought to heel over this, but, you know, and, and the state will take it seriously, but you're talking about somebody who has serious political aspirations. Um, you know, I do not see uh, the Russians turning on each other, in, especially with so many people that are invested uh, in the current conflict, okay? This isn't just a fly-by-night operation but that's how it's presented in the western media so people within the western melu will will read anything Prigozhin, like that so, so Prigozhin just mentioned the military hawk mili military helicopter just opened fire on wagner's convoy and was shot down by wagner this was according to Prigozhin. mario check the video i sent okay okay like what notwithstanding i'm um, having seen a lot of stories over the years I always wait and then look, look try to look, look at what really sticks after 24 hours because there's a lot of disinformation. There's three different psyops at play here. One is the Prigozhin psyop. The second is possibly the Russian psyop. If you noticed, Russia has launched massive airstrikes and missile attacks at the exact same time this has happened. And if you remember with Bakhmut, Prigozhin did a whole demonstrative video rant. And at the same time, this uh, some would argue that this sort of gave the Ukrainians the impression that it was uh, a good time to sort of charge forward in Bakhmut. And it wasn't a good time to charge forward. And the, the results were disastrous for Ukraine. The other PSYOP will be the one coming from the United States and NATO, which will be trying to characterize this as some kind of uh, destabilized, so, so, major destabilizing event. Can I, can I yeah, in, in a sec, sorry, everyone, just quickly, um, uh, the video of uh, all sorts that he shared, and we, also so you can check the sources, because it's a pretty serious video, uh, but according to the video, and, and also you can mention the sources afterwards, this, it shows sounds of shooting from Rasved, from the Aksai district in Rostov, in the Rostov region. Um, also, so what does, can you explain more what the video actually shows? I mean, that, 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 it, it, it's heavy firing. Uh, uh, I, I got to check specifically what's this telegram channel. I believe it's, it, it appears to be a local Russian telegram channel specifically. Uh, I'll get more information on there, but that's the first video that we're seeing of shooting in near Rostov. And again, for everybody to say, and I, and I don't disagree with people here. I don't disagree with you of like trying to get, and there's going to be a lot of confusion. There's going to be psyops, there's gonna be, and I get it. I understand. But we live in Twitter where I think the beauty of Twitter is we're trying to give as much information with caveats attached to provide as best of an understanding for the, for the listeners. And that's just how Twitter works. But we are getting footage of fighting near Rostov right now between Wagner. And it's interesting that Prigozhin just said he shot down a Russian military helicopter. Right. And so clearly Prigozhin. According to the video, is, is this not... video about also um, we're going to add this video to the yeah, thread. But according to everything yeah. is. Prigozhin's claim. Yes, we did say right. claim. We did say. Oh, Ian, 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 we did say claim two times. And, and Prigozhin will 
almost certainly makes some shit up, even if uh, Sava is true. He makes a lot of shit up. Ian, like, Ian please, can I finish? Ian, I, I can, can I finish, um, uh, please? Yes. Um, also, just quickly, this video does show shooting into the air. What is that shooting? Is that anti-air shooting? Or I, no, I, no, there's, there's, I'm, I'm going to look into it. We have, I have nothing else right now. Okay, okay. Let me look into that telegram chart specifically, and I'll let you know. Okay, so now I'm just going to jump in a two-minute... The video I, go ahead. Saw, go ahead. I saw shared from a Russian telegram initially claimed that it was just shooting taking place in the Rostov region. And then I've seen that same video now shared claiming that that is the shooting down of a uh, Russian helicopter by Wagner. So uh, it's mixed claims. M Mario, can I just finish uh, my, I'll, I'll quickly ahead. wrap it up. Is yeah, that okay? Yeah, go, okay, go for it. okay. Look, uh, to, uh, to call this a coup or an attempted coup, I think my personal feeling is it's it's ridiculous a hyperbolic stretch okay what you could have possibly is some infighting but you know for the west the bar uh, for coups press secretary and, patrick press, press secretary called it an armed rebellion that's the russian press okay. secretary as i said before mario the press secretary will have to make a strong statement about it because of the public relations aspect of that coming from central government that said um, you can't, Prigozhin mounting a coup or a regime change in Russia is a ridiculous idea. And there's there's no way that it could it could really happen in reality. But what I will say is that, you know, we, we have to say that uh, if, if Prigozhin uh, is somehow disgruntled, okay, and or is somehow making a, a dramatic uh, performance, okay, this could very well amount, amount to no, much to do about nothing in 24 hours. So I'm just saying, having seen some of these things play out in history, uh, in recent history, over the last few decades, I always wait, especially the Turkish coup is a good one in 2015, always wait 24 hours and then you can really see what's actually happened and what, what happened and what didn't happen. I, I, I will have, not call this a coup. Is. There's no way there could be a coup d'etat in Russia. So I, have, I have some updates. Zero, zero right possibility. All right, I have some updates. Yeah, I have some upgrades from Ukraine. Uh, up, upgrades, uh, uh, updates from Ukraine. Uh, there have been explosions in Krivoy Rog, explosions in Kiev, and several cruise missiles are now headed towards the western regions of Ukraine, according to various uh, monitoring channels uh, on Telegram. Uh, there's uh, an explosion in Kiev that's been caught on surveillance camera. There's also footage on the ground of uh, uh, buildings that have been hit in Kiev. There are new explosions being reported in Dnipro uh, Petrovsk. Uh, this is different than the earlier report. This is a new explosion. Uh, there have also been repeated explosions in uh, Vinitsa and in uh, Kelmenitsky. So this is this is a and also another one just came in just now. An explosion in Kirovograd. So this is a massive air campaign that's currently ongoing. And another one, another ex uh, update just came in. Uh, more explosions in the Dnipro uh, Petrovsk and uh, Nikolaev. So yeah, that's a. Uh, that's what's happening in Ukraine right now. It's being bombarded right now by a massive air campaign, missiles and so, uh, the yeah. like. So there are buildings. Go ahead. Sorry, Go ahead. Just very quickly. Go ahead. Residential Go ahead. buildings in Kiev are on fire, and the governor of Russian southern Rostov region has told citizens to remain calm and stay indoors. And that's by War Monitor. Thank you. So, so Ian, based on what you said and Khaleesi said, what's the argument? Is the argument that this is a proof or evidence that this is a false flag or what's the, what's the, why is that relevant? Why are those... Uh, why uh, well, I don't know why exactly, but I, I personally think it's a false flag. I think this is a way to lull the Ukrainians into complacency, but that's just my read on it. Uh, I'm not sure what's really going on in Russia, but I mean, I don't think any of us know. Um, yeah, and I think it's, it's more of a way to show that it's not a false flag and it shows uh, Russia to take the uh, light off of what's going on in Russia and to get the military on the same why, page. Someone why someone tell me if this in. is if this is not a false flag, why would be why would Russia be uh, um, attacking Ukraine? My two is, guesses, is, is, my two guesses. Is, no I, I would agree with I, that I statement. I would agree with that statement. But let me let yeah, me just I, let I, me I ask my question. Let me let me ask my question quickly. Um, and, and maybe I'll ask this question to to Ian. Um, Ian, if this is not a false flag, okay? Uh, if this is not a false flag, why would Russia be attacking Ukraine? My two, um, if I want to speculate, my two guesses would be one, to take attention away from what's happening in, you know, the the the, the, the internal conflict happening in Russia right now, or the attempted coup. Um, that's guess number one. Guess number two, which is way far fetched. I know some people are saying it, um, that Ukraine has something to do with this coup, which I find highly, highly, highly unlikely. Um, but would like to get your thoughts, Ian. Again, if this is not um, Ian, I think just dropped. If there's a glitch for anyone, just drops this. Let us know. He's requesting again. Um, Pjok, maybe you can answer that question. 
Yeah, so um, very simply. Just, just sorry, sorry. I, the, the guys, there's more and more footage coming out of Rostov of reports of, of shootings. Uh, I'm going to share. I've Mario seen the same. You. I've seen uh, like also. Crash. I've seen the same video. I've seen so uh, also. I've seen the same. Uh, also, I've seen the same video. Yeah, it's a new I've one. Seen... It's a new one. It's a new one. Okay, I was going to say I've seen the same video shared by different sources now, and and different people are, are saying this is verified. Um, we haven't been able to verify it because verifying things right now is almost impossible. Um, I'll, I'll, I've included the first video in the tweet. So check the tweet above. It has a tweet under it. It's going to become a thread. With the I'll first video, I'll add the second tweet right under it. Um, and if you can mention the sources as well also, so that would be great and what it is. Um, so I can include it. Um, Piotr, uh, you were answering the question that if this is not a coup, why would Russian forces be um, targeting Ukraine? Is it a distraction? Um, or is there some sort of involvement from Ukraine, which, I, again, I highly doubt? Yeah, so I'm in Poland, and I'll be going into Ukraine in the next few days. Um, there is no uh, sort of noise here at the moment about concerns of Russian airstrikes, well, potentially into Ukraine. Um, I think it would be absurd to suggest that this was a false flag operation. Uh, the Russians like to use false flags like the West does. But uh, to do it on your own home, on your own soil, around your capital, is pushing it too far. If the Russians really are doing that, then they are absolutely on the grounds of desperation. So I think it's absolutely unfounded. Um, so there's the video. So the video that also sent me uh, is it goes. Uh, Progozhin did say they've shut down a Russian helicopter shooting their forces. The video does show it's an unverified video of a helicopter supposedly firing at Wagner troops in Rostov. Um, so go ahead. Uh, uh, Piotr. Well, I mean, again, I think that there's a lot of fog of war here. Um, I agree with Patrick occasionally, and I'm going to agree with him that I think it's too early to tell. Can yeah, um, I'll ask you, yeah, I'll ask you, I'll ask everyone, it's a good reminder, but just for everyone, we, I'll tell you what we all know. A lot of things are unverified. We don't know a lot of things. There is a lot of fog. Everything will be clear in 24 yeah. hours. So these are facts we know, and they will remain no matter what, what who says what. Um, but yeah, continue, Piotr. Like, I'm watching that video, right? The one that claims, well, there's multiple claims of what this video is. That it claims that there's mass shooting in uh, in raw stuff. It's, uh, what's the date on this? Do we know? I mean, they're claiming it's now, right? But Correct. Um, this is, uh, it, it's claiming now. Uh, do we know who the original source is? Like, who, who originally posted this? So I know I, I, at least the Telegram channel. I, I got. I'm trying to look into the Telegram channel. It, it was posted there, and then that same Telegram channel shared another. Of, so the the video of the shooting, and then the video of the helicopter. I think it's coming from the same. At least from one of the Telegram channels that shared it. It's probably being distributed more from than just that one. Uh, but the, but again, Ian. I mean, I yeah. think it's to your point. It, it, honestly, the only real way we're going to get more confirmation is probably we're going to either if there are more videos comes out, but also we're going to have to wait until tomorrow morning to see if we can get commercial imagery. I mean, that's the only definitive proof we're going to get that something is going on is probably commercial imagery. So hopefully tomorrow it's a clear day and we can get that. But I mean, again, Prigozhin is claiming he shot down a Russian helicopter. So I, I, now he could be lying out of his ass. I'm not denying that. But I think we have to take a word of a belief that for those is saying people that the, right now he's fighting the Russian military. That is what he's actively claiming on his Telegram channel. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the video of them supposedly shooting down a helicopter, you do see a rocket or at least a missile, right? Like a like a like a man pad being launched into the uh, into the sky. But you don't see if anything is being hit. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting. I mean, another thing about this is, um, Lev, let me go to you on this. Uh, Kalisha, have you got some breaking news? No, I just wanted to add on that the uh, governor of um, Rostov, Vasily Golubov, in his Telegram channel, has given an, a further statement about um, the current situation requiring maximum concentration of all forces to maintain order and that law enforcement agencies are doing everything necessary um, to help residents in the region. I mean, Lev, if this coup is real, isn't this bad for everyone? Because Putin was like more of a moderate. Everybody else is crazy. If somebody else was to take over, wouldn't that be much more problematic? No, I want to say anyone. Yeah, I want to say anyone else, but I'd say definitely Prigozhin's camp. Well, a number, a number of not every. Okay. So I'm there's two sides. Yeah, yeah. So it's two sides. Okay. But I'm saying Prigozhin. So your point still stands because the Prigozhin side and people that support Prigozhin are but more nationalist. Prigozhin, like for example, even the Western Dan in Navalny is another example. There's many examples on there who, when people who are not moderate, extremely right, would basically 
it, there's a, more of yeah, a chance uh, that this war would escalate significantly. Yeah. And, so, uh, Lev, isn't this a problem for everyone, even Ukraine, if there is an actual... Exactly. Good I question. agree with Suleiman here, yeah. Oh. I, Suleiman, you're 100% right. This would be a major problem. But I would say this is an attempted coup, and I don't think he's going to succeed. Uh, I'm going to agree with Patrick. Uh, if you've ever been to Russia, uh, for this coup to succeed, they would have uh, Pogosian, would, even though I think he has uh, lots of different uh, supporters in a lot of different areas. But a lot of these people play both sides of the game and are in the waiting, uh, standing by, watching to see what's going to happen, and I'll jump ship to wherever the power is going to see what succeeds. I think Lev, I, I wouldn't even call it a coup, buddy. I, I just don't think this is even a coup. It's just a lot of. Uh, and and well, we have I mean, we have a source that's saying the the attacks on Ukraine, which we've kind of we're talking about earlier. We've got an army intel officer, not Russian or Ukrainian army, but U.S. army intel officer, who just sent us a message saying the airstrikes, these airstrikes on Ukraine were all scheduled before the uprising. They take time. So in other words, these airstrikes were scheduled before the developments we're seeing now, um, and they just haven't been paused yet. Um, continue. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think level you're yeah. speaking. Petra, yeah, Petra, uh, I, I agree with you. It's, it's difficult to say it's a coup, but again, you, uh, you're going after all of Putin's uh, inner circle, so it's basically going after Putin. Uh, you understand how Russia works there, even though he's not naming him by source. There's no way he's expecting to go overturn the MOB or any other resources or FSB or any National Guard without actually, you know, discrediting Putin or actually hitting Putin below the belt. So he knows Putin would have to respond respond. Uh, I think it's still early. I think we still have to wait to see how Putin responds and when he comes out and what he says. And I'm, I could almost guarantee he's going to come out in support of his uh, inner circle against uh, Prigozhin. And like I said, uh, I don't think he su it will succeed, even though... We're seeing, you know, footage. We're seeing we're... footage of more heavy uh, equipment reportedly, so it's unverified again, reportedly being transported in Rostov. And we're just seeing tanks um, moving it seems on the like it's from early evening because it's uh, it's really light out in these uh, in these videos of the heavy equipment being moved. It seems like that happened like hours and hours ago. It's Thanks. I'll send you. I'll send you the video. I'll send you the video, Ian. They'll send you the video, Ian. So okay. go ahead, uh, in, in Jackson. Russia, in Russia right now, it's it's light for you know most of the day right now because of the nature of its uh, position on the Earth. But you know, Mario, I want to bring up one thing. I was thinking about uh, you were bringing up the point that the a uh, Kremlin spokesperson was saying that, you know, this is an attempted armed rebellion, therefore we can qualify it as a coup. But I think even from uh, Prigozhin himself, we can determine based on his statements that yeah, it might be an attempted armed rebellion if this stuff is all actually happening, which so far we've just seen unverified videos. It's a telegram, you know, attempted rebellion as far as I'm concerned right now. But wouldn't this just be an attempted rebellion against Gerasimov and Shoigu and not necessarily Putin, the guy who we had a meeting with three days ago? And that doesn't necessarily mean he's trying to coup Putin. Yeah, so there's, it's a good point. So we were discussing how, this earlier. So why? Would... So yeah, if if you if you wanna um, if you wanna remove someone from power and you're disagreeing with someone, in an if everything's functioning as normal in a normal government, you would go to the leader and say, hey, this person has to leave, or you do some political maneuvers. When you've got military equipment um, and, and calling for the ouster of someone that the, that's, that's reports directly to Putin and follows Putin's orders and fighting the Russian military, uh, then I think it's past the stage of having a, um, a clash with Sergei Shoigu or Gerasimov. Um, and now, but he would Jackson position it. Is, but he would position yeah. it as such. It would be if he was smart. He would position it as such because that would get more support, and then put him in a better position to challenge Putin. Now, again, I don't want but, this coup to succeed, and, and just to point you on my position because I think like or hate Putin, it's not a good. It's not good news in any way. But go ahead, Jackson. I mean, he so Prigozhin literally said this is not a coup. It's a, it's an attack. But would you? But would you? But Jackson, would he? Would you expect him to call it a coup if it is? Honestly. Yes, because he doesn't give a single, you know, f about anything. He would lose so much support. When, 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 from wait, let me the just say one thing. Let me just say one thing. Let me just say one thing. So you're saying it doesn't make sense that he do this, whatever. Well, he, the guy doesn't make a whole lot of sense as is. He was about to take Bakhmut, and then he was crying about how he didn't have ammo, despite the fact he had just secured a massive ammo storage. Unless he's trying to get, unless he's trying to collect more but, ammo but, for what but, he's planning. Okay, so well, Jackson, let, let me finish my point. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Jackson. Yeah, go ahead. I'll give you the mic right after. Go ahead, Jackson. So my point is that he was, you know, he was having this whole dilemma of the ammunition. Now, everyone, when this was going on, and and, and Prigozhin was making these videos, everyone was saying, 
dang, you know, maybe there is this issue with the ammunition, but Prigozhin should really be going through the proper channels of the military to get his ammunition if he needs it. And then everyone on the other side was reminding uh, those detractors saying, well, he's he's never been in the military. He doesn't respect military hierarchy. He's not an officer, commander, general, anything. He has no official ranking. So, of course, he's going to feel like he wants to buck the military command and just get what he wants when he needs it. This, if it's actually happening, seems like a very similar sort of approach against the military leadership, uh, just in an exaggerated form that he took back when Bakhmut was almost captured. So, and Mar- it, Sorry, go ahead. so, go ahead. so Jackson, the reason why he's not uh, saying it's a coup against Putin and he's saying it's against Shogo is because Sh- Shogun has uh, worse support and because of his the way he uh, dealt with the war in Ukraine, there's a lot of people in the armed services in Russia that don't support Shogun as much as they would support Putin. So he's hoping that by saying that he's going after Shog- Shogun, that he will get support from all of these people. If he turns around and says he's going after Putin, he will lose all that support. But in all reality, just think about it. What do you think that he could take over? If he goes and destroys Shogun, Putin is going to just take on uh, 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 Prigozhin and in, all reality, accept what I'll, in all reality what I'll say is that it was just three four days ago that Prigozhin had a meeting with Putin we still don't know what was said during but that they could have gotten into an but, argument but, 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 but they could have gotten into an but, argument but, at but what I'll say is what I'll say is that Prigozhin has had a months long feud with with Shoigu and Gadasimov called for their execution so the the idea that you know, but they could they could, they could play yeah. a role in this. I'm just saying that if it, there's no way Prigozhin is expecting Putin to be okay with this, if he was targeting his his his, his um, defense minister and his chief of the general staff of the right. of the Russian unless armed forces. That, unless you think Shogun was doing could this, it uh, yes. could it be the case that he's and again this possibility? He's not mentioned Putin at all that he's trying to do this to put pressure on Shoigu and Grasimov to the point where Putin basically removes them and then he gets... We're past, we're that past pressure. <laughs> that video, that first video was pressure, man. He's shooting the Russian military, man. Assuming that these videos are true. Assuming those videos are true. Those videos... I mean, you would have to... But guys, just to get for the record, we've we've seen, you know, Prigozhin said we shut down a helicopter and then we just see right after a video of a helicopter shut down. There's no verification. There's no... Yeah, Jackson, I've just said, yeah, there's no verification. But I'm just saying things are pointing... let's not say this is happening if we don't have verification. There's unverified reports of this... of uh, fighting true, within Russia. He's passed Rubicon, right? Okay, I mean, so if these, if we have, if we have confirmation, if we have confirmation that there's been a clash between the Russian military and uh, Wagner, then we'd all be able to call this a coup, and we're past this yes. not being. Okay. Well, we wouldn't call it a coup still, but an attempted coup. No. Yes, we would. We would. No, it. I would not call it a coup. You would not call it that. Okay. No, if if this is happening, I would. If, if that's all that has happened, I would not call it a coup. Still, Jackson, but listen, uh, either Jackson, way, is this right that you way, would call it a coup if he maybe called out Putin and said he's going for Putin? Putin. That is usually how coups work. Yeah, exactly. Usually. No, no, usually coups. No, usually coups. <laughs> usually coups happen when you target a person. But generally, coups don't yeah. always happen by saying, hey, this is a coup. It, it, I, don't, I don't remember. I don't, I don't see most coups saying, hey, this is a coup and we are targeting the president. That generally, things are... Uh, 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 go ahead, hold on. Lev, go ahead. Lev, Lev, go ahead. Yes, Lev, go since go since when are there rules about how you attempt a coup? I mean, a coup is attempted... And then you're, uh, what a coup is, is to be able to take out the power uh, person in power. And you, it, it's different ways, different times, and different measures. So since when is there... A, a, one way or another way of how you do a coup and you have to announce it, otherwise it's not a coup jackson i mean what you're saying is basically if your theory is correct as you're saying is that shogu and uh, the ministers uh, of defense was acting on his own behalf and putin was allowing him to go free willy and do whatever he wants and now he's having a war internal war with prigozhin and he's just standing on the sideline and watching uh, you know both uh, of his uh, armies collide with each other I, w- I, I mean, would call nonsense. that a re- I would call that a rebellion against the uh, the military leadership. Yes, and what I'll say is that as soon as this becomes a, like whatever qualifies it as a red line line for Putin, I mean he's just going to you know GPS uh, satellite signal Prigozhin's very movement to liquidate him on site. This is I mean you're talking about the Russian military going up against the Wagner private military company that is supplied by Russia 
for ammunition, artillery, so on and so forth, even men. So I, I, I get that so there's, there's a there's, political so just, Patrick, just power struggle. Quick, quick, but... quick update. Uh, the situation in the center of Rozdov on Don, which is the city, uh, that's the main city in Rozdov, correct me if I'm wrong, also, is also calm. That's according to RIA Novosti correspondent. Um, the overlap and is also CNN. Passion. Sorry. And so CNN we, just we, saying that like uh, this is an attempt to cool. There's, there's been like two hours, and we all we have for video verification are some random guns being shot into the air during a nighttime in presumably Russia, but no convoy video, no column video, no nothing other than... Jackson, we've had, we've had, had, we have convoy videos, we just haven't been able to Mario, verify them. With us. Mario, CNN, so, CNN, CNN, sorry, guys, CNN is just reported. The, the CNN, guys, can everyone just no, stop, oh, everyone, oh, please, oh, can oh, you oh, stop? Okay. No, no, guys, guys, can you just, guys, please stop. Lev, what's the report from CNN? Lev, you gotta unmute, Lev, please, I just muted everyone. You muted everybody. Lev, you gotta unmute... To tell us what CNN yeah, said. Okay, yeah, you mute it. You yeah, mute I know, it. I know. Okay, uh, yeah. Russian general has accused Wagner leader of attempted coup. Russian send armed vehicles into streets of Moscow. So even. What the, did, sorry, sorry. CNN what did. What did CNN, can you read out exactly what CNN said again? Sorry, Lev. Exactly. Can you read. Russian, genera Russian generals accuse Wagner leader of attempting a coup. Russian sends armed vehicles into streets of Moscow. Okay, yeah, well, Suravikin, Suravikin and the other generals never said that he's attempting a coup, so I don't know who yeah, they didn't CNN is citing here. All. They I don't just know told them to stand CNN out. Is citing. But I'll also say the convoy video, OSINT Defender posted a side-by-side -side of that video. No, we have, Russian we do, Federation. yeah, this is, yeah, we do have a few of them, but we haven't shared any because they're not from sources we they're, should check. Exactly, because just like all the other videos, they are unverified and they are being disputed. Yeah, yeah. I want to make a correction. What, of what, what do you said, think Mario. everything is going on, Mario? Like, I want to make. Really hold on, hold on, hold on, guys, guys. Just uh, sorry, uh, Ian. I want to go to Ian, and then we'll go to Mickey. Go ahead, Ian. Yeah, just a brief correction uh, about what you said, Mario. The uh, video of the convoy was not of Wagner. We do not have any video of Wagner convoys. It is only yeah. I never said one. Everything is unconfirmed. Yeah, I was gonna say everything. Everything is unconfirmed. Everything will be unconfirmed for a long time. I talk to him. I know a lot of accounts who disagree with the notion that Os Widow said the better set again. There's more videos coming out that are showing, but like everything is unconfirmed. But like, can we agree that something is happening at least? Like Wagner and the MOD. Like so there's, a, there's a, another other? video of helicopters patrolling the sky over Rostov uh, just posted now. Um, I do want to go to Mickey if you don't mind. Uh, also, Igor is on stage, back on stage. So we'll go with an update from him right after. Yeah, Mickey. Yeah, thanks. I mean, great conversation. Now we are, of course, we're, we're doing some guesswork. It's so early. But my question is, what is the capacity of the Russian military to wage war against both Ukraine, Wagner, PMC, and these free Russia battalions, and, and uh, ostensibly the, you know, the industry of NATO? What's their capacity? How does this, how does this threaten them if you were a military commander for the Russians? It depends how big the column is that we still haven't seen videos of that's allegedly heading into Russia and whatever other resources. Mario, check your WhatsApp. I've seen, whatever I've seen, other resor so. Whatever other resources Wagner might be able to maintain prior to being cut off, presumably by Russia, as soon as they could. Like, will Russia need to take... Uh, Mickey, you dropped out. Um, I do want to go to Igor, then Patrick. Igor, um, we've seen the latest developments since we last discussed all this on stage. We do see, we're seeing unreported videos of um, clashes in Rostov between Wagner and the Russian military, obviously unverified again. Um, and we've seen more, uh, uh, we've seen CNN call this an, a coup and uh, saying that the military is on the streets of, Ru of Moscow, uh, the capital of Russia. Your thoughts on what we've seen so far, Igor? Well, I think it's... It's not surprising because Prigozhin has been saying that he'll be doing this for weeks. Um, there's now actually, just now, a video uh, was shared uh, with alleged footage of uh, some Wagner vehicles going through a checkpoint being waved by. Yep, I've, um, seen, that. I've seen that video as what, well. What appears um, interesting that's being highlighted is the resistance in Rostov region that's been set up is Rosgvardia and the FSB, not the Russian army. So the Russian army doesn't appear to have been deployed to counter Prigozhin. And there are also talks, well, Prigozhin has claimed that junior officers in the army are refusing 
to to go against him uh based on the events over the past many months um i think it's pretty clear that prigozhin's popularity among the russian soldiers especially those that have fought in ukraine under shoigu's leadership his popularity ha did continue to rise he's probably more popular as a leader than shoigu or gerasimov Igor, I have a, a question for you again. I know you've touched on this earlier. Hey, of, of, uh, Mario, Mario, if, yes. I, if I may, the, the, so that video of the shooting, there, there's a couple of counts that what they do is they geoconfirm the footage from, from their analysis based on the pictures they did, Google Street Maps, uh, uh, Google imagery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They have geolocated this in the northeastern section of Rostov. That, that video of the, the shooting. The shooting that the, we've the, posted, the, okay. Okay, and have they Correct. they've geolocated? Did they manage to find out the timing as well? But it is in Rostov, so it's hard to find. If it's in Rostov, there's timing doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. whenever Rostov... that shooting happened, what the, the right now from these guys that do geo, geo confirming, they're saying it's in northeast Rostov. Again, we need more information, but we're starting to get more and more inclination that this actually occurred in Rostov. Uh, I've got a question for you, Igor. And we do have uh, Walid Faris who'll be joining us in a bit. He's uh, uh, a foreign policy analyst at Newsmax. Um, but the question do I have for you, Igor? Um, what we're seeing so far, what would that if this is a coup and this is successful, which I think most, if not all of us, think this is highly unlikely that this coup will succeed. Um, what does that mean for Ukraine, and does what does that mean for the rest of the world? So, if it is, if the coup is successful, I don't think Prigozhin will stop at Gerasimov and Shoigu. He will have no need for Putin. And from that. I don't know how capable a country is going to be at waging war on foreign soil after a coup, which will undoubtedly be bloody. There, th this is just the beginning. There are... Uh, uh, so, Vladimir Osechkin, who does have uh, reliable, historically, sources in the Russian security services, He's gotten confirmation now that Wagner had shut down a Russian military helicopter and at least one crew member is dead. So who, who confirmed this, Igor? Who confirmed this? Uh, Vladimir Osechkin. And what's Vladimir Osechkin's position? Well, he, is a, a, he fights for human rights. He's a, a Russian in exile in France. Would you have more videos of uh, showing convoy a convoy moving in Rostov? We don't know if this is a Wagner convoy or Russian military convoy. Um, that video just came out or as well. A civilian convoy, the one you this one, no, yeah, not the one I, I mean, sent I, you. I not the one I sent you. Question, but guys, I do ask in, in, a, in a sec, in a sec, Jackson. And just one thing I ask everyone: I think we, it's good to have disagreements. Generally, we're a lot more heated with debates, but I think now because a lot of things are unclear, we'll just try to keep it a, a, a more casual back and forth and discussion. Um, I'll, I'll ask oh, what, uh, one more question, to Igor, and then I want to go to, to Patrick, then you, Jackson, if you don't mind, just because Patrick's been waiting for a while. Um, but the question to you, I have Igor, is and Ian, I've sent you that new video. And the question I have for you uh, is what happens? So you talked about Ukraine and, and the conflict in yeah. Ukraine cannot continue if this is a bloody coup. Obviously, the coup does not necessarily have to be bloody. If successful, it's a very big if. Um, it depends on who's on um, a Wagner's side, Prigozhev's side, um, and, and how, you know, what type of resistance they will face. Um, so we don't know how bloody this coup will be, and hopefully not too bloody, obviously. Um, but if it is successful... Um, other than the war in Ukraine cannot continue in the short term, in the long term, do you think it will continue? We know that Prigozhev and Wagner um, don't have any intention of, of stopping the campaign in, in Ukraine. Prigozhev does have a lot of nationalist supporters as well. Could we see an escalation in that war? Or is there a possibility that a deal would be brokered uh, under the new administration? Again, we're speculating here that this could be even successful. Um, so here's my view. The way that Prigozhev could build, and this is maybe what he has done, consensus among those that hold power in the current reg regime is ending the war. Because this, this invasion was never popular <laughs> with people under Putin to begin with. 
right? We remember some of those videos from the from his National Security Council where people were shaking and suggesting, like, let's talk instead of invading. Um, this is... It's possible that Prigozhin has actually created a coalition within the regime who want to end the war because they understand that it's suicidal and it if it continues it, it is going to be suicidal for russia and this might be their way to attempt to salvage the country to where prigozhin if he's successful then is able to essentially withdraw from ukraine and make amends that way because that's where the real support would be that's against Putin. Let me, let me go to Patrick, Igor. Patrick, I want to I get your thoughts. Obviously, you have other things to say, but also get your thoughts. Do you think the war in Ukraine would likely, again, if, big if, this coup is successful? Mario, can I just give an update? Please, I'm so yes, sorry. yes, go ahead. Um, I'm looking at a video, and it looks like it could be a Wag Wagner convoy. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not the same one. Yeah, going into Rostov. Yeah, and, Mario, give um, it to me. It does look By like... looking at the um, skyline, it's uh, sunrise is at four twenty-five, so it looks like the geo um, location is correct. It's correct, and it looks like it could be a Wagner convoy. Yeah, that, that it has like tanks, so it's convoy. not national guard. It's heavily armed. It, it's the, the the Russian national guard doesn't operate that heavy equipment. But could it be that, just that the Russian? Uh, couldn't, it be the couldn't it be the Russian? But couldn't it be the Russian military though? Uh, true, uh, but I mean, look... most of the reports we're getting is the, the, uh, of Russian national guard. Anything is possible, but. I mean, yeah. why would the Russian army deploy like that to Rostov? And, to and the way to that they fight Wagner. Out, like they're using technicals, right? I don't think the Russian National Guard uses technicals. That seems to be more of like a DIY type situation. So it does appear to be likely that that is uh, Wagner. Um, we'll yes, go to. I believe any moment now, any moment now, we will get breaking news confirmation that Wagner with their one tank, one anti missile defense system, and five pickup trucks are taking over the Kremlin and preparing an execution for Putin. Um, okay, Patrick, um, I'm going to go back to you and get your thoughts on, on what Igor said and what, what that would mean if we do have a change of regime or change of government or change of leadership in Russia, what that would mean for the war in Ukraine and the, and, and the world. And, of course, any, anything else you want to add? Okay, thanks, Mario. Um, firstly, I, I don't think it's plausible that there'll be any regime change uh, in Russia. I agree. You know, it's c countries with a strong central government, you just can't walk in and do coups. It's, it's just not possible. Russia has a very strong central government, a very strong uh, state government agencies, uh, support, and so forth, not to mention public support for the current president. But just in general, when you're talking about coups, the, the only question you need to ask yourself, if if you're looking at somebody who's, you know, you're sizing up a potential candidate for somebody who's going to attempt a coup. In this case, if I was looking at Prigozhin, uh, I was saying, where is his political power derived from? Well, it's quite, it's quite easy to answer that question. His political power derives from the loyalty of Wagner forces under his command. And, that, and only that, and only that. It can't be widespread public support because he doesn't have anything near what Vladimir Putin and his government have, despite what some people might insinuate so forth. But so is the question is, would the Wagner, if that was the case, would the Wagner forces that he has, let's say 50,000 to 70,000 uh, uh, ostensibly under his command, would their loyalty for him personally, uh, Prigozhin, be stronger than their loyalty to the Russian state? And it really does come down to that at the end of the day. And I just don't see it. And also, you're talking about a Ru Russian mobilization. Now you're talking about 700,000, 700,000 Russian troops and reserves. So there's going to be no uh, civil war, even, even if they shot down uh, a helicopter here or did this. It, it will amount to much to do I, I about agree. nothing I, I at agree. the end of the day. I agree. It, I really think, is, and Patrick, like it the, doesn't uh, even put a blip on the radar screen, Mario, honestly. Well, let's hope so. Um, I, I do want to go to Austin, um, and mainly Austin, like for for this coup to be successful, what is really needed? And I think the answer is pretty obvious. There needs to be some um, support from the higher ups within Putin's administration. Otherwise, there's no way this coup would have much impact, and it wouldn't last too long. But considering the 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 um, the Wagner military entering Rostov and still not having been shut down, and and this continuing. Um, and only one helicopter, at least so far we know of, shooting at the convoy and getting shot down. 
just doesn't show to be much resistance. I would love to get your thoughts on that, Austin. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Mario, for having me on. Um, I think it's important to know. Any chance, one, Austin? Is, any any chance you can improve your mic? Um, give me give me ten seconds, real quick. Ah, cool. I'll give you ten seconds. In the meantime, let me. We've got here. Security measures have been strengthened in Russia's Lipets. Lipetsk Oblast. In addition, people should avoid traveling south towards Verona's Oblast, according to the governor. Um, and then we've got more people saying that this video footage, the convoy, does look like it is entering uh, Rostov and is entering from Ukraine uh, into Rostov, not from Moscow. Um, and they're stating that this is likely to be Wagner, but we still don't know if this is Wagner, a Wagner convoy or uh, Russian forces, but it's definitely not the National Guard. Austin, go ahead. All right. Hoping, hoping my mic's a little bit better now. Um, okay. So I, it's perfect. Go okay. Ahead. Fantastic. So I think it's important to note here, we're getting a fire hose of information out of, you know, more, mostly Russian linked telegrams, uh, sources, uh, as we've seen previously in this conflict, these sources do tend to panic. They tend to extrapolate on things or, um, uh, exaggerate, I should say. So I think we're going to have a lot clearer picture of the actual scale of this thing and, you know, anywhere from 24 to 48 hours from now. That being said, I think it's important that we also don't make assumptions in regards to just sort of saying like, oh, it's going to be a civil war. Wagner is this many people. The Russian military is this many people. What's been very clear is that Prigozhin himself has been quite popular amongst the Russian rank and file. And I think an indicator to look at here is when we're seeing deployments outside of Moscow itself, we're looking at Rosgardia and FSB forces, right? Those are internal security forces. What that indicates to me is that Russian leadership is concerned about potential, uh, about favoritism or favorability of Prigozhin within the Russian military itself. In the case of coups generating from a military source in various countries, you tend to see internal security services get deployed to combat them because there's a general worry about further mutinies within the rank and file of a specific country's um, military. So obviously, if we look at the size of the Russian military and the size of Wagner PMC, the Russian military is far larger. But I think what we're seeing so far is that there is a fear amongst Russian leadership that some of these military units may not be performing up to standard or are their their loyalty could be wavering in regards to Prigozhin himself versus Shoigu. Um, so that's what I'm looking at right now. But I think the reality is we're looking at a lot of videos right now that are unconfirmed. Some are geolocated. We'll have a far clearer picture of this in the next 12 hours. So so just, uh, Mario, I just want to, if, if everybody wants to do some just more research, if you look at the Google traffic from Rostov and kind of that generic area as well, th there is a significant amount of roadblocks, traffic jams. So so the, the videos we're getting, some people have geoconfirmed. So we're getting videos, we're getting these reports across Telegram, and then we're also being able to correlate that and cooperate with that at hours at four in the morning where we have roadblocks and traffics occurring along major highways in Rostov. So that clearly shows that Rostov right now is a priority both for Prigozhin and Wagner are fighting against the Russian MOD. And we have it doesn't clearly it doesn't clearly show that all source, not not even. Would you have, uh, okay, they have it's all insinuation, speculation, and unconfirmed posts? Would you have uh, Would you have reports of uh, and, and video footage of helicopters over Rostov um, and saying a lot of uh, We've got two videos now uh, of more helicopter activity over Rostov. We just don't have any reports of more shootings. I'm just watching the videos now, um, and the first one shows three helicopters. The other one shows another two helicopters. Mario, it's also important data point. Rostov has been under a state of emergency for the last four months because of repeated drone attacks and other sort of attacks on uh, infrastructure there. Not to mention they're having the Azov Battalion trials in Rostov as we speak. Uh, that just started, I think, this week. So that's a high security event as well. So Ro Rostov is very well locked down and, un and has been under a state of emergency for quite some time now. Uh, uh, we have Igor on stage. Igor... Uh... Uh, Igor Lopatonok, sorry, sir. Um, good to have you back. It's been a long time. Would love to get your initial thoughts on what we're seeing right now in Russia, sir. Thank you, Mario. Thank you for having me. First of all, yes, it, I will agree with Patrick. It's not a coup. It's mm, probably the Peskov uh, uh, identification as a military rebellion is right. Uh, conflict of Prigozhin and Shoigu was well known in Russian media and Russian society for quite a time. And yes, the Wagner is very popular, but this is a private military company and they have very probably most hardened uh, fighters in the Russian army now. 
But I don't see that's a big implication for the ongoing uh, the special military operation in Ukraine. It's, it will be make only more efficient because, of course, during the peacetime and during the wartime, it's a different leadership supposed to be appointed. Let's see what's, uh, what will emerge from Kremlin tomorrow morning because so far that Peskov described that situation as a military rebellion and they uh, they initiate the criminal prosecution. Against- off. But again, like to, to Patrick, OK, if you want to be put journalistic standards on this, fine. Uh, what 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 is absolutely undenied at all by nobody is Prigozhin has basically declared war on Shoigu and Gerasimov. I mean, he's going after them. a war of that, words, that's a, fact. A, a war of words. All sorts. Oh. That's not okay. war. That's not okay. war. Well, that OK. War of words. Uh that's so, fine. Well, all we have, all we have but that's kind like of a big some, deal regardless. No, it's not. All we have is some random OSINT nerd that's saying that this is allegedly north of Rostov. It's like, for all we know, there could be some babushka with an AK shooting at these uh, pickup trucks coming in from Wagner. And then they is it shoot fake back. that like, the Russian, no that the what this Russian is, government has put it on the right And warrant? making these extremely dangerous claims about a very important subject. You know, another point to make here is... Um, what we know is because I think CNN has so, been mentioned. So, so, CNN times. calls it a coup. Mercenary chief. Uh, yeah, so yeah, Fox, News says, CNN, Fox, Fox News says. Fox News says. Fox News says for people that hate CNN, there's Fox News. For people that hate Fox News, go CNN. I'm, Mercenary chief calls for rebellion against evil, evil Russian leaders. Issues warning as tensions intensify. But go ahead, Sully. So, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm talking about both Fox it... and CNN. You look at their form in the past, and a big part of Western mainstream media agenda is to cause more infl- uh, internal conflict and exaggerate when there is... Some exaggerate like when the secretary for Putin called it a military rebellion. No, no, so Mario, Mario. That's different Mario, than a coup. Mario, Mario, it's still very serious. Mario, Mario, let Go me ahead, my point, please. So look, you look at history. You look at, for example, the, uh, you know, the WMDs in Iraq. You look at the Arab Springs. All of that was propagated by the media to make something. There was something there. But well, they exaggerated so much that it became a disaster. The point being made is CNN and Fox are not the are not a source. Now, what they're trying to do is to inflame the situation even more. I'm not saying nothing's there, but the attempt is to do that. But for me, they're not evidence or a source because they are manipulative in this situation. To That's Suleiman's correct. point, yep. to Suleiman's point, listen, anything CNN is putting out at a time like this with the current actors that are on the stage, you have to think that's the Pentagon and the CIA. You're listening to their me- talking points memos. Pa- Patrick, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. What, can you please tell me what, what is the distract- facts right now that we can confirm? Just please tell me what is the facts right now that is going on between Wagner and the Russian MOD. From your point of view, what are facts from your perspective? Facts are that Prigozhin said some wild things, and that's about it. Anything else, all source to all to you now. So, so the Russian government has not opened an investigation against them. Hey, hold on, Patrick. This is unfair. Hold on, hold on. You didn't even mention that the 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 Wagner videos tell the the generals asking Wagner asking Prigozhin to stop. You didn't mention that. You didn't mention the various reports, even if the unverified. That's you didn't politi- mention the. Political. You didn't mention the. Sec- you didn't mention the secretary Mario. calling this a military rebellion. What are you saying? Oh, this is a war of... Okay, so if this is a war war of words, it would not be mentioned as a military rebellion by Putin's secretary. Mario, listen, Mario, even if just, even if just... he made those statements publicly, then obviously he's going to be brought to heel. There's going to be a price to pay for that politically or criminally or whatnot. The same thing would be true if this person was doing this in the United States or any other major serious country. But I think, you know, we're going to have to walk back this coup talk pretty damn quick yes, it, uh, before we run off the that... cliff. It's very good to not call it a coup because let me just explain how how strong of a term military rebellion is. If you have a platoon of Ukrainian soldiers that refuse to go fight to protect, say, Mariupol, uh, their commanders are going to say, OK, well, if you don't go fight and if you refuse our order, that's a that's a order of treason and we have to execute you on site. So that will happen. They have their punishments, whatever. But that's not an attempted coup by those Ukrainian soldiers on Zelensky. That's just a military You're rebellion. You're comparing Pergozhin to a Ukrainian soldier on the front line. They're not saying they that. Are they're saying they are saying it. They're all saying military no, rebellion. Saying... You're listening to CNN. If CNN is saying it's a coup, it's definitely not a coup. Okay, so listen. The, the, the term. Look at. I asked. I asked for a comparison. Hold on. I asked. Also, I'm going to give you the mic next. I appreciate waiting. I asked for a comparison between the term coup and military rebellion because it's getting about semantics now. 
The term coup and military rebellion are often used Obviously. are often used interchangeably, but there is a subtle difference between the two. So they use interchangeably, but there's a sudden difference. Let me call, explain that difference. I haven't read this yet, so we'll see what it says, and I could be proven very wrong. And I don't mind. We could call it a military rebellion or a coup. A coup is a sudden violent overthrow of an existing government governed by a small group. A military rebellion, on the other hand, is a more widespread uprising by, by the military against the government. So one is a violent overthrow of an existing government, and a military uprising or military rebellion, which is what the Kremlin called it, is a more widespread uprise, uprising by the military against the government. So if you want to call military rebellion, this is nothing. Well, the definition is an uprising by yeah, the military against the, the government. you said, Mario, I think both definitions, de definitions don't fit, but probably coops the more closer one. Um, go ahead, drunk. go ahead, Austin. Yeah, so I, I think it's important to note here. I mean, generally speaking, when it comes to like a large scale rebellion in, in the military, it's referred to as like a mutiny. Um, so that's, I mean, it's either between that, it depends on what the goals are, if the goals are regime change or, you know, changing leadership in a specific element of the state. I think that's what should be sort of focused on here. But I think what's important to note um, when looking at attempted coups or attempted mutinies or things like that is not only how sort of foreign news covers it, but how does like state sponsored news cover it as well. Generally speaking, uh, a joke amongst myself and some of my colleagues is you can tell if a coup is going well or not, whether or not the uh, the state news anchor is still on there saying it's not a coup or they've been replaced with someone in camouflage who's also saying it's not a coup. Um, and so I, I don't expect we're going to see any sort of change from like official Russian media sources on this, because, well, it's been claimed that sort of the objective of Western media is to aggra um, aggravate this. The objective of state media within Russia is to downplay it as much as possible, right? So I don't expect we're going to be seeing any sort anything other than it's everything's fine, it's small scale, right? That's but to me, I think that's an indicator that even they are still trying to assess the size of this. What we do know, if you know factually, is that there have been criminal charges levied against Prigozhin. We know that there are there are reports of physical conflict between Wagner and Russian forces. We don't know the size of that. We don't know exactly where that is currently. But what we do know is that there's something happening. It could be quite large. And I think anything beyond the the potential sort of ramifications of this is speculation at this point. But so you know, we, in we... summation here, the fact that one side is saying everything is fine and the other side is saying it's it's all gone to shit means that something is ongoing. And also, so we're seeing, we're seeing that, that yeah, so let's not forget that Wagner of, is not the army; they're they're a mercenary group. The so Russian seeing, army is not re, uh, uh, going against the itself. It's a mercenary group that is going after people in the Russian government. So we've seen unverified reports of these gunfights, firefights, but I guess my question would be if all of the if we can presume that you know these videos of the uh, convoys going through military checkpoints are real. Why would certain checkpoints be allowing them to just roll right through if those videos are real? And then other times we're seeing like outright military fights taking place. I, I, I don't, there's so many questions here that need to be answered that just aren't adding up. I, I wanted to ask Patrick a quick question, um, if I can, please. Um, Patrick, are you there? Yes, Khaleesi, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> um, Patrick, so okay, this is a bit far-fetched, okay, but I'm listening very carefully to what you said. Um, so so could it possibly be, and this is a far-fetched theory I accept, but where do things have happened in politics, that um, Wagner Group and Putin are uh, working in cohesion together? Because when I've been giving the updates, I've seen literally so many more updates about the, the strikes on Ukraine, um, in Kiev, all sorts of regions, and, and you know, um, bombers being prepared to go to Ukraine. So this was the, the trigger they wanted to go all in on Ukraine um, and blame it on um, a fictitious coup or whatever you want to call it, rebellion. So before you answer, Patrick, just, question, just two, two points I want to make. First one is uh, we have, um, or let me just open up again. Um, but the other point I want to mention to you, Khaleesi, to the point you've made, and I'll mention the other news afterwards. Um, but the point I want to make there is we had a, a military general from the U.S. forces who's been on stage before. He did tell us when we talked about, because um, I was asking questions like, why would they be striking Ukraine when there's an internal conflict challenge, whatever you want to call it, uh, occurring? So his explanation is like these things are planned well ahead. It doesn't mean they initiated those now, but they were ordered well before. 
and they were planned. They just weren't cancelled. And there is no serious escalations in the strikes in Ukraine, at least not yet. Uh, but valid question on the way. I just want uh, Patrick to go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Khaleesi. Um, look, I wouldn't second personally. I wouldn't second second guess the Russian uh, government, uh, and also they do public relations very differently, strategically as well than European countries do than than America does. Um, they think differently in terms of how what the, what their objectives are, what they want to get out of any particular situation. But I will hearken back to Prigozhin's uh, very uh, demonstrative outburst. Uh, during the whole Bakhmut Farago uh, with shell hunger and all that. And it did provide a great media distraction. Also, you know, kind of put, gave the impression that uh, the R- Russian Wagner forces were weak and maybe this was a good time for, you know, Ukrainian forces to, to surge into the remaining areas of Bakhmut. And, and that turned out to be a disaster for the Ukrainian armed forces. So, like, you know, I'm not saying that that's the case here, but, you know, I, I honestly, this is war, and you have to treat everything in the information space as a potential so, uh, psyop. So, it's so, all sorry, part of war. Let me just mention RT, which is funded by the Russian government, uh, has called this a coup, an armed coup, and they called it a Wagner armed coup attempt in Russia. Um, and, and there's a whole piece on this as well. So this was by... An, you know, from, yeah, of course, I'll just send you, uh, send you uh, to the thing now. Um, it's on the home page, actually, I think. But let me send it to you now, Ian. Um, just sent it to you. Um, and I want to go to the piece of information that I want to share earlier about just getting constant um, uh, uh, flow of information. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Just two seconds, everyone. All right, it's in the DMs. All right, there's the link. So this is by... They put armed coup in quotes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Armed coup in quotes. Um, they are reporting everything that they are that's happening right now. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, this goes contrary to the claims that Russia is censoring the news because they're clearly not. Um, so I want to go Wagner Group. So VizGuard24, um, now obviously it's, it's not 100% trust. I will trust them less than the other mainstream media you guys love to hate. The Wagner Group has launched a military coup and are now fighting against the Russian army. Around 30,000 Wagner soldiers have now taken control of a large area north of the Russian city of Rostov. A Russian helicopter has been shut down. So that's by a VizGuard. That was uh, a while ago now, but... Um, I just thought I'd read it out. Um, and they are the least trustworthy sorry, sorry, sorry. source on the planet. I, I gotta yeah, again, I, would, I, I got definitely wouldn't. Go ahead, also. Sorry, I got a video of a, a – it looks like a T-72 just driving all the way around Rostov with heavily armed infantrymen. A, that looks like a BTR. Uh, so let me send this to you guys. But, Jesus, this is this is ridiculous. This is in Rostov the Don, apparently. Send it to me too, yeah. Yeah, I'll just send it to you. Uh, I'll forward it to you, Ian, on, on WhatsApp. Uh, I do want to go to, to um, uh, uh, Austin again. Austin, if we do see this escalating, and I'm going to bring up new speakers, if we do see how, – how could this – you know, if you compare this to other coups, how could this evolve? How could this, this escalate? How would it look like? So, so the wild card here, and what we haven't seen many indicators on until those reports of – so Jackson was speaking earlier about reports of some convoys getting waved through, other ones being sort of stopped – the, the worry here, at least from the Russians' perspective, is that there's a sense of divided loyalty within the military towards Shoigu or Prigozhin, right? So if we do see Russian military units or Rosgardia or whatever, you know, waving these convoys through, it's not a matter of them taking a side in it, but them basically saying we're staying out of it. That presents a, a clear sort of threat to what the, the internalized Russian response to this will be. In regards to escalation, it's going to depend on, you know, if we see more reports of, you know, kinetic conflict between Wagner forces and, and Russian state forces, for one. And two, what do those locations look like? You know, Rostov in particular is important because it's a, it's a major logistics hub for the current Russian war effort in Ukraine. Um, that being said, it's obviously not where, you know, the head of government sits. So, it, locations are going to be really key in determining what the motive here is, whether the motive is to have a stronger ta- um, place at the negotiating table over the potential removal of Shoigu or Gerasimov, or whether it's for something like regime change. At this point, I think it's more so the former than the latter. But again, we, we have a lot of a lot of evidence yeah. that needs but, to be. But Austin, Austin, uh, do, ask also, let, let's say, yeah. go ahead, also, go ahead, please. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. So the, here's my question to you, Austin. Like, let's okay, let's just say that Prigozhin's objective, right, is to remove Shoigu and Gerasimov, who the main and only reason why those two people are still in any position in the Russian Ministry of Defense is because of Putin. If Prigozhin is successful in removing those two military figures, you're basically stating that Prigozhin then controls the country. Even if Putin is president, he has the army. He managed to remove the Ministry of Defense 
and the ge- the gen- the chairman of the general staff of the Russian military through force. In what universe is Putin then still president and notionally with the power if the two main figures that are in power right now in the Russian Ministry of Defense are removed because of Prigozhin? Putin becomes a figurehead. Prigozhin then becomes the powerhouse. It's clear as day. That's a good point. Uh, I want to interrupt briefly uh, with news from Russia. So the Russian social media network VK has blocked one of the statements released by Prigozhin's press service on their platform. The post now states that the message is not available in Russia and is based on a decision by the prosecutor general's office. There are also claims that some news uh, about Prigozhin's latest steps are being blocked by Yandex, which is their version of Google. Uh, and so it looks like they are, uh, at least uh, at least some social media companies, are blocking some of the messages that Prigozhin is trying to So send. Russian, that's Russian. So we did mention that earlier, but you're talking about Russian uh, social media uh, companies, correct? Russian social correct, media yeah. and Russian uh, search engines, yes. yeah, They are blocking some of Prigozhin's messages. Not all of them, but some of them so, are being blocked. So I want to ask my next question. Mario, uh, look and, at the video I sent in the, in the I, I did news. see it. I did see it. And you could mention what the video is in, to the audience before I ask my question. Mario, can I yeah. just give a really yeah. quick update, please? NBC News reported, and they've got a video for it as well, um, 20 minutes ago, that Wagner boss says Russian military chiefs lie to Putin and the public. Yes. I haven't watched the video. No, I've, I've, I've seen those reports before, and he said he's made those claims before. Um, before I ask my next question, and also so I want you to well, add, Mario, yeah, update the, the video. video. What's the video? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, the video shows, and I shared it there, and if you guys want to post it, and I shared this, this the photo is from the Google Street views of the exact gas station where it is. But it's in Rosan Don, and it shows T-72 tanks with, you know, other civilian vehicles and then followed by an, an armored personnel carrier and then heavily armed men traveling out in Rossov just openly, willingly, nearly along the city. Like, clearly there's a significant military activity currently occurring in Rosov on Don right now, and we have video with the Google Street image that confirms the location of that area. So the question that I have is is a question I've asked earlier. Um, and my position on this, I generally don't take positions, but my position is I don't want this coup to succeed, uh, if you want to call it a coup or not. And uh, we've got RT now also calling it a military insurrection. Um, I don't want it to succeed. Not doesn't mean anything about my position on the war or on Putin. I just think any instability in a country like Russia is not good news. Uh, It's not good news for Russia. It's not good news for the world. The coup could end up bringing peace and it could end up with positive results or it could end up uh, with significantly worse results. It's just not a risk. It's just not a risk. I'd I'd, I'd probably lean to the opposite more likely, but it's just not a risk I'm willing to take. Uh, I would like um, the world to to be facing. Uh, But Keep in mind mentioned... what, what Prigozhin himself said, right? He said that when he's done with Russia, he's going to refocus his energy on Ukraine. So it, it would ramp up the war in the scale of anything, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so my question would be to, to all sorts, you can maybe touch on it, but mainly Austin again. Um, what would happen to Russia if Prigozhin, uh, Prigozhin sorry, took power? And um, what would happen to the war in Ukraine? What would happen to Russian uh, foreign policy um, and its relationship with the West? And... Taking into consideration, uh, Russia has the most nuclear armed weapon, uh, most nuclear warheads in the world. Austin. Yeah. So, so yeah. Number one, um, I understand that there are some folks talking about, you know, should this escalate? There's a possibility of of loose nukes based upon um, Russia's, you know, massive nuclear stockpile. I'm not currently very much very worried about that. I think no matter uh, who comes out on top here, whether at the negotiating table or by a force of arms, I, I don't expect Russia's nuclear forces to really take a side in this, nor do I expect Wagner to really go for that. I feel like that's an escalation that bears too but, far. So too Austin, much. On, on that question, I want to add one more yeah. thing. You know how we, we talked before and when will, and by the way, just for the audience, I would love to get your sentiment in the comments, um, your sentiment on us calling it a coup or not, and, and your thoughts on what's happening so far. Um, anyone that wants to come on stage, DM me and the team will check the request, tell us who you are. And any new information, put it in the comments, tag me, and make sure you include sources when possible. Um, but Austin, back to the question. We've talked about when will Putin, if put, if if uh, when will Russia or Putin cross the red line? In, in other words, use nuclear warheads, whether tactical um, to, on Ukraine or escalate further. Um, and we talked about, uh, we had an analyst come on stage and say the most likely scenario would be Putin's life himself is in danger, and that's the the probably the the, the closest we could get to Russia using any nuclear warheads. Um, are we heading towards that red line based on what we're seeing now? 
I, I would say r- the risk itself is escalating, sure. But that being said, I still would I would still pose it in my head and via my analysis as being minute at best. I will sleep easily tonight knowing that, you know, I, I don't expect any nuclear launches in the near future. I think plenty of red lines have been crossed that where there has been speculation that tactical nuclear weapons would be used and they haven't been. Um, I, I think... This has largely been due to both uh, Russian strategy and also very, um, very explicit messaging from the West that, you know, nuclear escalation is is a no bueno for anybody involved. Um, so I, I'm not terribly worried about nuclear escalation right now, even if, you know, in this hypothetical scenario where Putin's life is at risk himself, which I, I also don't really see happening in the near future. Um, I, I don't know if anybody would follow an order to initiate a nuclear launch in, in that event, right? When, you know, the jig is basically out. There is that, new that, footage out from Rostov and the streets of Rostov showing what appears to be Wagner driving a BTR, uh, a, a T-72, and a bunch of technicals uh, loaded with uh, soldiers in an AMRAP, which I think is probably captured from, you know, from the Ukrainians, uh, through the streets of Rostov with zero resistance. They're just driving to the street. I'll send it to you, uh, Mario. Thank you, Ian. So what I'll, I'll reiterate as a quick last point here is what it's important to note is why Rostov is important. And that's because it's a massive rail linkage point and logistical base for Russian troops already deployed within Ukraine. So if Prigozhin is looking for a bargaining chip, then Rostov is a massive one. So would you have, uh, and I want to ask my question again, uh, would you have troop movements in the center? Of- it's hard to really confirm one way or another. Uh, uh, being very prevalently active in downtown Rostov. I would agree that if we're getting footage right now of the actual city in, like, the, let's say, the downtown area, that's more than likely Russian military and not Wagner because of the importance of how that, that of Rostov serves for the overall invasion of Ukraine. So these footages that we're getting out that appear to be in downtown, and most of these will look like are getting zero confirmed, I would suspect that those are Russian National Guard and uh, uh, army more in the outskirts because there's also footage of these v- tanks and vehicles and convoys in the outskirts there is a possibility that that's wagner but the problem we're going to run into about this is that unfortunately unlike ukraine and russia let's say in zaporizhia where generally ukrainians wear yellow or there's definitive identifier based on uniforms wagner and, Ru- and, and the russian army for the most part operate the same equipment you know wagner has different uniforms in the russian military generally you know, and, 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 and it's also difficult to kind of understand because sometimes we've seen Wagner being in Russian military extremely well equipped, and we've also seen them not very well equipped. Also, so can I can I ask you, let me let me ask part. you a question if you don't yeah. mind. Also, the the, the fact um, the fact that we we haven't seen more reports of clashes um, is that a concerning development? Because if we let's say we know, and obviously we don't know anything for sure. But let's say we assume, the same way we're assuming the tanks at the Ministry of Defense are Russian tanks, we're assuming that Wagner forces are at least in the state um, of Roskov. So assuming that, and, and not having any more reports of clashes, um, does what does that mean? Does that mean that there are factions of the Russian military that, have, that are supporting Wagner? Because otherwise we'd see the Russian military crush Wagner relatively quickly. I mean, that's I, I think I mean, we can't jump to that conclusion because the vast majority of the Russian military right now is prioritizing the war in Ukraine. I mean, that, that's what's going on. Um, and so what the, the but the, the other thing, Mario, to your point is that dawn is breaking. Generally, when what we've seen, you know, in, in, in this war, now that is daytime. First of all, we also have to assume is that if Russia's base, we don't know how long they've been planning this, how how much forces they managed to deploy inside of Russian territory. But you also have to assume if the assumption is that they push from Luhansk, right, the Wagner, to go to Rostov, that's going to take hours and hours and hours. And what we've also seen in, in by just Google Maps traffic, right, we've seen roadblocks being established along a lot of highways. We've seen roadblocks, traffic jams, etc. And so if Wagner's pushing from Luhansk, I think one of the, this is maybe where I'm a little bit, we can also say why we haven't seen that much conflict. One, it's nighttime. Generally, we'll probably see more fighting during the day if that gets to that point, which is not a certainty. Let's make that clear. But second is, I don't think Wagner, unless they really did this under the radar, which I don't think they would have, like secretly got thousands of troops into Russia territory without nobody noticing, I think they might have just initiated can you, so, so, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, also, yeah. if you can see the footage that's being shared in our group, um, you could see people in the, uh, soldiers in the city of um, in the city of uh, of Rostov, and they're pointing. They're all looking at at a location like it's like they're engaging there, and then they're pointing the gun there. We don't have any footage or anything of them shooting. 
But can you look at those photos? Because we talked about this being the Russian military. Can you look at those photos? Tell me how you would interpret it. So if anyone I'm listening, they just. Sh- at, at, at a, I can give a, a first glance here. Please. Well, we'll also take a look. So what I'm looking at. So you're looking at the, the initial photo is about five guys, right? Um, I'll, I'll add you to the breaking news group that we have. Uh, five, so, okay. Three soldiers. Another one has one soldier. Another one has five soldiers uh, in the street and pointing guns. I'll send them to you on WhatsApp yeah. now. I'll send them to you on WhatsApp now so you can see it. Um, and, then, and then you know if that's the same ones you're looking at. That was from the War Monitors Telegram group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're looking at the same thing. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so in this case, what I'm seeing right now, number one, the, the kit is inconsistent amongst all the soldiers, which means, you know, so kit amongst the Wagner group is inconsistent. That being said, kit is also inconsistent amongst uh, Rosgardia or the Russian National Guard. Um, what I will say is in one of these photos, there looks to be uh, a tiger, which is, you know, the Russian equivalent of basically like a Humvee or an MRAP. Um, and that has the Rosgardia uh, insignia on it. So my first guess is that these are Rosgardia because of the, the inconsistency of kit and also that that tiger. Um, but that being said, and I think this is something that all sorts kind of hinted at earlier, it's going to be incredibly hard in, for these next couple of hours for identification unless Wagner decides to like put Wagner patches everywhere to denote themselves as different because they're running very similar kit. They're running very similar camo patterns. And so, you know, keep an eye out for patches or armbands or something that would differentiate someone. But as of right now, I'm, I'm going to say 60% these are Ross Guardia units. No, I, you know what? If I'm going to respectfully disagree yeah, go with ahead. Say, go ahead. The, the, the Ross Guardia is the Russian National Guard. And here's where I would disagree. So if you – those are the pictures. Austin, look at the video, right? That, what that shows – that this video shows – because that's the pictures, but there's a video. First of all, you're pointing a rifle. Like if you're securing something, you're not pointing a rifle at a building. That that means there's a threat, right? You would generally try to secure the area with presence. Just that your 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 physical presence is what you do to secure. But if you see the video, what they're doing is they're they're securing like they're they're basically setting up a perimeter, and you're seeing mobilization of forces going around, right? What in Ross truck. There's a Ross truck. There's an MRAP. Right, but again, uh, this is the, but 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 it, it's again, Ian, I don't just like this. Is so we don't know. Yeah, yeah, so we don't exactly. We're just all trying to speculate what's happening here. But you know, what you're saying also is there could be the Russian military. So it could be either Wagner, which we all don't think it is, or factions of the Russian military taking over the building. So if even if it's the Russian military, but, but the, the, it's just the, the tactics they're using. We, okay, to okay. So I, I, to... I want to pause it. Yeah, a, 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 yeah hold on, also, Ian, Ian, Ian. I'll give you Ian. Just let also finish. Also, also, Ian. Also, finish what you're saying and then go straight to Ian. What if? What if, what if, what if, they're, you know, the soldiers there are being told they're performing an exercise. Is that possible? But, I mean, but, I mean, they're, this is being distributed widely through Russian Telegram. We're, we're getting all this I from know, Russian but, like, sources. What, the soldiers, you know, like, I mean, America they, does this, this all the time, right? Is... They, do, they do exercises. But it could you're going to do a it could military be. exercise? I would, it, let's just say I mean, it could like, be. Yeah, everything, it could be anything. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's like it's like it's like there's a war and then there's airplanes flying over Ukraine. It's like, oh, what if this is just no, a normal? I want to see, yeah, no, go no, ahead. I want to see Ian's argument. Go ahead. I want Sorry, to see Ian's but, argument for that. Ian, but Ian, but so, what I'm saying is, if you look oh. at the video of this from where these pictures are also taken, you see that they're establishing a perimeter in, a, in, a, in an attempt to to not only just it's not trying to, it's not like they're trying to secure it, they're trying to seize something, right? And so, but again, it's to Austin's point, right? I don't think we're not going to be able to use kids as an identifying factor. And the fact that this is happening in Rostov, I mean, this is insane that we have this amount of military equipment, this amount of military force active in the city where the Russian command for the military operation in Ukraine is occurring targeting a Russian Ministry of Defense building. So we have a Russian Ministry, so, we, have, we have Julia, Julia, you're on stage, you just posted, shared that same photo as well. Can you just comment on that photo as well, Julia? Yeah, it's just unclear. I, I just, uh, I'm trying to post a video of it as well, because uh, there are like more videos coming in, um, and uh, Honestly, I, I I don't see any Wagner flag, so it, it appears that it's just uh, military uh, equipment. So, uh, but it, what's interesting in the past uh, few hours, we haven't seen even once a, a picture or video from Wagner's, like not not one. Like if, if they shut down the helicopter, if some you know, if if there was a shutout, if if someone was killed. There's nothing. We've seen, Absolutely so we've nothing. seen shooting of the shooting, but yeah, everything we've seen is unverified. But, but yeah, we just, by the way, the tanks are pointing. Right? All these, this is important. These, uh, Wait, Ian, hold, hold on, on, hold on. 
if you look at the video, the tanks, right, I just looked at it again. It looks like the tanks are actually pointing their guns at the building. They're pointing their, the, like... Yeah, so if this is a... Computer, yeah, yeah, so hold on. Also, if this is a defensive perimeter, perimeter so yeah, if this is Russian military, they would not be pointing... So if you're defending something, you would not be pointing the tank towards the building. Correct. You would set a secure... You would set a perimeter around it. The center is what you're... This is just military tactics 101. The building, if that's what you're defending, all the vehicles would be outside of it, pointing outwards, blocking the roads. If you look at the video and what they're doing, is they're... They're going from the roads to the building. They're they're trying to secure, they're trying to seize it, and they have all their weapons and guns pointing at the Russian Ministry of Defense building. This is if, if if you were to show me a video of how to launch a coup and to seize a building, this is how you would do it. Again, I can't confirm it, but that's what it looks like to me. Well, of course, there's another video that's just come out um, by War Monitor again, and if you look at it, it's just tons of. Um, army personnel walking around the building, literally just surrounding this building. I'm not sure what building it is, but I assume it's a military building. I think that's the Ministry of Defense building. I think they're trying to, see, walking around trying it, to yeah. seize it. They're it's seizing it. So this yeah. is, but this, yeah. uh, this does, but that doesn't. Mean, so based on this, because we've had different people say this is most likely the Russian military. So what you're saying is that Wagner can't, can't get there in time. It's just too quick, and uh, obviously, uh, Prigozhin. Just would be have... careful with the uniforms. Be careful with it. This also matches Wagner. They're, like, it's, just be very careful. You cannot use uniforms yet. You so, have, so it's actually. It's I would say. I would say if it is Wagner, that's actually. If you don't want the coup to succeed. And, and and let me know what you think of this statement, all sorts. But if you don't want the could to succeed. Um, you, this being Wagner is that shows that the Russian military is definitely divided and they are uh, seizing the Ministry of Defense. Now that's assuming they are, um, we do have military personnel pointing towards the building. We have tanks pointing towards the building. Another alternative theory, and also let me know, let me know what you think. Factions, of the, uh, members of the, uh, members within the military, Ministry of Defense, I think it's unlikely though, members within the Ministry of Defense have, uh, are supporting Wagner and um, I, I would not and, and the Russian military and, and, and the Russian military. So, guys, let me finish our point because you guys don't both understand what I'm saying. But let me just say it for the audience: uh, they've they've um, they're, they're supporting a Wagner rather than supporting the Russian military. They're defected. Yeah, I'm just couldn't remember the term. So, so Ministry of Defense members have defected, and um, uh, the Russian forces are seizing the building. This is all speculation. I'm looking at the different possible yeah, I mean, scenarios. If you, at, if you look at who's there, right? I mean, you have. What appears to be a military could be Wagner, could be the main, you know, Rosgardia, but they're also being flanked by military police. Right? There's MP vehicles there. There's MP vehicles, and there's regular police there as well. Which, I mean, it tells you that there is some sort of exercise happening. So hold on, uh, just yes. sorry, sorry. So also, 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 Austin uh, or anyone, um, War wanted to post it, inconsistent shoes, but there's a tiger. What does a tiger on shoes mean? That's based on War Monitor. No, he's talking about the truck. No, he's posted a photo yeah. of shoes. Yeah, I think he's talking about the truck that's you know that's also in the photo in the second picture. Okay. Yeah, the tiger's a Russian truck, and 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 and, and Ian, military police. By the way, this is standard procedure. Um, for military yeah, Prigozhin, Prigozhin just claimed again. Prigozhin just claimed we not verified his forces destroyed another helicopter that attacked a column of Wagner PMCs. Okay, where, 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 where's the footage of that? Uh, no okay. footage. Again, again we, we, he, just cla he just claimed it. Yeah, I know. He just claimed it. There's no footage. I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where's, where's the footage of the first one from like two hours ago they claimed they shot down? This is all bogus. Okay. Yeah, I can't so, even find so, that. So, like, there would be footage by now. There would be wreckage. I mean, a helicopter does not crash and people don't notice. Okay, so, that came in. Just again, the statement from Pogosian came in a minute ago. Let's just wait. So after the statement came in beforehand no, from Pogosian. talking about the previous helicopter. Like, we should have that by now. We do have, we do have, we, we may have that by yeah, now. People, hours, yeah, yeah, but a helicopter, right now, yeah, yeah, but I understand. Out, yeah, I understand. Yeah. But this depends where it landed and also if, I'm not saying it did happen or didn't happen, but I'm saying, if it did happen, you can not have footage and something may have happened. We did see have footage of shooting well, I mean, going, and we don't have records or something, right? Eventually, yes. When someone, if and when someone arrives to the records, should have it. Maybe, I mean, maybe it happened. Maybe two hours from now. We'll and when we'll get the footage of the wreckage, we'll probably say, "Hold on, it's not unverified. This could be anything burning." I really, I really don't think it's, it's happening. That's I, I really hope. I, I my, my, my sorry, statement I is, a hope. Mario, yes, Mario, yes, yes, sorry. yes. I, I need to provide this. Uh, it, okay, so the video, what we're seeing. It, it looks like what they're what the building that they're seizing, not securing, seizing is not Russian Ministry of Defense. It's Russian, like the, their Ministry of Interior. That it looks like is the target of the operation. Which by the so, 
if you're Prigozhin and you're trying to target, if you're trying to do this rebellion coup, whatever you want to call it, that is a prime target because the minister, the Russian Ministry of Interior, is would be dedicated to suppress any internal unrest. That is looks. That's the building that is being a, a seized right now by whoever these forces are, because these could definitely be either Wagner or Russian military that defected to Wagner. We just don't know, but they're seizing the Russian Ministry of Defense building in Rostov. Could it be a, an exercise? No, no. I, I Dan, mean, I love you, man, but you can't do an exercise now. <laughs> this is you would not, not do it. Why not? Because it's all ongoing. You don't do an exercise. You do this before something happens, no, and when it happens, you start acting. But, but let me. Theater here, so you know, like there, there is. So there are not. Play. Okay, so these are not. So so Alexander Vindman posted. Um, uh, these are not. Um, these are not Russian National Guard troops. This looks like a wag like Wagner troops entering the SMD headquarters. The is that the Ministry of Defense? Um, also SMD. What's the SMD? Uh, Southern Military District. The whole area is the SMD. What? Uh, no, 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 it's a headquarters. It's a specific. It's a specific combatant command of the Russian MOD. Yeah. Yes. Look, the one thing I want to say is there, anything is possible and anything could be happening, I, but sometimes you just got to use a little common sense and just uh, follow what's going on. I mean, it's probably, it could be as Mario says, you know, he could be attempting a coup. It I hope, as simple as that. I, I hope, yeah, I, I genuinely hope that this, I'm not going to say this isn't a coup, I'm going to go past that because and, 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 I was saying that earlier. I genuinely hope this ends soon and this fails. Because um, the unknowns that follow this um, are just too worrying for me to even imagine. Um, so interesting. Yeah, it's entertaining. It's not dull. Um, yeah, there's it's 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 swearing. Yeah, this. That this coup was to succeed. Everyone loses. This like is the Ukraine this loser. could everyone could, I would say everyone could the world, lose. The but... world loses, minorities lose. Like someone like Navalny and his ilk in is horrendous for everyone. Like, yeah, it could be, could be everything. Everything could be. We just don't know what Prigozhin could do. And I hope if he does succeed, which again, I uh, Prigozhin, I, I I I hope he doesn't. But I also don't. I genuinely don't think he will. But for me, this is the most worried I've been since um, since the invasion of Why Ukraine. Are you worried? Why are you worried, Mario? I think the the, the, the the world is worried. It should be worried if there's a change. And again, the... I'd be more concerned about Lizzie well, Graham okay. talking about you know uh, sparking Article Five over nuclear weapons. I mean that that's what worries me. That would worry me as well. But there's rhetoric. That's like way there's rhetoric. Look, I, there's been a lot of rhetoric about uh, you know Putin tiny, and uh, Putin tiny, and Medvedev tiny. talking about uh, when Russia would use nuclear weapons, the move of nuclear warheads to to Belarus. I didn't even do a space on that because I considered all that political maneuvering and um, uh, politi political that's rhetoric. That's a real concern, right? The, I mean, he's claiming that there's a movement of nuclear weapons to Belarus, not even handing over Okay, so we have Ocean there. Defender. Ocean Defender's confirmed a minute ago. These do appear to be elements of the Wagner Group outside the Southern Military District headquarters, but some of the soldiers are also wearing Roskvardia patches and National Guard military trucks can be seen, which makes this extremely right. confusing. So according to Ocean Defender, this is members of Wagner as well as Russian military and the, mil and the National and National Guard around the Southern Military District headquarters, um, and that's. One monitor posted Mario, and he said, he said just what we were talking about. He said, "Supposed crash site of the helicopter Wagner shot shot down," and then he just shows a clear site. So there's the answer to whoever asked for the footage. Wait, is there actual? No, no, sorry, no, it's the opposite. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. He's, sorry, he's being sarcastic. So he's saying, look, the supposed this is meant to be where I didn't see the photo. The helicopter is, and it's clear, like there is no helicopter. What do you mean, supposed? Oh, no, no, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Sorry, hold on, hold on. Uh, he's not. I don't think he's being sarcastic, man. He, he doesn't post sarcastic. There's a, there's a. He's saying supposed, but there's a, a, a in the photo. There's smoke coming out from somewhere something that crashed. Now, obviously, this is just smoke coming out from a location. So I don't know why he's saying this is the crash site of a helicopter of Wagner shot down. Obviously, these people making those claims. We don't know it is, and there's no helicopter showing. But he's not being sarcastic either. Yeah, he's put it on the ground. Or yes. Like, I, 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 yeah, we need we need more. But like, I, I want to go back to the what Olsen Defender said. I think for me this is um, for Olsen Defender to say that because he's been debunking some things earlier. Um, yeah. He did say. Yeah, I don't think he'd be sarcastic. Uh, no, the, yeah, Walmart are definitely not being sarcastic, and and um, uh, also Defender did say those footage and videos, and you can everyone can check. Sent Defender is his handle, and if someone could um, pin everything at the top, would be good. But 
these do appear to be elements of the Wagner group outside of the Southern Military District headquarters, but some of the soldiers are also wearing Roskvadia patches and National Guard military trucks can be seen, which makes this extremely confusing. Yeah. What I would say again, Mario, what we can, I, what, what we can confirm on the, just, no, okay, not confirm, sorry, because that word is going to like cause a search stone. Um, but what this video indicates is that what whoever is there Whoever is in, whoever the military personnel is, they are seizing that building. They are, they are going into the building. They've submitted a perimeter. They're going up like anybody who's been in the military, who's, who's seen Iraq or Afghanistan. Th this is textbook raid of a building. This is how you seize a building. So they're seizing whoever's in there. They're trying to, 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 to maintain control of it from whoever's inside. This is also, and, and, and also, Ian, he like, this is saying, yeah, also, for you. What do you, he said, what this do you is, you can find there in the building. I mean, assuming this is like a real thing, right? This raid is real. What, what do you think they hope to find in the, uh, in the MOD building? Well, it looks like it's MOI. It looks from, from, oh, okay. from, but again, that, well, that's, I mean, I don't, I don't, guys, let's use, yeah. minute, let's use, avoid the acronym just for people that don't know. Uh, Ministry of Defense and Ministry of Interior. Interior. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, also. why would they raid the uh, Ministry of the Interior? I mean, what, what are they hoping to find in there? No, because the Ministry, Ministry of Interior is responsible for the internal security of the Russian Federation. So, and if you're trying to do a military rebellion, as the Russians right. are accusing for good are doing, you want to go after the guys whose little job is to make sure that doesn't happen. It makes sense. I know Igor has had his hand up for a while, Mario. If you want to, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I will, I will, I will. Just, just one more thing, also, um, just to, to kind of um, understand what's happening from OSINT defenders' uh, tweet. For OSINT defenders, say it's Wagner, um, as well as the National Guard and the Russian military entering the building. Um, would the assuming this is true and what he's saying is true, would this mean that Wagner and factions of the Russian military? Are working together um, in this coup, and that's what I was saying could be the scary part. This is that's why I said earlier. If you remember when when we had those um, tanks pointing at the Ministry of Def Ministry of Interior Building or Ministry of Defense Building, um, I said that you know, Russian military and uh, probably setting up per perimeter. Then it clicked a very obvious thing. If it's a perimeter, they wouldn't point in guns and the tanks towards the building. But then then I said I hope this. Is Wagner because if it is factions of the Russian military, it means if it's Wagner, this means there's limited resistance, which is concerning. But pointing at it and limited, the, the concerning thing there's limited uh, uh, battles going on, there's limited resistance. That's what's really concerning. Um, but then to see Wagner and the National Guard, which we said earlier, it's impossible for them to defect. Well, to have Austin defenders say it's the Russian military, the National Guard, and Wagner. Um, allegedly entering the Ministry of Interior building, it, it shows there are defections happening and they're happening rapidly for them to be at the building already. Mario, if you remember, my sources had told me and so, uh, a couple of hours ago, and I, as I claimed, that there are fractions of the uh, military that are defecting to uh, what's it called that was concerning the, uh, the Kremlin. So this is just more proof of what's happening. Um, all source is that a, a fair assumption and then, and then I want to go to Igor right after I, I, I mean I, any, I, at this point Mario we're really having a conversation in June 2023 of a possible coup in Russia at this point man anything could be possible you know Igor Sushko he tweeted just now he said Wagner PMC has liberated Rostov on Don from Putin's regime who, hold on hold on okay. sorry sorry in, who said that the guy who was in here earlier, Igor Sushko. Ah, uh, okay, Ukrainian. okay. I thought Prigozhin said that. This would be, be no, no, no. Um, I want to go back. Uh, I want to go to to Igor. He's been waiting for a while. Igor, I'd love to get your so hyperbolic. Uh, Igor, I would love to get. Yeah, okay. uh, I would love to get your thoughts on uh, on what's happening now. Uh, thank you, Mario. I think we need to uh, uh, think about who Prigozhin is. Uh, of course, it's a sanctioned man, and. Uh, under sanction of United States Treasury and and every possible list. He is a head of military, private military campaign. Uh, you can call him oligarch because his company Concord make a fortune on the on the meals for the schools, etc. But we need to watch closely what is going on now with the uh, position of Russian law enforcement because that Talking point of Prigozhin has 
a very big attraction with a part of Russian military and a, a part of Russian society, you can call them patriots, who demand more active actions or more, uh, how to say, uh, more efficient actions in the military front if they started this uh, operation in Ukraine. So he practically was uh, a serving uh, interest of Kremlin for quite a time. Unfortunately, our government completely lost uh, the traction with uh, what is going on inside of Kremlin, what is uh, what is fraction is there, what is uh, going on, because we all consumed by propaganda by generated for Ukrainians uh, and spit it out by Ukrainians and consumed and chewed it by our mainstream media. What is good to have... UK so we have an update, uh, we have we have a pro-Russian account, sorry, sorry, just breaking news, uh, Igor, yes. uh, an account that's pro-Russian and pro-Putin um, uh, also. So can you talk, tell me more about the account? Um, and I'll, I'll... Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I think you guys know who it is, uh, Ukraine Maps, uh, so Ma Maps Ukraine. He just tweeted a video of, Wag and I'm just going to quote it right now, Wagner advancing towards the Voronezh region and is clashing with Russian armies. In the video, you can hear gunfire in the background. And how, what do you know about Ukraine maps? And I know he's pro-Russia, pro pro-Putin, pro as yeah, you said, I mean, but what else? He, yeah, I mean, I think, I think he actually tweeted when this all kind of broke out that, you know, uh, Putin needs to, like, basically kill uh, Prigozhin. And it's funny because he says... Seven a minute ago, he, he tweets, it's all fake, it's all a psyops, quote, you know, in those in quotations, and he put the clown emoji, and I am pretty certain... So he called, hold on, he called he, this a psyop, a, 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 a false flag he, attack. He said anybody, no, he's claiming that if anybody says this is a false flag or a psyops, they're a clown. Oh, okay, I and thought he claimed, I thought he claimed this was a psyops. Bro I mean, he, and I, I, I will find it, but I'm pretty certain when this broke a couple hours ago, he was basically demanding Putin needs to kill Prigozhin. And we have more sources sending that photo of the smoke that War Monitor has posted, uh, saying this is the downed Russian helicopter. But I think this is, uh, for me, irrelevant versus what we're discussing now regarding the, the building. But Igor, I'll let you go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll jump in more news. Yes, as well. yes. So uh, we lack of uh, analytics on a Kremlin uh, inside inner circle uh, balance of power. And the Putin was... Uh, so successful and counterbalancing different powers. So now, in this situation, exactly never will allow to happen without. Okay, so we have Wagner, or, uh, Igor, Putin. Igor, we have yeah. Wagner, and it'll, okay. this will, by the way, interruptions, everyone, you know what happened. Sent Defender just said the Wagner group has announced that they have captured the southern military district headquarters within the city of Rostov. In the in the main city Rostov on Don in the Rostov region of southwestern Russia. So so also you were saying earlier and there's a video there as well. You were saying um, earlier that monitor just posted. Um, he said this is what he wrote: shooting heard in Vorozne. Reports claim it's between Russia and Wagner. Which is what the pro Putin pro Russia guy said. Video. Yes. And the video. You can actually see video of the shooting from what appears to be a technical. Uh, so there's a guy on like you know on a technical shooting at something. Okay, so so can you can also can you tell me what it means for Wagner to have captured the Southern Military District headquarters? I mean, that's the that's literally the command responsible for the entire Russian military operations in Ukraine. The, the, your command and head, your command center for this entire operation has been seized by Wagner. I mean, we can speculate what that means, but that is a very bad sign if you're a Russian military soldier in Ukraine right now. And you do not. That means that community. That, I would guarantee that that probably means that nobody from Ukraine right now, if you're a Russian soldier in Ukraine, you're probably not getting any commands or guidance from the central command. So the that, so 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 so, uh, so Alexander Alexander Vindman just said the question of why Prigozhin head of head would head to Rostov rather than Moscow is answered by the storming of the SMD headquarters. Um, so that's the the um, Ministry of Defense headquarters. It is the most strategic. It is the most strategic target in the south of Russia. If you're targeting the Ministry of Defense now that Prigozhin has the headquarters, does he consolidate or move on? But I, I, that's a good point. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, it's all the what, what I don't what, I mean, what I don't understand is where is the resistance? Where are the battles? I know we're getting reports now of battles. We saw two. We got reports of two helicopters shut down. Um, it's been hours there, now. That's, some bad that's, that's what I think. I think. I think that Wagner maybe did a lightning. I mean, again, we don't know, but it could be that the Wagner had better success because they planned more for for Rostov. 
But then certain areas... Whoever control... Uh, Marco with... Rubio. Marco Rubio just tweeted. Um, whoever controls Rostov will also control the primary resupply line for virtually the entire Russian force in Ukraine. And Mario, to answer your question, I think it's a combination. It's a combination of uh, support for Prigozhin and also the, uh, a quick attack that they made. I think there will be more uh, resistance and fighting, but I think there's also a lot of uh, support going on behind closed doors. So, sorry, Marco is actually saying that um, Wagner have announced that they've captured the headquarters of the Southern Military District. And that's not actually Russian troops, but it's um, Wagner. We did say it's Wagner. We did say it's Wagner along with yeah, the National... Did. And he, he quote retweeted OSINT Defender, which said that it's Wagner along with the National Guard and the Russian military. Austin? Austin, I saw you unmuted. Sorry, I accidentally uh, unmuted. My bad. Well, well, good to get your thoughts on this. Um, and the statement I made earlier about the limited resistance that we're facing. And, and um, have you covered previous cues? I'm, I'm sure the answer is yes. And how does that compare? So, so the major question for any any secure state security service in the event of a possible coup is number one: you have to you have to take inventory of forces you can deploy against it that you know will be loyal. Because if you if you don't take that inventory, if you don't consolidate, there you're running the risk of those forces that you send to combat the coup show up, find common cause with the you know the coup makers, and then you basically just added to the fire, right? So it. it Look, this is there's a ton of speculation ongoing right now, but it could be one of a couple of different things. Number one is that there are elements of the Russian military that are sympathetic to Wagner moving through and they're waving them through. They're either standing outside of it or they're supporting it. It's unclear if that's the case. But I mean, if this is Wagner in the middle of Rostov, then clearly they got through some checkpoints to get there. Um, second part is in the this could be the russian military again taking inventory taking stock but most likely internal security services such as the fsb being like who can we send there that's not going to just find common cause and then add to you know swell the numbers that are 